Uh, actually, sorry. No, no, no. Let's try Jason. Mark, we will get to you. But Jason in Pennsylvania. Uh, Jason, you are on the line. Hello. Can you hear me? I sure can. Hi, Matt. Hi, uh, Jimmy. Hello. So, Matt, I think I am the person that you're seeking in most ways. Um, I'm a social worker in the Pittsburgh area working towards clinical licensure and I am a person of faith and, um, also work with people, survivors of religious trauma. Um, I still cling to my faith. I think a lot of ways it gives me some meaning. It's most likely because I was socialized into it. I'm very fortunate that I have a church that is what I would say is radically inclusive, socially justice oriented toward LGBTQ issues, racial dynamics, immigration, which is for the most part antithetical to fundamentalist evangelical churches. But, you know, the, and I hope, I mean, I'm, and I, I'll talk about this. I hope someday be an asset to the community to have these discussions to say to people, there's dangers to biblical literalism. And there's dangers to saying you know entirely who, what God is. So I just want to throw that out there. But the problem I'm having, I'm writing a book that I devoted to for 20 years of being discriminated in, on the basis of being part of the LGBTQ community. And I devoted this book, put a lot of work into it to say that if you want to be both, if you want to either be gay, lesbian, bi, trans, and part of the, a Christian, or you want to be a Christian who affects an LGBTQ person, first thing you got to do is admit that the Bible is not factual as written. And I feel is, like I'm is that really, of Is that really the case? Because whether or not the Bible's factual mm -hmm. um, is separate from whether or not it, it is advocating for a position that God has about the LGBTQ community or individuals. So whether or not the Bible's factual on bats as birds or anything else, the, the statements within it are, th there's no way that I'm aware of to say, I'm a Christian and I have a, 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 a solid um, theological ground for also being Pro LGBTQIA plus. Well, I think I, I I hear that. I guess my thing is with just for example, just with regards to the clobber verses, for example. Um that's where I get into that crit to say that if you're going to subscribe to a because if you're not if, if to say that you can't usually if you're if you say you can't affirm the LGBTQ community because of the Bible, would you say that most likely because of the clobber verses? Leviticus, Genesis, Sodom, Gomorrah, Leviticus 18, 20, and then the Pauline Corpus. It, it's so, certainly a part of that. The issue is that I'm not aware of any verse in the Bible, uh -huh. that, of any version of any verse in the Bible that is truly um, supportive of queerness true but okay the argument now, given, it with give, given hang on if, if there okay. aren't verses if there aren't verses in favor of queerness and there are verses opposed to queerness i don't know how somebody can then create i don't be wrong there's a baptist church down the street from me that has up you know love is love and all this other stuff um, yep. And there's plenty of gay-friendly churches around here, but they don't have, they can't say we're a biblically-based church. And once you have to throw out the Bible, I yep. mean, first of all, I, I don't think even if you accept the Bible, you don't have evidential warrant for believing that there's a God or believing any of the supernatural claims about Christianity. But if you throw the Bible yep. out, you definitely don't. So well, you, you, you mentioned, is, you, can I ask you meant there actually hurt them? Is there a verse that actually talks about queerness? I don't or give a there... fuck what the Bible says. That's the point. Know, but, but my... The issue is you're sitting here saying that you are Christian. What is the foundation of your Christianity if you throw out the Bible? That's the point. 
Oh, I mean, I don't throw up, but, but I, but the only thing I just had, and, and again, Matt, I agree. I mean, I don't, I, I don't want to, I don't want, but I was just saying, is there actually any, Deb, my question is with this, is there actually anything in the Bible that actually talks about queerness? Yes. What you already there? referenced the verses in Leviticus as well, but Paul talks about it as well. Is homosexual behavior always queerness? Oh, in the context oh, okay. Of I see. I see. I see what you're doing here. I see what you're doing here, and it should be embarrassing. Um, yeah. Okay, Matt. No, 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 okay. no. Let I... me finish talking. Let me finish talking. It should okay. be very embarrassing because when Christians say, "Well, the Bible condemns homosexual acts, but not homosexual, you know, not homosexuality," that's the same bullshit that people tried to pull with saying, "Hey, let's. We don't want to let you get married, but we'll do civil unions." Um, it is a dodge. The fact of the matter is, is there anything in the Bible that, and by the way, mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure that the LGBT community is engaging in those acts. They're not just running around being queer and celibate and praising Jesus. This is one of the most dishonest paths that, that I've seen, not just from you, but from countless other queer people who want to keep their religion and never acknowledge that they don't have any good reason to believe it, and that the very that everything about their religion that that is substantive that they could point to as a foundation is against who they are and what they do. What is the what is the value? I, I'm irrespective of value. I don't know why somebody would believe something that not only has no good reason to believe it's true, but makes mm -hmm. them a sinner for acts that they're engaged in because of who they are, and then tries to play it as if. Oh, well, the Bible doesn't say really, you know, it's not that big a deal. If there were a God and he was okay with queer people, don't you think there'd be a verse that says love is love, that, that there is no problem at all with pairing between people of the same gender or any gender? Um, this is, this is preposterous. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, I, I, when, I say, when I said I wanted people to call in and tell me what they believe and why, I'd okay. love to know what it is that you actually believe and why, because you seem to be standing up for a bunch of bullshit and then trying to play word games about whether or not the Bible's anti-queer when we all yeah. fucking know the Bible is anti-queer. Yeah, by the way, I, yeah. I, I just have a little note there for you, Jason. Uh, queer yeah. here, by the way. And you identified yourself as part of a more progressive religion. Congratulations. You are as progressive as the Mormons because your position is the same as the Mormons. You know, that really progressive church. Well done, Jason. But I, we're, now we're going to give you all the time uh, that we, we can tolerate and you I, need to, to explain what you believe in. I, 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 wow. I, I, I just, I think I'm just going to, um, I, I just don't understand the hostility. I, oh, you don't I, I'll tell you why. I'm a queer really, and we're, like, I'll, I'll like, tell you why the hostility, Jason. Because I'm a fucking I, queer, and we're right now I, dealing with hostility from these people who think they are progressive. I, like, Jason, I shut just, the fuck up. I'm talking. We deal no, with people no, like no, you no, all the... Watch no. this, buddy. I can just mute you. You can say no all you like, but you don't have any power here. You want to call out the hostility as you're coming here and going, hey, I'm on your side. I'm one of the progressives. I, whatever shit. I just believe you're going to go to hell if you actually live the way you want to live. But if you just be that way, I'm comfortable with you suffering in silence. I'm comfortable with you having all of the, there's an, a, a litany of data now of what it is to be a forced asexual queer person, a person who doesn't live your actual sexual identity. We've seen, like that progressive church, the Mormons, who are at the same level of progressive as you, how their policies go into place and you get teenagers committing suicides at ridiculous rates in Utah because of it. So if you want to say, why is there hostility? It's probably because I have a person in front of me claiming to be progressive, saying the same old worn out shit that at the end of the day, while you might support my right, you're supporting my right to be impure and to choose to go to hell. I give a fuck. All right, now, Jason, you have my permission to talk. I, that's, not, that's not what I'm saying. I think we're off to the wrong end. And, and perhaps if I spoke in a way that led to a different interpretation, I'm sorry. I'm a person. I am also part of the queer community and I have been harmed by religion. So, so I why, why'd you bring up the, was it queerness or homosexual acts?
thing. I was just saying that I just don't think my argument within my work is saying that the concept of sexual orientation did not exist in the ancient world. The concept of there was there was sexual behavior that biblical writers observed and spoke about. That was you, you have been I lied was. to, and your desire to stick with your religious views is having you accept a lie. Because no. I, I, whether or not, so yes, you can have sexual desires. Okay. Does the Bible say yeah. anything about sexual desires and whether or not they're sinful? No. Bullshit. It fucking, I, 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 oh my God. you don't know I, your I, Bible. You don't know your Bible. A man who lusts because he committed adultery in his heart. What the fuck are you talking about, Jason? Read the book you claim that, to believe in. I, but homosexual. I, I'm. I was talking about sexual orientation. I'm sorry. I, I didn't I talk. Understood. That's the thing. That's I'm, the other thing is you don't listen. This is an issue well, of convenience I, for you. I didn't say anything well, about homosexuality. I asked if the Bible said anything about sexual desire. Okay, I'm. I'm just. I'm just admitting right now. I'm having a hard time. I much rather watch where I can see the dialogue on camera. I'm on the thing where I'm, I'm getting a little delay here because I had the camera to the and, phone. and I, ignore, so. ignore the show and listen to the phone. Okay. You're, a Christian, I, I, you're a Christian. You're a Christian and you're queer. Engage in, what is, sorry, just, what is the evidence that, that you have? What is that, the evidence that you have? No, I'm asking what, what is wrong with you? May I ask one question before we proceed with anything? Go. I just don't, I don't feel like in this tone, can I call back another time? I just, this, no. I just don't, I don't no. understand. I can't, I can't, I understand. And I apologize. I just, I just can't at this point right now. Where I'm, the, I'm tired. I, I, and I, I'm no, sorry, no, like, no, Jason, Jason, Jimmy, Jason, Jimmy, can I say Oh my first? God. I, how dare you suggest that we're the ones that's triggered while you're right getting ready to run away because you're trying to fucking tone shut up because you're trying to tone here here's the mute because you're trying to tone police us you came out and i appreciate the fact that you would like to have a warm fuzzy christianity that's okay with your queerness um because then you get to hang on to what you believe but we did all we did was asked questions and what we got from you was the same old tired exhausting well it doesn't really say that about the acts it's just about the orientation the damage that religion has done to you to make you um so absolutely fragile in the face of challenges to your religious belief and incapable of saying Here's, I'm, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you try and do it. Here's what I believe and why I think it's true and why I'm okay with a religion that says it's wrong essentially to be who and what I am. I would love those sorts of explanations. That's all we've asked for. Stop tone policing and just make your case. Okay. I, I, I just, I, I didn't have this experience last time when I talked with Godless Engineer. And Dave Fitzgerald, it just didn't get hit. Okay, I'm going to mute you. I have that. asked you repeatedly the questions. I'm not interested in tone policing. I'm not interested in you comparing us to Godless Engineer and David Fitzgerald. Conversations go differently and people are differently. I want to know what you believe, why you believe it, and why you're okay identifying with a religion that has marginalized and shit on queer people forever and for which there is no foundation within Christianity that makes it okay to be queer. That's, that's the issues. Try again. Again, I, I just, again, I'm just going to call back another time. No, you're fucking not. Goodbye. The, uh, the place I wanted to, to go with, with Jason, the thing I wanted to bring up is because I, I get this with a lot of, uh, I have a lot of progressive theistic friends who at some point will come to me and go like, right, but, you kind of give me a pass, right? And then I, fuck no. Absolutely no, I don't. And the thing we, we jump into is, where is the place that your belief is, it, it, is based in faith? Because you all admit you have it. Where does the faith start? And they'll usually like, yeah, okay, well, here, and maybe it takes some questions to get there. If you can give yourself a pass to believe something unreasonable based on faith, Upon what basis do you look outward at other people 
and say, hey, you can't, you can't call for queers to die. And they say, yes, I can, because I have faith that that's true. How do you tell them they're not allowed to do that, that that's an unreasonable basis for faith? And for some reason, people go, well, it's unreasonable because that causes harm. In what way does that have anything to do with anything? If God exists, God could be a harmful God. And so it's that that was the direction I would uh, I was going to take it if I uh, got to sink my teeth it, into to Jason there a little. Start with uh, Haley in Delaware. Haley in Delaware, you are on the line, and you believe you have proof of God to bring to us. How you doing? Hey, I'm very good. Are you? I'm. You know, I'm thriving and. Thriving and diving. That doesn't, that's not a real phrase I'm yeah. right now. How are you, Haley? I'm good. I'm good. I'm nervous, bro. Yeah, I get it. It happens. You've got proof of God for me, though. Yeah. You're worried about, you're worried yeah, about Marjorie, you're, too. Your reputation precedes you. Uh, I know you're cold advice, but I, I'm going to try and break through that a little bit. As long as you're not dishonest, I have yet to see a time that I've jumped to hostility that somebody hasn't either started invoking slurs or been dishonest and trying to skirt around the issue. If you just treat me like a human with respect, I'll treat you with like a human with respect. If you treat me like an asshole, I'm better at being an asshole than you. That's that's the promise. No, no. no. Yeah. Anyway. No. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm on it. Yeah. Sure. I'm preempting it because you're the first call and you're bringing it up. So go ahead and give us, uh, okay. bring to us the proof of God you've got for us. Um. So the thing is, you want... Uh, specific laid out like mathematical thing maybe i don't know do you have anything say, i mean i'll take anything that qualifies as sort of the, i'll just take proof yeah you, you said no i don't know what you mean uh, by proof i mean yeah you could be talking about mathematics but uh you know I, it, it, from a scientific perspective you know proof only exists in mathematics but i'll go a little bit further i mean as uh Within science, we could also, I mean, it's not, not as a formal scientific policy, but, you know, we're just ta people talking and colloquially, we could say that proof is an overwhelming preponderance of evidence beyond reasonable doubt, right? Mm -hmm. I'll take that. I'll take being reasoned into well, the reasonable position as a God is mo more likely than not. You don't even have to hit a hundred percent for me. Hit that 51% yep. mark and you got me. Yep. Yeah, those, those are two different concepts, preponderance of evidence and beyond reasonable doubt. So if you want a preponderance of evidence, that's what you get. Just give that, us what you got. You come so, with proof of God. Give us the proof. Do you have anything that qualifies as, as, a, as evidence? I can lead you down the logical path. Okay, Let's so you don't have evidence, you have arguments. Right. That's all anyone has in this universe. Nope. That's a ridiculous you're, thing to say, Haley. I have evidence. But let's hear what you think is the logical path to God. I'm a, I'll at least hear you out. Um, everyone is just so... You, it's hard to explain to someone who doesn't believe. Right, because I, I don't experience just, confirmation bias. That usually is tough. So just give us, give us your... You, you said you've got an argument. Lay it out for us. Um, so, you know, like when you look at, say, a building, right? Where do you think that building came from? I contrast the fact Excuse that it me, does not resemble. No, let, just let her, do, let, let her do it. I, I, I acknowledge the fact that it does not resemble the things around it, which are not designed and have unique qualities mm -hmm. of a designed object as opposed to all the things which surround it. And therefore, I acknowledge mm -hmm. that that building probably comes from some sort of designer. Yeah. Did you ever see two buildings? Yeah. Look, but, huh? You ever, see, you ever see two buildings mating and producing little buildings? Exactly. Um, but right. I, I like no one knows how. No one knows how what? what? We, we do know. We we do know we, no we know one that knows buildings... how lights came about. You know? So no, first we, of we all... have a very good idea. We've got a whole lot of the data on it now. Right. We got, well, I could t I could show you an awful lot of it. Maybe not everything yet, but I can show you way more than an way more than enough to convince you that yeah, this is you know, this is definitely all on the right track. Yeah, and you... we know and can prove 
that we are evolving apes and that everything is interrelated through a taxonomic tree of evolution. We can prove that. Right. But now we're, we're, it's not going to be good enough to say that we don't know where life came from, because even if this was a hundred years ago, in which case we'd have to agree. Yeah. We don't know where life came from. Was it evidence of God then? What do you mean? Uh, I, I'm not surprised you don't know. Haley, okay. Haley I, I want to I let Haley keep going down her path, but I just want to say, okay. so far we're unimpressed, Haley, because you've just given a type of like, you didn't see it happen. So even if we understand the natural processes which are involved based on all the things we know about nature, that doesn't mean that was it because you didn't witness it. Much like you can't prove that your great, great, great grandparents had sex because not a single person alive uh, uh, witnessed them have sex and, and give birth. And yet we know how your lineage came about. So not impressive. Okay. Let, let's let me help down her out if I sure. Go let, ahead. Let, me, let me just, let me just throw this out there if you don't mind. Okay. So let's say this was a hundred years ago and we don't know anything about, uh, about how, how life developed. Okay. Um, given that we, we, we have one conclusion that it happened naturally and I can provide evidence to show that, it, that it's all occurring naturally. And you're going to suggest an alternate hypothesis. And the one that, that you're suggesting is the one that I recognize as magic invisible man. So you have to show me, uh, I'll show you the evidence of evolution and everything else. And, and you show me the evidence of magic invisible man. Man, now I feel like you just want to be starting something because you're coming at me a little half done and Haley. Okay. Goodbye, Haley. Call when you've got a regular argument. I'm not, I'm not handling this bullshit. You literally called in and you said, you've got proof of God. And we told you why very politely, why your proof of God is, is insufficient and unimpressive. Nobody swore at you. I might've casually sworn because that's the way I speak, but no one swore at you. No one was hostile at you for a moment. And I'm not going to waste a moment of time and, and occupy a line with a person who already started the thing, basically going like, well, you just, you just want proof that's like good. Uh, uh, and that's a flaw. Well, I get into an argument with somebody on Twitter a couple of days ago. They were angry at me because I reject their proof of God. Okay, fine. I, what is your proof of God? And I, it's that he believes. He, right. he believes God, so I should believe in God. And, and I, should I should accept his faith yeah. as my proof, right? Just because he says so. And so he's going to, whatever argument he comes up with, whatever want he wants to drive up, I, I should just accept it because he said so. And I said, well, how is it proof if you can't even show that it's true? Well, I don't know what type of theism Greg is calling in about. Greg from British Columbia, uh, you are on the line. Oh, sorry. One second, Greg. It like popped in and popped out. There you go. Greg, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, Greg. Uh, so it says here that you are a theist, but that yeah. you want, but you want to call in and discuss simulation theory, which is not a theory I accept or deny. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. I'm agnostic to it, but, but, but is it that you accept that your theism is that you believe in simulation theory? Um, I like, I think simulation theory is like a big like, argument towards why I'm a theist. I think that uh, simulation theory leans strongly towards the designer. I mean, simulation theory doesn't just lead toward design uh, toward a designer; it necessitates one, right? I would I would well, say that there's I definitely mean, uh, a designer, I, not necessarily people about that. And you know, you can still do like the whole, you know, a biogenesis by accident, natural selection might have done the, the simulation theory, right? but yeah, to me, yeah, it, it definitely leads towards me. Even if the only thing they actually designed was the Big Bang, uh, you'd still have a responsible party. I just don't accept that. I don't accept simulation theory. I think simulation theory becomes. So here's the thing about simulation theory. Uh, uh, if I accepted it, I would then say whoever designed us. I don't have a reason to believe they didn't come out, come about of material or natural means, because if we create simulations in the future, we will also have come about of material, natural means. Uh, and then if they are a simulation, if we're a hundred simulations in my, I would still have a question about base reality, but I'll tell you why I don't believe in simulation yeah. theory, but I don't deny that it's possible. We have yet to actually establish that it is possible to design a computer capable 
of literally simulating a universe anywhere near to our own complexity. Our simulations are extremely limited and on the scale of a universe are, are you know, a percent of a percent of a percent of a percent of a, uh, an infinite number of adding de decimals, per adding percentages. Yeah, a god amount of intelligence to figure it out. Well, um, where I, <laughs> that's, that's a funny joke. The um, side of what, what you're talking about is, um, so when we think of simulation, let's, let's take a video game, right? Mm -hmm. And in video games, they have completely different physics, right? Like mm -hmm. you can fly or triple jump or whatever it is, right? Right. And so when we try to apply like the physics of this world to like, oh, like cause and effect must be in this other, you know, I guess realm, you know, that created our simulation. I don't, I don't think that really legitimate, right? Cause the but it would be crazy to then also say, therefore, I believe it isn't restricted because we haven't had either demonstrated to us as possible to say, I can't well, say that the, the universe that designed us would have the same rules and laws. You also can't say they wouldn't. You don't, there's no reason to expect it. But, but Greg, here's my, here's my well, question. I mean, all demonstrable evidence, right? Like, like all the simulations that have been made do have different physics, right? Greg, do you agree that, yeah, well, I wouldn't call video games all simulations. First of all, when we're talking about simulating a universe, a video game actually isn't really a simulation. It's a very much a, this is a program which does this thing. Like it does, it's it's an input output only thing. Maybe the universe is too, but uh, uh, that also has to be demonstrated. Yeah, Greg, do you agree with my reasoning that I don't believe in the Christian God? First of all, because the Christian God has never been demonstrated to be possible. Oh, it has never been demonstrated to be possible. That's my first most basic reason why I reject the Christian God. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm not even sure exactly what you mean by such a broad statement. I, I, it, it literally doesn't need to be, I, I can't change it for you. I don't know what to tell you. The Christian uh, God has never been demonstrated to even be possible. So I reject the claim on that basis that the Christian God exists. I do not say the Christian God yeah, does not totally. exist, but based on the fact that it's yeah. never been demonstrated to be possible, I reject any claim that it does exist. Do you get that? Great. Like, so, so, so I would be rejecting the history of Jesus Christ and or, or just, or, you know, like, like others would say, well, you know, the evidence is all around us, right? Like, you know, it's like divine you know, is evidence. All of that, yeah, all I need so is whether you agree. What you're no, because it, it, it's, it's far more, you said it's too broad, and then I'm saying you're not going broad enough. Simply, mm. there is a ver no version of the Christian God that has ever been demonstrated to be possible at all. Um, the, well, I, the, I believe, like, you know, a lot of things about Jesus Christ, so I would disagree with it. What, what thing about Jesus Christ was demonstrated, demonstrated that the God of Christianity is possible. Because Jesus existing is a totally unrelated thing to this. Whether or not Jesus was resurrected, and if that is true, that you could say is, an ev is evidentiary in the column of the possibility, though actually it's still somewhat, it's kind of abstract. It, it almost doesn't, but uh, I'll, I'll give it that it does. So what specifically... <laughs> What specifically about Jesus that you believe makes the God? And by the way, I'm not even telling you that you have to agree with me and be an atheist or reject the. I'm saying, yeah, yeah. do you understand when I say and that it the ra that it is a rational statement that it is a a logical thing to base my atheism on, specific to we'll say the Christian God. The Christian God has not been demonstrated to be possible, and I therefore reject any claim that it exists. Yeah, um, I think, you know, like, basing any sort of belief in history off of demonstrable evidence is, like, leaves you with a very short amount of history that you're willing to believe in, right? So, I mean, but yeah, sure, um, it, it hasn't been recorded and demonstrated to you. And you understand right? the, I, I'm just asking if you understand the rationality and the logic of the position, if you haven't demonstrated that this was possible, then I don't accept your claim that it's true. No, but I do think it's definitely possible. It's definitely true. Um, I didn't ask whether you think it's possible. American. Has it been demonstrated that the God of Christianity is possible? Not 
Could it be possible? I'm not saying the God of Christianity is impossible. I'm saying, has it ever been demonstrated that, uh, 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 do you need me to define this Christian God for you more? What is the, what is the, why, why is it the question can't be answered? Uh, I think I am answering it. It's not, you're not at all. Yeah. Um, people that, that, uh, I guess talk about how demonstrably a working theory for the beginning of the universe and simulation theory, right? Um, you know, according to say like buying the Greg, Greg, whatever. Greg, why are we not or, answering well, my question? Has anybody I, ever I, demonstrated I, the Christian but, God to be possible? Not have they demonstrated it is real, not have they demonstrated does is it impossible? Has anyone ever demonstrated that the Christian God is possible? A possible explanation. Yeah. No when? Go ahead. Tell me when. Oh, uh, I think you've been through it already with whether it's simulation theory or Jesus Christ, if you believe what he said, or just like, no. Like, you know, okay, Craig, what, what was the demonstration that a single entity may be capable? Tell me about the demonstration of a single entity capable of creating an entire universe by speaking a word. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So that's what you mean. I mean, any. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say no. There's, there's no evidence. Fine, show me the demonstration of resurrection it, uh, going to true death. We'll go with something more recent and something more you might be able to. Becoming truly dead, true death, not not you were dead, but dead, dead. Like, like we're talking the Princess Bride. And then three days, which is realistically an hour and a half later, based on what the three days actually was, the day, a night, and a day, uh, that three days yeah. later you could raise from the dead not only healed of your wounds, but with now a perfect body. Ha show, what is the demonstration that, when has the demonstration of any resurrection been possible, been done? Okay, so you want me to, to say that there's no demonstrable evidence of all the miracles that have been claimed to happen? I mean, it's not about what I want you to say. I want you to, uh, the only thing I want you to say is whether or not it's you true or not. Say. Like, uh, if there's a God that is possible, Right? If it's just possibility. I, I've never yes, said, I've never said. So many theories and so many things about that. that I can make God possible. If I you think want you were fundamentally not listening. If evidence of a miracle, then tell me. Greg. Just be clear with your words. Greg, I have been extremely <laughs> clear with the words. You are not grasping the questions or uh, the exercise. I've been extremely okay. clear, Greg. Greg. The yeah. thing I am, the reason why I'm asking you, do you understand that if you can't show something to be possible, it doesn't make it impossible? Do you understand that? Yeah, okay. And so have I ever in, even implied during this call, now that I've shown you, I also understand that, that just because I say a God hasn't been shown to be possible, it doesn't make him impossible. Do you understand that? Okay. Yep. Okay, do you understand that the basis of skepticism is not believing things until you have adequate reason to believe them? Yes or no? Um, I mean, yeah, but like adequate can be you know, like is very subjective to each individual brain. Not generally to skepticism, but I understand your idea of how I am, uh, uh, implement my standard of adequacy could be subjectively tainted. However, yeah. it wouldn't actually be subjective. I could well, be, like, I personally could by, be like rationality, right? Like we go back to, we apply you know, science rules always. and logic, but Greg, let's, uh, we don't need to go off on the, yeah. on the tail end of this. Therefore, if I'm oh, claiming yeah, yeah. to be a skeptical person, <laughs> would I accept that anything is true that not, not that I therefore accept false. As a skeptical person, would I accept that anything yeah. is true if that thing hasn't ever even been demonstrated to be possible? So not only, I guess, like, by principle, no, but, I mean, we're all very hypocritical, right? Okay, like, what's a belief I, you like, think you that, know, I'm, like, that I believe in, that I accept is true, that I do not know is possible, or that I cannot find adequate justification for it being possible um uh, i mean all right yeah it's just picked up like the common a biogenesis argument right why would that be a are you saying that i have not seen a demonstration of abiogenesis being possible because you're wrong oh oh you've seen it uh, 
Did I see it with my own eyes? No. Have I read the research? Yes. And have I read through the experiments they've done to actually do it? Yes. Are you suggesting we don't have adequate reason to believe in an AO? Oh, Greg, fuck you. Greg, now we're getting to fuck you. Greg, the idea that there isn't (laughs) adequate evidence the same way as abiogenesis. Greg, you are a joke of a person. I'm going to give you another chance to try and operate uh, operate in this with honesty. But the idea that accepting a scientific principle with peer review, if I wasn't there in the lab to do it with me, despite the fact that I also leave open the possibility of that conclusion to be adapted and changed as better information comes in, because I operate as a skeptic and not an intellectual fraud who decides first what I want to believe in and then only accepts that which uh, confirms it. And then I don't put things that I do believe in through the same process as things that I don't that I don't want to believe in. That way I can more easily accept, well, this points to simulation and this points to simulation theory and these things which I'm very shallowly accepting and going, oh, but did you see it in person in your first? You sound like a Christian, despite the fact that you're trying to have a higher intellectual position. The possibility possibility of God, God, if the possibility of God had 30%, Of the adequate evidence for the possibility of an abiogenesis (laughs) event, I fuck you. I'm if you're just gonna laugh and act like this is a joke, then fuck you. Go go fuck off right off into a volcano, motherfucker. You'll be fine because you'll have a cheat code for your simulation theory. You're so fucking full of shit, Greg. You should be utterly embarrassed that you would call in and suggest that the premise of God hasn't been shown to be possible is anywhere near supported to the premise abiogenesis hasn't been shown to be possible. Not only has it been shown to be possible, it's been shown to be likely. Literally, the most abundant things that life is made of, the things that life is made of are the most abundant things in the fucking universe. And you want to sit here and go, I have this higher understanding because I believe in this simulation theory, which no one has ever demonstrated to be possible. I leave it open as a very interesting thing and maybe even go, it seems like we'll probably get there there. And by the way, the day that we can simulate a universe as complex as ours, the odds of us being in base reality go way the fuck down. But no one's demonstrated that as possible. There are certain principles of entropy that actually suggest it might not be possible, but maybe it is. And maybe we'll get there. And that would be incredible if we do. The fact that you want to sit here and, and laugh as your as what you are logically concluding, and that's a joke. That the word logically there doing a tremendous me- amount of weightlifting for you. That you want to just laugh there and joke about you saying God hasn't uh, been demonstrated to be possible is the same as me saying I bio- abiogenesis isn't demonstrated to be possible. What a fucking embarrassing! I Greg, you should be humiliated. That should embarrass the fuck out of you the way that I should be embarrassed that I used to believe that underwear could have magical properties back when I was a fucking Mormon. But your position's actually more embarrassing. Jesus Christ, Greg, get a fucking grip. Let me take his name off the thing. Holy fucking shit. That was the wrong one because that was Daniel's line from before. I just, I... I don't know how to resolve people who are willing to call in and try and equivocate the very things that they are relying upon, scientific demonstration, to make their call, to watch the show, to record their video, to play the video later, just to connect us in general, the the results of science, and then suggest that the results of that same science and evolutionary biology, which isn't actually a part of abiogenesis, but abiogenesis, uh, uh, there are things that are indicated about abiogenesis from what we understand of evolutionary biology. To suggest that you are anywhere on the same footings, Jesus Christ, Greg, my goodness, get your cheat code for your simulation and jump in a volcano. Uh, Rick in Las Vegas, let's hear your argument for why you believe God is real. You are on the line. Welcome, Rick. Yes, sir. Thank you. By the way, I didn't call you before, and I think you'd tell me yeah. up or whatever, but that was a long time ago. That, that's fair. Just, have- it says here you have an argument for why you believe God is real. At some point, we're going to ask you which God, but go ahead and give the argument. Yes. Okay. Um, well, my, hang on one sec. Um, 
it's my personal belief that God is real because of my life and the way I've lived and what God has shown me in my life. So, I mean, there's a lot of times that I, well, well, hang on. I became a Christian. Okay. okay. Hang on. Um, because sure. first of all, that, that's not, that is, that is maybe one of the most informal of all arguments ever. So let me ask you this. Give me an example of something that God has shown you and how you know it was God that showed it to you. Okay. Well, um, the way I know that God showed it to me is because mm-hmm. I was praying about it, asking God to show me something. And, uh, I started watching these things on YouTube or whatever TV. And I saw a lot of, uh, and, you know, near death experiences of people who actually had died. Um, they, they either went to heaven or they went to hell. And, um, okay. Hang, 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 hang on. on. Hang on. Sure. Rick, go ahead, Jimmy. I was at, how, do you, how do you know they died and went to heaven or hell? How do you know that? Because a lot of people seem to be unaware of this. So I'm going to give you where the argument's going to go before it goes there. How do you know that in their state okay. of death, all of the chemicals which were draining to the back of their brain, which electricity flies through and is basically what we do when we dream, but on crack, essentially, that they weren't hallucinating and that because they had an expectation, they had been culturally conditioned to to have dreams of heaven or dreams of hell. And maybe they had an awareness that they were in a, a traumatic state. How do you know that what they experienced, even granting they had an experience they think was going to heaven or hell, which... By the way, there's also that, how do we know they weren't lying? But how do you know they went to heaven or hell other than they said mm-hmm. they experienced consciously in a state that could be mistaken for a dream, they experienced something like heaven or hell? How do you know they went there? Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know that for a fact. I mean, I can't say okay. that. Okay. You know, it wasn't okay. Then, or then I need to, then I need to I, backtrack. Then I need to backtrack because if you don't know, then you don't know. And there's no point going down there. I was going to ask a separate question, which is, I asked you, what has God shown you and how do you know it was God? And your answer was, you know, it was God because you were praying and then you started watching Mm -hmm. YouTube or TV. I still don't know what it is that God showed you or how, you know, God was showing you. So tell me what it is God showed you and then tell me how, you know, it was God that showed it to you. Okay, so can I, let me let me continue. Uh, so I was watching these shows about near death experiences. Um, my my reasoning for believing that they were true is because there were so many of them. I mean, there wasn't just one or two. Yeah, there was several. Rick, several. Rick, uh, Rick. It changed their life. Rick, it changed the freaking Rick. life when they came back. Yeah. Rick. Okay. What, I, did I, did what, that, what that, did God show you? That's what he was showing me. God showed you YouTube videos. Yeah. I saw them. How do you know it was well, God? I, that, how do you know it was God that showed you YouTube videos? Because I've watched a fuck ton of YouTube videos. None of them were shown to me by God. Well, Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I see what you're saying, but um, I, I don't think you remotely see believe. what I'm saying, because first of all, you said there's so many of them, but if you start watching YouTube videos and you start watching YouTube videos about near death experiences, you're going to see a fuck ton of videos about near death experiences because the way the algorithm works, is going to keep showing you video after video, after video, after video. Are you saying that God is the YouTube algorithm? No, I'm saying that okay. God has so I want to know, I want to know, not YouTube videos. What piece okay. of information did God give you? And how do you know this piece of information came from God? Okay. Well, uh, that was one of the things. The other thing was he changed me. Internally, I mean, okay, I'm a fish. I'm I'm done, Rick. I'm done. I'm done because I asked you what piece of information did God give you, and how do you know it's God? And without missing a beat, 
you decided to keep going and say, and here's another thing. You have yet to present okay. a single piece of information and then say, God showed me this piece of information, this thing, this statement is true. God demonstrated this, and I know it was God because. Are you capable of I doing know, that? My question, my question to you, then is, I don't, you, you don't do have you a question. You, you do don't you have a question. I, I, do you see gravity? are you? Are you asking me if I can see the wind? Is your response to what I've just asked you, can you see the wind? Seriously. Right. Right. Go the fuck away. I, 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 I want to, Rick. Why? I'm not going to ask you any more questions. I'm going to tell you several things. No, no, no. Here, and then watch. We, yeah. Here's one. I, essentially, yeah, essentially the same thing. But I'm going to, I'm going to go. I'm demonstrating the wind. Well, you're demonstrating your breath. How okay. dare you well, suggest that God showed you something? You have good reason to believe God showed you. And then when I push back and push yeah. back and push back and ask you for five fucking minutes, then you come back with, can you see the wind? You have absolutely nothing, Rick. Yeah, it's you well, are seduced I'm... by. No, stop talking, Rick. You are seduced by very okay. basic level pastoral teachings of people who are fresh out of seminaries and have just heard other people say these are good arguments and never had a challenge from an atheist. So a few this things cool. in a row. You said the reason why you think that there are near-death experience, exper uh, experiences is because you saw so many of them. Well, at least yeah. two and a half billion people are Christian and much more than that are theistic. And many people have heard stories of near-death experiences. So the idea of it's true because it's a lot, first of all, a lot is a very relative term. And I think in every way we could possibly measure your, your uh, uh, presumption of that this is a lot is actually incorrect. Unless a lot is only compared to there's only one of me. So a hundred more people giving these experiences is a lot. None of that matters. And the fact of the matter is, is when you then move between cultures and you see near death experiences between Hindus and Muslims and Christians, they all have Christian ones or Muslim ones or Hindu ones, and it doesn't verify any of them. I can show you for every Christian one you've seen, I can bring you a Muslim near-death experience. And it sounds like if I can just beat your score of however many stories you heard, all I need is to have more than that, and now you'll become a Muslim. I doubt you're actually going to do that because suddenly I think your skepticism would kick in. Regarding this, do you yeah. feel gravity? other thing or you feel the wind we have many tools to detect all of those things christianity the only thing we have to detect a god with is called confirmation bias and that is i will start with the conclusion and i will go like and the side things fill it in even though they don't you are not going where the evidence leads to you're starting the conclusion and you are cherry picking your evidence and you are being seduced by i'm not kidding very stupid pastors, and you should try harder. Even if you're going to stay within theism, go for some more advanced level shit because this is the stuff that people say to each other in Sunday school. We're like, and then I said to the atheist, do you feel gravity? And the atheist crumbled and admitted he believed in God and everyone clapped. None of those stories actually happen, Rick. They're not real. Okay. You need to, you need okay. to like really and the next up your time game. Time the next well, time not, somebody asks I'm not, you, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, beat you guys or anything like that. I'm just you're not even trying to answer that. the question. Well, I'm trying to. I honestly, no, I am. no, you're not. The question was, okay. what piece of information did God show you? And at no point in the entirety of this conversation did you ever identify a single piece of information? that you think God showed you? I, I, not, I, not once. I believe that God showed me the near-death experiences. I believe that. I believe YouTube Honestly. and TV did, but that's because I use, my mind still works and hasn't been fried by religion. What do you mean? I, I, I mean, honestly, why, I don't believe in religion. You in religious imagery in a suit. Are you in America? You're in Las Vegas. So you think yeah. that if any religious imagery is just going to be a sign, that's, that's so stupid. 
Like, I don't know how to engage I, I with it and that like, at a level because you're saying you wanted a sign from God. And so you existed in America. And the first thing you saw was this is a, this. I don't know how to explain it if it's not making sense to you, Rick. Hey, Rick. When, no, when, when you were believing, when, Rick, when you prayed, Rick, when you prayed to God for a message, what search term did you put on YouTube? Um, it was, um, the thing I typed into YouTube was, um, I, I did exactly what it was. Honestly, it was something off the wall. I mean, it just wasn't anything to do with, you know, exactly what I was looking for, but that kind of what came oh, up. Because God isn't the algorithm. And that means that you were on Google mm -hmm. doing lots of stuff, looking for the God stuff that you were constantly in this area. And that the algorithm, if you literally posted something, put something in the search bar, God and the algorithm mm -hmm. don't interact completely different entities. If you put in the same thing in the search bar, the algorithm was so convinced by your search history that you were still looking for something religious because that was the overwhelming majority of what you had been doing on Google lately. By the way, I actually don't well, believe you. I, I should probably put in proof okay. of God, but it doesn't matter no, whether you did or not. Because the thing you tried to hide behind algorithmically also betrays you. No, I honestly didn't put in proof in God. I put in something after the wall. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, don't, word, I, word, I already explained that, that came up. Rick. Yeah. Rick. Yeah. If, if I said, yeah. if, if you said you got a message, are you, are you married? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just guessing. Um, if your spouse mm -hmm. told you a piece of information, well, I'm sorry. What, mm -hmm. what what name should we use for your spouse? You can make up a name. I just want to be Angel. easy. Angel? Angel. So if I said, if yeah. you said, Angel showed me something, and I said, mm -hmm. what did Angel show you? Is there a chance mm -hmm. in hell that you would say, well, I was talking to Angel, and then I went to YouTube, and I saw some mm -hmm. videos, and that's what Angel showed me? Well, the, the laughter I mean, is answer kind of, enough. No, no, yeah. it's like a different subject. I mean, it's not different. I, I mean, if, I, you, if there is a God who's showing you information, can God give you information mm -hmm. in the same way that Angel does? Uh, yeah, if he wants to, he can. Cool. Yes. If he wants to, he can. Cool. And yet he doesn't. Yes. Which mean, how do you tell the difference between when God's showing you something and when you just stumble upon something and credit God? How do you tell the difference? Well, uh, it, I, I see what you're saying. but Instead of saying, like, instead of saying uh, I see more, what you're saying, looking, why won't your brain let you say you can't tell the difference? Because if I asked you, how do you tell the difference between when angel is giving you information and when you just think Angel gave you information, I think you'd have a different answer, right? Yeah. Well, uh, possible, yes. But possible? What I, what Are saying, you kidding me? Possible? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's possible. It's true. We've, got, we've got 15 minutes but left. Is your, is your relationship with Angel as fictional as your relationship with a god? No. I have, I have a true relationship I rest my case. with God. No, yeah, you don't. Uh, look, don't Rick, you experience. need to go back and no, have a true relationship with this call uh, and yeah. start over at the beginning, watch it back and call back when you can refine some of these things. Because at the core, you have clearly suspended faculties that you use every day to confirm things are actually happening to you, to confirm relationships you actually have, and you abandon them on faith for this. So call back when you can operate on that we have Craig from Malibu. Craig, are you the one I spoke to on, on, uh, yes, yes I am. how are you still hunting? It says here, the call screen, it says, Matt said to call and wants to talk about abstract objects, but that's not what I wanted to talk about. No, no, no. He, he tried to squish it in. I, I, I noticed that you were talking about abstract objects with the guy before. And I was like, I thought we were going to call to talk about the Jimmy thing. 
And then I said, but I also would be interested in talking about app shutter objects can use, which that is, okay. but, um, I guess that's how we get it. Um, can I just say before we start the, uh, sure. I think that what Peterson said was actually pretty problematic. Um, he does that a lot. You know, I, I like a lot of what Gordon Peterson is about. And then I think he undercut it with this sort of, let me, let me be, let me be kind of an alt-right sort of controversial take that doesn't help. Um, I didn't hear your conversation, but that's how I see the Jordan Peterson thing. I think, I thought you'd probably judge your debates out. I don't know. But it, it's, um, I, I have a, I have a, a storied relationship with Jordan Peterson and it, don't find him particularly impressive or comprehensible most of the time. Um, and so that's why even after watching the right, clip, well, one thing to remember is that this is an edited clip from something else. And as someone who's had my words edited, I want to make sure that this is why we didn't play the clip. We figured somebody would copyright strike it and, or there may be more to it. The bigger issue here was the notion, whether, whether it's happening or not, it's definitely happening. Um, whether or not Jordan Peterson thinks it should be happening, that the value of women should be contingent or amplified by how irritated the men in their life are by wrong done to them uh, was was that objection. But continue. Right. My, my only point is like, whenever I see Jordan Peterson controversy like trending on Twitter, I win because I'm like, oh, no. You know, because I like his comparative religion stuff. Um, but, <laughs> but I don't, I don't think they, the, the controversial takes are helpful to the overall to his take on comparative religion, which I, I think you probably think is relatively good, but, but that's not what I call. No, I, I'm not aware of Jordan Peterson having a position that I think is relatively good on anything, nor do I think that he has any expertise at all in comparative religions. And I haven't really heard him give any sort of co to, uh, discussion about comparative religions. So maybe it's not fair for me to judge him on that, but let's get back to whatever we were talking about earlier. Okay, sure. Um, do, do, should I start? You want to start, or how do you want to do this? Um, you I you start, I and I will I rudely interrupt. Okay, and then hang up on me, and then then I'll go down. I'll go south from there. Um, I don't really have that much to say about it. I mean, it was uh, there was a little controversy, okay, because I was talking to I believe you know the guy John Steingrad. Pretty sure you've streamed with him once or twice. Um, overall, he's a pretty nice guy. I get along with him pretty well. Um, he used to be a Christian band leader, I think Hawk Nelson. And I was on a thread with him because he did some sort of really kind of gimmicky formulation of the problem of evil. And he, he had disappeared from Twitter for like a week or so, and he, or two weeks or a month or something. And he came back and he'd been doing these kind of gimmicky take that I think are beneath him. So I said to him, you know, something along the lines of, I expect better from you. I used to think you would die with integrity like Joe Schmidt, maybe a little too hard. So, I, so you were, you were response. tone policing, you were tone policing someone and instead of actually making an argument, decided to make it personal and suggest that you expected better of them. Why? Okay. Well, no, not really because that's, that's uh, what I, you I, just I said. I, you just said that you that's said well, that you well, expected well, better wait, from wait, them. Wait, wait. You what? no no no. Listen, you said that you expected better from them, and that you probably went too hard. No, I went too hard. Not him. Yes. Went too hard. So I what the fuck did I say that was wrong just now that you're saying no 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 to? Because I wasn't tone policing. I, I was uh, the, the the formulation of the argument. There, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Sure you that know. is in fact tone policing. Uh, in my in my usage of the term, saying oh I expected better to you is an ad hominem attack against the person saying you are not performing in the way that I would like you to perform. That's how is it like not, police, how so. is it not tone policing? Okay. okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So the point, but the point I was making was that, um, then fine. Okay. I was tone policing. The point I was okay. making was he had a sort of, there's a, there's, a, I'm sure you know, um, by the way, hi, Eve. I watched some of your TikToks. I, I think you're, uh, hi. I think you're fine. Thank on you. I, I like what you did. And thanks for watching. I wanted to ask you a question, but please, um, you can you just finish your thing. Oh, okay. Um, so, okay. As I'm sure you're aware of, Matt, there is, there's more robust formulations of the problem of evil, which are at least credible and challenging to a theist, like the natural version. And John Steingrad, which I don't know if you know, but he's kind of a group that I have a 
that I have respect for. Like, I know. The ideology crew, Paul Gia. Do I know him and I'm not uh, aware? People who... Maybe. He's, yeah, you probably, yeah. Anyway, He's it like, doesn't matter whether or not I know him. Continue. He's kind of cool, okay? And, uh, and like, he, there are certain types of atheists that I like a lot and I respect because they, they help make the conversations between theists and atheists more elevated and intelligent. I would put Paul G. and Stanley in that category. I'd put Drew, the genetically modified skeptic. He's been on my channel twice. Uh, he's a nice kid, actually. Uh, oh. Objectively Dan. And, and John Stein, I was in that camp. So yeah, I was kind of tone policing him and, and it was a little, I was being a little bit too harsh. But sure. He came back Let's get to the it. And, and, said, and, he, and he reformulated his problem of evil to a more robust, challenging version. And we wind up having a good conversation, right? So I was, okay. I was talking to people on the thread about the problem of evil, which I think is a real conversation to be had between the and I did. I'm really guy. getting bored with the backstory that's designed to soften the real problem that's coming up. So get to the problem. Oh, okay. Well, okay. So some guy comes onto this thing and comes, jumps on the thread and, and does some stupid meme to me, like either me filleting somebody or Jesus filleting somebody or something like that. And I go, I said something along the lines of, you know, you just shot some free. I think I, I, I think I retweeted it, which you, you pointed out I do all the time. <laughs> I do that in case you watch. I retweeted it and said something like, you just got some free. You know, Disney, Disney disgraceful, something, something, something. And then I, and then I muted him and moved on. Now, Jimmy showed up five or six or seven hours later with some sort of dopey joke about Jesus coming in my face or Jesus come, come or something like that. I think it was Jesus is a twink who likes come, come in his tum, tum. That's exactly it. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Oh, so you saw, you, you saw that? I saw the tweet. Oh, you know the joke? Or how? So, so I said the same thing to Jimmy. I said something to Jimmy along the lines of, and I used Paul G and Shannon as an example. You know, I know, I, I consider myself friends with Paul G and Shannon. I don't know if they consider themselves friends with me, but I did. They've both been on my channel. I have a good relationship with them as far as I'm concerned. Um, Shannon came to elevate the dialogue. I respect that. I'm totally on board with that. I honestly did try to do that. Um, so I start, I said to Joe, I was kind of shocked that he would say something that stupid in childhood, apropos of nothing. Like, I wasn't talking to him. Oh, he didn't say it on his thread. He said it to me personally. So I said, you know, to him, I'm a little bit, frankly, shocked that you would tweet something that's stupid and childish. You know, I, I thought he was friends with Paul G and, and Shannon, and I'd be shocked if they did that. So I was kind of shocked. Do, do you have to say like, things out. that you wouldn't say? Yeah. What's that? Do you have friends what, that say I, things I that you that. wouldn't say? Do, do you have friends um, that say things that I don't you wouldn't say? Mean? Do you have friends that say things that you would not say? Um, I, yeah, I guess. I mean, a lot of atheist things that I would say, and I can send my friends, my some friends with a bunch of atheists on Twitter. Um, so why yes. is it surprising? Um, so why is it surprising that your atheist friends also have friends that say things that they might not oh, say? Oh, 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 okay. I didn't get it. Um, I didn't get it. Because, because, I, because I, here, I consider... hang on, Craig. I, I, I'd like for you, I'm going to do a summarize real, real quick here. I'd like for you to tell me what's wrong with my summary. You tone police okay. someone, and in response, somebody trolled you. You decided to uh -huh. quote tweet the troll by calling them names. Jimmy trolled you back, and then you decided to quote tweet that and tag six, seven, eight, nine different atheists that you're friends with about how you're reporting Jimmy to like the atheist authorities. Like you're tattling. <laughs> so your tone policing went from tone policing to tattling. <laughs> What's inaccurate there? Well, I mean, I guess I guess we put it that way, but that seems you, childish you as well. well. Well, I, that's what I, some, somebody was saying that on the thread. Uh, somebody was accusing me of being childish in this situation. You I, were. I mean, I mean, I'm, but, okay, but wait a minute. Don't you think that, I mean, I'll make a video about this and I'll, I'll state my case. Um, I mean, I, I guess I can see how 
the, the ingredient that's missing, okay, is that I wasn't telling police a Jimmy, generally speaking. Like, if he wants to tweet stupid jokes about whatever on his own timeline, not only would I not care, I wouldn't notice. He was no, no, no. on my timeline. You decided, you decided to quote tweet him and tag a bunch of atheists that you're friends in in a way of tattling. You're like, look at what Jimmy's saying. How can you be associated with this guy? Look at what Jimmy's saying. Is this really who you want representing I, I wasn't this? I not like that. No, no, wait, wait. wait you wait, weren't. No, no. I, I think you're, you're lying you're as I read the tweet. As I read the tweets okay, and I read what Shannon asked you. I read what Shannon asked you. Did you read what Shannon asked you? Representing, okay, to misrepresenting the tone that I was aiming for. And you are, you are, I get it, this is a back and forth debate, but you are making it seem like I was being more babyish than I in fact was. Because in my- I don't need to, I haven't done any of that. I haven't done any of that. I respond to the tweet, as did Shannon. Do you think that Shannon thought you were being childish? I don't know. Shannon needs to elevate the dialogue person. I, I'm just the original, wondering, the original. because- did you read Shannon's reply to you? Yeah, I interacted with it. I don't. You didn't think that, no. you didn't I, think that Shannon was basically saying you were being childish. No, I thought Shannon was being really diplomatic and parsing the difference between me and Jimmy in an almost expertly diplomatic way. That's how I read that. I can see somebody seeing differently. No, I thought Shannon was. I thought Shannon was. Shannon, uh, wait, Shannon, Shannon's reply to you, phone. Shannon's reply to you, and then I'm going to put an end to this Twitter saga drama bullshit, was, did you just tag all of us because you didn't like Jimmy's joke? I mean, I know this is Twitter, but like, it's Jimmy. Jimmy makes jokes about sexy Jesus. She's clearly right, but not, she's clearly suggesting that it's absurd for you to tweet at a bunch of atheists. You, your tweet literally said, hey, other prominent atheists, and then tagged Paul, Answers in Genesis, Shannon, Charlie Day, Vice Rhino, a bunch of others. Is Jimmy acting like a childish dick? And Shannon's response yeah. to you was, did you really just tag all of us to complain about Jimmy's joke? And you don't think that that was her saying right. you might be the childish dick? No, I think that was her. Let me really, let me ask her. I think that I think that's a really good reformulation, skillfully done. But no, I don't. I think that was her parsing out the difference, trying to defend Jimmy without defending Jimmy, Jimmy, and being diplomatic at the same time in a way that there's nothing to defend. Though. Sent. Okay, yes, there is because I mean, I don't, I don't really think this is important, guys. I called up because Max said call up. You know, I'm not actually I'm not. I'm not gonna the reason I want you to call up, the reason I wanted you to call up wasn't even about the Twitter thing. Uh, I'd love to give you an opportunity to tell me from a theistic standpoint what you believe and why, since that's what the show's about. But I mean, if you're not ready to do that or you don't want to, that's fine too. But you had a question for Eve and I want to be fair. Well, so you know, we, go, ahead, go ahead and ask well, we Eve your question and then we'll uh, go ahead and ask Eve your question. And then we'll decide if we're going to talk about something else. Okay. Um, um, Eve, you were a Pentecostal, is that correct? I think I heard some, I don't know where I heard your testimony. Maybe you were on Truth Wanted. Is that possible? Were you on Truth Wanted? I, I was on Truth Wanted, of your... but I was a Pentecostal. I grew and up non-denominational, charismatic. Right, but wasn't it some sort of famous version, like Gilfan or something like that? Uh, toward, the end of I, my, I, I, toward the end of my faith, I, uh, I was at Bethel, which is in Reading, and that's kind of, one of those bigger um, mag megachurch type place. Yeah. That was the last okay. six so, months of 25 years of faith. I was there. Wow. And what, so your experience with them was negative, I, I take it? I, I don't remember this. I'm going back, I think, a year. I don't really remember the specifics. Was your experience yeah, it, with them negative? It, it, uh, it, it was, there was some negative parts of it for sure there was some good stuff what's your what's your main like what are you wanting to get to no i was just trying to clarify because that that yeah. seems uh i get i don't really know that much about bethel but i think it's a denominational like you called it non-denominational charismatic i think it's very similar to the type of christian i am so i was 
a little bit surprised. I was like, well, haven't you, haven't you had experiences that you thought were legitimately with the Holy Spirit? I mean, I'm sure you did then, but what do you think yeah. of the experiences now? You just, so how uh, does that, how do you parse that out? Again, just my question, because, okay. Oh, I'll, how do, I'll, I'll, my personal I'll, experiences, how do, how do I reconcile those now that I don't have faith? Well, yeah. Can I say something before you answer? Or no? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Because, for example, my, my sister has come to my church here in California, and she has literally been in the service that has brought tears to her eyes. She is not a Christian, and I, I'm not sure she will become a Christian, and I always wonder how she parses that out. Like, so that, that would be my question. How do you parse that out? Do you, you, you tell me. I, I'm not going to put words. Pretty I'm sure. I was, just at a, I was just at a concert that brought tears to my eyes, and I can tell you it wasn't Christian. Um, I, I watched a show the other day that... It brought tears to my eyes. Um, I have moments with friends where I feel intense joy and happiness and unconditional love, just like I was experiencing in moments of worship that was more conjured up. Now I'm experiencing it more organically. But those worship services, which I was a part of, I was a worship leader, I was behind the scenes with all of that, are designed to make you have those feelings. I mean, the rooms are designed to give you those emotions and those sensations down to lowering the thermostat at times. Um, and not all places do this, of course, but you can create those environments pretty easily and you can experience them anywhere. When I go to um, a right, quote, secular I, I, general, I, I don't... Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. Well, why? Hang, hang on. What? Who, hang on, Craig, because I, I want to make... Because first of all, he was still talking, but what, oh. what she's basically saying is the same thing that I oh, said cool. before. I like what she's saying. Uh, she, what she's saying is, is similar to the things that I said before, which is um, I, while I was in church, would have said, yes, I felt the Holy Spirit. And now when I look back on those things, um, I was wrong because we have plenty right. of evidence that those things are psychologically explained and no evidence for the supernatural causation hypothesis at all. It's not testable. It's not falsifiable. There's no way to verify it. It's just a whole bunch of people standing around saying, oh, do you feel that? Yes, I feel that. Must be the Holy Spirit, because right. that's what I think it is. When right. there's no demonstration. Well, I, I had to. Right. I totally understand that. The reason why I was curious in Eve's case, and not necessarily yours, is there are, uh, there are differences in denomination. And um, Yours was, I think, Southern Baptist, which isn't very spirit influenced, spirit oriented. I'm not even sure they fully <laughs> believe in that. But I, I don't know. You don't know, but you're um, you're free to tell me what my, my what my thing was and what it was all about. That's cool. It's educated, it, it was an educated guess. I that's what I thought I heard. You can you can clarify if you want. I'll okay. tell you what. If Am I I'm pretty sure you making educated guesses about me is not a way for calls to go good on this show. But by all means, continue. Um, is, is that all you had to, well, to what, ask? I've listened, you to, I've listened to your testimony a few times. Um, I, I, what, what, what struck me about me that is very different is that her experiential, and I didn't hear this from her telling of the experience. I pieced it together from the type of Christian she was that I'm like, well, wow, she must have had experiences that are very similar to mine. And, and I, was I totally understand that they can. What, see, those I, actually, what, those made it easier for me to, um, to, to leave and to stop believing because once I realized that the only reason I assigned those experiences to a God is because I had been indoctrinated to do so because I, I wasn't willing to just say, I don't know, or, and it's, or it's unexplained. In most cases, it was very explainable. I had been manipulated, uh, or indoctrinated into it. It, it was very easy to walk away once I saw that I had been emotionally manipulated. Theology is one thing to have to deconstruct from your brain and and figure out. But these experiences, those felt like dominoes because those were just emotional things that we can, like Matt was saying, easily look at neuroscience and it explains them to us because we see this across the board. We see it in Kundalini Yoga. We see it um, in other religions and other denominations. We see it outside of religion altogether. We see it with drugs. So that's not, right. that was but a I, really I, easy I thing for me to walk away from. I understand, from. right, I totally understand the logic of what you're saying, but what, mm -hmm. what, I, what I've been offering in terms of working on a cogent apologetic about religious experiences, which is hard to do because you're trying to 
I, only I have epistemic access to my inner life. So it's really hard to build an argument for a third party based off of experiences that are 100% real and, deep and really powerful to me. How do you know they're um, real? If, if, if you could prove they're real, then they I, would I be valuable. To me. I, I believe in them. I believe in the author. No, no. So, Craig, 100%. Craig, Craig, yes. you, you have experiences, yes. but that doesn't mean that your understanding right. or interpretation of those experiences are correct. Nothing is true merely for you. Truth is about facts in the universe. It may be true that you experienced X, but that doesn't mean that your explanation for X is true. Right. I understand that. I, I'm, I'm not. Well, as soon as you, you were, as soon as you suggested true for you and that you have some uh, in, internal oh, I, uh, epistemic warrant that doesn't apply. Okay. So, no. here, well, here, here, then let's do it this way, Craig. What experience do you think you've had that you attribute to the Holy Spirit? Well, okay, that's not how I wanted to explain it. So that's, you know, trying to lead me in a different direction than the most convincing possible interpretation that I can put forth for somebody else. Yes, um, imagine that. Well, I'm, I'm trying to stop wasting time and actually get to something productive. Do you have an example of something that you attribute to the Holy Spirit? That's literally the only thing I asked. And instead of answering it, you decided to dodge and object to the question. Do you, no, Craig, I didn't. I didn't. have You're something? I misheard you. Or misinterpreted wow. what I was what I was doing. I was trying to. Did you tell not you just say that this isn't the way that you wanted to go? And, that, and never mind. Go ahead. Whatever. I don't care. What I was trying to say, okay, was that. Something, this is why I was curious about me in particular, okay? Because she has shared a denomination. I no longer give a much. fuck why you were interested in Eve. Either answer my question, come up with your way to dodge it, or move on to the next thing. Okay, so, so the thing that I was trying to say is that I have the experiences that I experienced that are, I consider powerful religious experiences are 100% real to me and my wife and a lot of Christians I know. No, I sir. No, sir. Real. No, sir. Stop for a minute. When you say they're 100% real to you and to your wife, no experience that you had is real to your wife. You guys don't share a mind. You don't share an right, internal like epistemic warrant. Point. I'm still I, talking, I, Craig. I, you don't share a mind. Like you don't share right. internal epistemic warrant. I just asked you to give an example of an experience you've had that you attribute to the Holy Spirit. And instead of doing that, you talk about how you have experiences that you attribute to the Holy Spirit and how they're true for you and for your wife, but not an example of one. Why is that? Wait, every, okay, I can give you a thousand examples, man. I have been everything. I just my asked life. for one. Please, please one. stop. Steve, please stop dancing. Now I've asked you why you wouldn't. Are you going to give me one or not? Every single day, I put on the worship music that I listen to, and every single day, bar none, no exception, I feel what 100% seems to me to be the peace of God which passes understanding and the power of the Holy Spirit happens to me every single day of my life. And cool. it's as real to me, epistemically. Now, now you, can, you can say that no, a lot, but stop. epistemically. It is as real to me as seen in the shower. Stop. Stop. Listen. Stop what? Every day you listen to worship music and you feel what you identify as the peace. My what? question was, now that you've answered an example of something that you attribute to the Holy Spirit, how do you know that you are correctly attributing that to the Holy Spirit? What is your methodology that confirms that this peace that you feel is coming from the Holy Spirit. Because it 100% to me seems to be obviously the case. Now, I can give you a nope. that I'll put in no, my stop. Of, stop. What? Of, it's 100% obvious to me that you're full of shit. And therefore, I'm epistemically justified in saying that that's the case, right? I mean, I'm really obviously not full of shit. I'm telling you God's honest truth. You don't have to believe me. 
I, oh, I don't. The fact that you are 100. I asked you, Craig, what methodology you use to confirm the source of that piece, and your answer was that it 100 percent feels that way to you. That is circular reasoning. It is tautology. It is a fallacious thing. You have not provided a methodology for which to justify your position. Hey, well, uh, a, a, a epistemic experience can be so vivid and real that to deny its reality to the person experience it would be absurd. If I say I'm swimming in a pool and you literally ask me, how do you know you're swimming in a pool? I say, it would be incoherent. I'm either insane. No, sir, that's patently absurd. If you're swimming in a pool okay. and I ask you, there is a mountain of physical evidence to prove that you're swimming in a pool. Why is it that when you want to seem reasonable, you go to an example that is absolutely undeniably true and grounded in physical facts about reality instead of okay, the fictional, the I fictional internal scenario that you went with? Or for your Holy Spirit. Craig, when I listen to Beyonce, what? I feel peace that passes all understanding. And I swear Beyonce is God. And that is so obviously truthful to me. So there. Like, that's how you sound oh, right but, now. Okay. When people, when people have like a musical experience, okay, that in essence, a spiritual experience, it's just a low resolution spiritual experience. When we're talking about our faculties in action, if I say, I see that thing over there, and it's really feeling far away, it's really easy for somebody who hasn't had a powerful and vivid sensory experience to say, maybe I'll uh, hard to say it's really far away. If you see something up close and your senses evidence the case to you, you are 100% rationally justified in believing that which I clearly perceive. 100% rational. Doesn't no, sir, I'm, I'm sorry. It doesn't mean I, I don't know. You, you would need to define... You would need to define, first of all, low resolution spiritual experience. And, and it needs to be, there's been zero demonstration that any such spiritual experience exists, that it, it exists, is spiritual. Nonetheless, it's low or high res. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. People experience things. You don't get to, people experience. People, I'm still talking. People experience things. People experience things. And they may call it spiritual, but the issue is how do you how do you sh demonstrate that it is in fact spiritual? Because I'm not aware of any way to to the, the, nothing spiritual has ever been demonstrated to be testable or falsifiable. So there's no methodology for demonstrating that something is spiritual or supernatural. Right. But you're asking me two separate things. You're asking me how I justify to myself, which is. Again, I am completely rationally justified in believing that which I clearly perceive. If I no, you're not. In my apartment. No, you're not. Me, that is the essence. What no, you're not. The that they are Jesus. Okay, now I'm muting you. Does the person who believes sincerely that they are Abraham Lincoln, are they 100% rationally justified in that experiential belief? That they are what? I, I missed the... That they are Abraham fucking Lincoln. No, but that person's senses aren't functioning properly. If I put you... Craig, on, how do you know you are? Craig, her? now I'm muting you again. Uh, Your position was that someone is 100% rationally justified in, ex in, in believing anything that they've experienced. And my point was, people experience things that aren't true. Optical illusion, uh, uh, illusions, hallucinations, delusions. You need to demonstrate you you were you were pointing out that they have their faculties you don't know whether they have their faculties you need to demonstrate how you determined that the conclusion you reached and the thing you experienced isn't an interpretation that is inaccurate about a delusion how do you do that okay can i can i talk okay hey, god damn so it craig i just okay no you can't i'm going to mute you again here's how this works because there's a delay sometimes it gets very frustrating and so I put someone on mute like you, and then I ask them a question and I unmute them. And when I unmute them, it's when I ask the question that ends in the question mark that a normal conversation would indicate that it is now your turn to speak. When you respond with, can I talk now? That means you're either being snotty or you don't understand the basics of communication. So 
I'm going to ask the question, and then it will be your turn to talk. And that is, how do you demonstrate that what you experienced isn't delusion and that the conclusion that you reached about its cause is warranted? You are now free to speak. Okay. Demonstrate to you is different than evidence to myself. I am completely rationally just if my senses operate correctly. My senses evidence the world to me as it actually occurs. If you, Jeff Andrews, and Pine Creek Doug, the three most skeptic skeptics in town, were in my room and I said, Do you see that? We'd all go, yes. You can hear that call on. We'd all go, yes. Our senses all function more or less the same. So if I'm experiencing something that's a hundred percent vivid and real to me, I'm a hundred percent rationally justified in, put, in believing in the reality I perceive. I'm not crazy. No, sir, you're not. Crazy. And you just disproved yes, your I own am. thing. I'm going to mute. I'm gonna, no, you're not. And I'm going to explain how you just debunked yourself. If you were in a room with me and Seth, Pine Creek won't be there. If you were in a room with me and Seth and you said, do you see that? And we said, yes, that is external verification that your senses are probably reliable. But if you said, do you see that? And we said, no, then clearly either you are able to see something that we aren't, or you are seeing something, or you are not seeing something, you are engaged in delusion. You are not warranted to believe what you see, irrespective of input external to that, which is what you're claiming, which is why the person who thinks they're Abraham Lincoln isn't warranted. If they think they're speaking wait, to wait, Abraham wait, Lincoln, wait, wait. they're not warranted. You missed the point. You missed the point. I, the point. I missed the point. I'm going to bet you a yes. hundred dollars that I, I did not the miss the point. You want to take that bet? Okay. Sure. Okay. You missed the point. When I say that you, I, I first of all, if you can get Charles Pinecrest dug out, that's hilarious, but I don't know why. Um, so me, me, who is the, who's in the room? Jeff Andrews, you, myself, and uh, uh -oh. God help us. Hang on. Okay. We, 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 I say, do you see that? And you say, yes. That demonstrates to all three of our senses the reality of that car out there. I say, do you no, hear that? No, it doesn't. And it doesn't. Oh, that, wait, wait, you're not letting me finish. All I'm trying to tell you is that our senses would function identical to each other. So when I tell you no, that I have a... No, they system, don't. They wouldn't. That, you know, if I say, if we, we'd, all, we'd all hear the car alarm and we'd all see the cat... No, we, I'm saying that is external... In, oh, oh, okay, I'm going to mute you. Listen. When you say, do you see that? If we say yes, and we clarify that we're all talking about the same thing, that is external confirmation that your senses are likely reliable. There is the possibility that we are all mistaken in what we see or that we see something that is independent of each other and yet we are verifying. But if you look out the window and you say, are you seeing that? And we say, no, that isn't confirmation that your senses are wrong. Maybe my senses are wrong. The point is, which I did not miss at all, you need to have some way to verify that your senses are reliable. And the mere fact that you see something, even if other people agree with you, doesn't mean that you're right. It's a strong indicator that you're likely to be right, but it doesn't mean that you're right. And when, for example, you get a bunch of people together in an environment, and now we're not even, you know, they're just singing in church or listening to their worship music, and you say, do you feel that? And they say, yes, there's no demonstration that they're even feeling the same thing, but to whatever extent they're feeling the same thing, it could be, and mo all the evidence points to it being a psychological experience and not an experience brought about by supernatural causation. And none of it, my, yes, none of it points to a God. My question to you was, how do you demonstrate, A, that your senses are reliable and you're not delusional in what you experienced, and B, that you're inference about the cause is warranted. And your answer was, I'm 100% justified because I experienced it. And that's not how epistemology works. So how can you demonstrate that what you're experiencing is caused by the Holy Spirit? Okay. We, unless we have reason to doubt, we presuppose the, the reliability of our senses. All empirical investigations are predicated on sense data and the reliability of the senses. 
not something I have to evidence to myself. It is a presupposition that tells me. I, I'm, what is I'm out sorry, there but you're world. wrong. I, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. And I'm going to stop I, you to explain this again. I'm going to stop you to explain this again. Yes, we as humans generally rely on our senses, but we know that our senses are not reliable. We know that there are deceptions and delusions. You do not, as a foundation of epistemology, get to, by default, assume that your senses are reliable when they are indicating to you something that isn't indicated to other people, because we do know that senses are unreliable. So you have to, Matt, if you had a headache, you, you get to decide that you have. Hang on, hang on, because I unmuted you to let you talk. And you were talking during that and then said, that's not true and went to a headache. Listen to me very carefully, Craig. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to unmute you. Is there anyone on the planet whose senses are always 100% reliable and un unable to be deceived or deluded? No, but. Cool. I answer fully. Hang on. Hey, no, but. Ha hang on. Well, hang on. Can I ask you a quick? Hang on. And I can hang on. I know this is fucking difficult for you, Craig, but you're the one that fucked this up instead of me having to lead you around by a leash to get you to acknowledge something simple, which is that nobody's senses are perfectly reliable and therefore nobody gets to assume they're perfectly reliable, which is why we seek independent confirmation. It's why your example had me and, and Seth and Pine Creek in the room to help verify this. And so in a world, the reality that you and I share, where senses aren't always reliable and where people can experience delusions, what is your method for distinguishing between a delusional experience identified as the, as the Holy Spirit and a real one dedicated or identified as the Holy Spirit? That's the point. You are free. All I was trying to do by putting Beth Andrews and you and me in a room together was to say that our sensory experiences line up with each other so that, so that we presuppose, I didn't say our senses are perfectly reliable. I say we presuppose the reliability of our senses. That is how we evidence the world. You're not even ourselves. listening. And we, you didn't answer any of his questions and they were good questions. Yeah. This is it. I, I've been doing this for 18 years. I asked very specific questions to get you there. Everybody knows that you did not answer the question. You are misleading me. I'm, I'm misleading you. I asked a question. How can a question mislead you? Because I'm trying to build a case and you're, you're taking me in a different direction than the strongest I'm, You're trying to build a case really based on assertions. You're trying to build a case based on assertions which are demonstrably false, no. and I'm debunking them. No. That's how debate works. I'm sorry no, that you I have an that. irrational I position I and will oh not God. actually answer the question that I've asked. But if you don't answer the questions that I've asked, we're going to move on. Do, what is the methodology? Answers, that, if, if you what have methodology do you have? It'll help. Yeah, what methodology do you have to distinguish between a real experience with the Holy Spirit and a delusional experience with the Holy Spirit? My senses function properly. Go Goodbye, sir. I have no more interest. I have no more interest in conversation with you because I asked you if there was anybody on the planet whose senses were not subject to delusion. And your response to this was to say that your senses function properly. You, sir, are delusional and dishonest in conversation, and I refuse to waste any more of my audience's time on that at all. It's disrespectful to them and the guest. You have, you have a chance to say your last goodbye here. Uh, okay, we can cut it off. Um, can I come back? Nope. Can I try to when, ask the question? He, he's gone, but you, oh, you gone. can say whatever you want. No, I was just going to say, can he ex have him explain to me how I can tell if when I listen to Beyonce, I'm sensing God or if it's just a, a neurological reaction to the music. Tell me how if I, I would know. Yeah. If I have to spend that much time to get you to admit that senses can be fooled, 
And then when I push back, your response is, my right. senses are reliable. Uh, you just wasted everybody's time because you're not interested in truth. You're not interested in honestly defending your position. You want to tell a story. And the story that you want to tell is one that even I've heard a million times before, which is how you get up every day and feel the Holy Spirit and feel it in your life. And you go out and you work with people and you're baffled by Eve. How could she have had these same experiences? Yeah, Matt was a Southern Baptist and that's not spiritual <laughs> enough because you have the right religion. You were actually condescending and childish at mm -hmm. almost every point where you had to do anything, just like you were on Twitter. And you're baffled by Eve, not because it's because you see, oh, how could she possibly leave like the true version that I and it's Pretty because easily. she actually listened and applied skepticism. It's because she realized, well, I'm not putting words in her mouth. I am preaching. She realized the very thing that we were trying to get you to answer. How do you tell the difference between a real experience with God and a fake experience with God? Because yep. while you are convinced that your senses are 100% reliable, you also are convinced that nobody's senses are 100% reliable. And the truth is, there are millions of believers out there who all believe that they've had experiences with God and they don't believe they've had experiences with the same God that you have, which is why there's right. thousand denominations that all identify as some variety of Christian. And then you have Muslims, Hindus, and everybody else who can have some sort of experience and they all think they're right. And all we're saying is, I'm happy for you to be right if you can demonstrate that you're right. Uh, he, him in Canada, who is a theist, who says that they don't, but he does not believe in evolution. Um, Mr. Yum Yum, can I call you Yum? Uh, uh, how are you? You're on the line. Yeah, how are you guys going? Well. Can you hear me? I'm awesome, man. Yeah. Yes, I can hear you just fine. I'm not, I'm not really a, a specialist in, uh, in biology or uh, science. But I am a reasonable person, and I, and I believe that uh, if you're reasonable, you should be a Christian. Okay, cool. So let's talk Thanks. about it then. What's your major objection with with uh, with evolution? Uh, I think it's totally ridiculous. That's basically it. I'm, I'm a skeptic. I believe uh, uh, believing that we came from. I don't know what what do you guys believe we came from what. Well, that's actually what I was going to ask you before we started. I was just going to ask, can you please just give me a quick definition of what evolution actually is? So we know, like, if we're talking about the same well, thing. Well, I think it's changed throughout the, the, the year. So I don't know what the, the, the modern understanding of it. Well, what's, well just what's, give what's, me a quick, quick synopsis. Uh, that we can what, what is evolution and how does it work? Came, yeah, we came from a lower form of, uh, uh, lower life forms, and uh, evolved. And what do you mean by well, came from? Okay, uh, that we uh, uh, are somehow connected or linked genetically to lower life forms. So, Mr. Young, um, when you say do you? All right, go ahead. A young, or, I mean, I was just going to ask a simple question, right? Like, do you do you think or accept that dogs descend from wolves or come from wolves? Uh, good question. I, I would say they're, yeah, they're, they're kind of related. Yeah. How do you think we know that? I, I believe it because the Bible says so. That's, that's basically why I believe it. Oh, does the Bible say at some point that dogs descend from wolves? No, he said, it says that, uh, everything, uh, are, uh, brought forth by our time. So, uh, okay. God, I would say, okay. Yeah. So basically that. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I believe, uh, I believe the Bible is the inherent word of God. So that's why I believe anything in the Bible it is the the truth because uh, I believe we can demonstrate what's written inside of the Bible to be true. We'll come back to that. I guarantee it. Yeah, yeah. To ask to sort of elaborate on that, um, if if the Bible said just out of pure curiosity, right? If the Bible said something like you know two plus two equals five, would you accept that because it said so in the Bible? Would you say you know um no. you know, something our interpretation, or would you like how far would you go with if the Bible says it, it must be true? No, 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 no. Uh, if it says something, uh, first of all, the Bible doesn't make any unreasonable claims. So everything in the Bible, my position is scripture, the Word of God is totally reasonable. And it's consistent with reality. So, uh, and, okay. uh, that's right. the word of God. 
Uh, just to finalize, it seemed it seemed like that. Erica's claim was. It seemed like Erica's question was, "Do you think that the Bible is true because you've read through the Bible and you find things to be true, or are you saying it's true? I don't care what it says, even if I find out later it says something crazy, it has to be true." No, my position, uh, and uh, please uh, carefully pay attention to what I'm saying. The Word of God it subject uh, uh, is subjugates our reality to its will. So basically, everything in our reality is dictated by what's written in Scripture. So that's my point. Okay, so so to elaborate on that, then, how do you know your interpretation is correct? Uh, um, well, I know I'm talking to a woman. Uh, no matter how I, de- I, I am determined to interpret that in different ways, it won't change that I'm speaking to a woman right now. So um, what, things that are... What I- clear what i meant i don't have to like yeah but what i'm asking is like there are more christians in the united states and in the west today that accept evolution more muslims that accept evolution in the west than those that don't so well why not how do you know your and is it wrong what what makes you so certain that your interpretation is correct it's not a question of interpretation if i say the sky is up it's not really something i can interpret if I say uh, I have a right hand and a left hand, it's not something I can interpret. The word of God is quite clear and it's consistent all throughout. So if I say two, four, six, eight, you know the pattern. I, I don't need to interpret the pattern for me to come and understand what the pattern is saying. So if I say two, four, six, eight, I know what the next number is. It's 10. If I say two, so, four, if I say two, four, so what's you, the next number? So you would, to, just to clarify here, to I, make I, sure I that I'm understanding. Question. Yeah, no, it would be, if you said two, four, the next would be six, followed by eight. You'd follow the pattern, right? No, so no, let me it ask- wouldn't be six. It wouldn't be yeah. six. Or it, it wouldn't it be could, It could be it eight, because you could be doubling could be each time. It could, be it, could, it could be 16. Two plus two, plus, uh, it right. four, four plus two equals six. Right, and it could be three, squared, four, and it four, could four, be doubled. I get that, eight, but like- 16. So, 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 this will show you that your, your interpretation was wrong. Because you didn't have en- enough information. My interpretation is not wrong because I know that I need to access all the information correctly to come to a reasonable conclusion. So I just showed you why your assessment of a situation is wrong while mine is not. So you're arguing okay. that because you've got, what, a witness? That, that that's what, because God claims to be the witness and thus has recorded all of this in the word of God, that you've got sort of the inside scoop. Would that be a fair characterization? No, I didn't say nothing about an inside scoop. I just gave you a, a, a clear example. I said two, four, and I asked you what the next number was, and you said six, and I told you you were wrong because you didn't have enough information to come to a conclusion. I just told you that the Word of God, if the Word of God is from God, it has to be consistent all throughout. And simple things like right, left, up, down, uh, the Word of God is clear, so there's nothing to interpret. Cool. So, so I want to ask yeah, you a different question. No, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, Forrest. I mean, uh, what I was going to say is that doesn't sound very different than what I was asking, right? Because like what I was asking is, you know, are are you privy to more information than I am because you've got, you know, the word of God? That's really what I was asking. It seems to be very analogous. Oh, no, no, no. I, read, I, I read the Bible and I, I'm sure you haven't read it like I read it. So I have more information as it relates to this issue, of course. Um, uh, okay, so for, you, 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 you want to take this because I I was going to take it in a very different direction, but I don't think that that's as applicable now as it was when I first started asking questions. So by all means. Yeah, no, it's totally fine. I, 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 know, I, I do uh, want to jump. Is, just to let you know, my name is Mr. Delicure and the people in the chat, uh, they, they, they got the seven day cycle argument in the chat. So yeah, they're, they're right. They got me right. Yum, yum, a.k.a. Mr. Delicure. So go ahead, sir. It's a seven day cycle guy. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not uh, terribly it's, interested it's in it. Proof. Yeah, I'm not not terribly interested in it for a lot of reasons. If we get there, we get there. But I, I mean, it's kind of whatever. Um, but I'll. Uh, I just. I want to jump back to the original thing because you said that you you know don't believe in evolution. You think it's ridiculous. And when we asked you to, to define evolution, you said that it's you know that we're all somehow connected to things. And I just wanted to kind of dig into that just a tiny bit more. When you say that we're somehow connected, could could you just expound a little bit on like how are we connected to other life forms? That, this, this put it like this. Or how what do you think that we that think? We come. Okay. Uh, uh, what I understand, because like I said, this is not my area of expertise. But my understanding is mm-hmm. that we have uh, evolved from lower life forms. Uh, whatever, whatever that entails or, or all the minutia related to that, I don't know. All I know is that's ridiculous so, because the Bible both against that. So let me just ask you a different, a different question. Because like you also talked about kinds a minute ago. And 
I suspect that we would agree on more than we wouldn't agree on in this. And so I want to see if we can bridge a gap here and just, just understand something. So I'm just going to ask you three basic ideas. I promise I'm not trying to like give you some logic trap here. I just want to un- like Don't see worry. if you understand these three basic things I'm about, about biology here. Cool. No problem. So number one, do you understand or do you agree in, uh, with gene theory that, that DNA exists and that it's broken up into chunks called genes and that those genes are what code for the things that your body is and does. And those are passed on from yeah, parent yeah, yeah. to offspring. That's gene theory. Yeah, yeah. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I believe it's a, a, a new uh, uh, form of science that has been um, uh, been studied for the last, what, say, 40 years, 50 years, something new. From my understanding. Gene theory has been a, long, that... a lot longer than that, but that's fine. Um, oh, but like, that no, fine? just no worries. Okay. Yeah, gene, gene theory has been around for, for a couple hundred years now, um, but that's okay. So like the, the other thing, the, so yeah, so number two, um, second thing that I want to ask you about is, do you agree that at least most genes uh, or a great many genes um, have different, what we call you know, alleles, different flavors, different styles? So there isn't just one gene for hair color. There's actually several that can produce a lot of different varieties. So there's different alleles. Do you agree with that? Um, you're, you're teaching me something new. I, I wasn't aware of that. No. So like, say for example, you know, the gene for, for eye color, right? There is a gene for coding okay. for blue and a gene for coding for green and a gene for coding for brown. So there's different kind, this, this, the same gene, it just comes in different styles. Have you heard of this before? Uh, oh, not particularly. No. Okay. Well, that's totally fine. So, so this is just, I'll, I'll, exp- I'll explain it now just briefly is that like, you know, some genes are what we call pleiotropic, which means this actually does a variety of things. Some traits require several different genes, but just to put it into super duper black and white, you know, this just, just how we would teach it to any class in, in high school or whatever, um, is that there are different, what we call alleles, which are just different versions of the same gene. So you could have the alleles to be tall, the alleles to be short, whereas there are genes for your height, you know, there's different alleles for a different variation in there. So that would be the second thing. And if we're cool with that, I, I could, can you agree? Like, even if this is new, new information, can you agree that it makes sense at least? Yeah, it, it makes sense. To me. Go ahead. Reticle. Cool. And then number three, last one that I want to understand is like, would it make sense to say that if these alleles exist and, and if there's different versions of these different genes that exist, that certain alleles would be better suited for life in different environments. So if you have all the alleles that make you the best possible penguin, you're going to die in the Amazon rainforest because that's not what those alleles are good for. Even though you're perfect in Antarctica, you're doing really bad in the Sahara Desert, right? W- would that make sense? Yeah, make sense. Having certain traits. Yeah, that- perfect. So now here's, here's the whole thing about evolution. And this is a very, very simplified, what we call neo-Darwinian uh, idea of evolution. The simple idea is that I pass on genes from parent to offspring. That's how you know, these genes are passed along. And they come in different varieties. And if you inherit from your parents the right kind of genes for the environment that you're living in, the right alleles for the environment that you're in, then you're going to survive and have lots more babies that also have those same alleles that help them in that environment. And if you don't have the right alleles for life in the environment, if you have penguin genes and you live in the Sahara, or if you have camel genes and you live in Antarctica, then you're going to die and you won't have any children and those alleles won't exist anymore in that environment. Those three things together is the basic explanation of, of new Darwinian evolution. So what part of that doesn't click with you? I, um, I, I think uh, it seems interesting that the way you formulated your definition for evolution, uh, I don't see how that relates to going, uh, me evolving from a lower life form. Uh, so because so saying, what, what's the difference? What is the actual difference between... Pick your favorite thing. What's the difference between a fish and me? What is the actual fundamental difference? The fish is in the water. It doesn't have a soul. It Go beyond have... that. Lower than that. Lower than that. What, lower than if that? you wanted to make a fish look like me or make me look like a fish, what would you have to change? Everything. The DNA. Right? Basically. The okay. DNA, that, that was the first thing we talked about. Gene theory is that your DNA codes for what your body is, right? So the only yeah, actual difference of... between a fish and myself is DNA. 
So if I change the DNA enough, then you would, if you had an embryo, a fish embryo, and you change the DNA to human DNA, that embryo would develop into a human, right? If you took a fish embryo and you 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 switch it to a human embryo, become I I, I didn't get what you just said there. You, right, you're, you, you're, you can pick, pick any two things, right? Can I'm I, just saying okay. you can pick any two before, things. Yeah, you can ask a question. Go for it. So, no, um, I, so I, you're I, I just uh, before you ask the question, mm-hmm. I just let you uh, just to let you know that you you did a great leap of uh, quote unquote faith from going from the three uh, options that you just provided to suggesting that that somehow relates to uh, me evolving from a lower life form. That is, so, that's, I didn't uh, talk about evolution at all. I didn't talk about you. you. I didn't talk about any of that. I just, I just asked about the difference between that, two I'm animals. Saying, that's what you need to, that's the link you need to make. That's basically what I'm saying. You have to, so, from the three things that you just enumerated, mm-hmm. you have to make that link to me evolving from a lower life form. That's what you Mr. have Yum-Yum, to I think that Come back to that. Yeah, the discrepancy here is coming from the processes that Forrest talks about versus the length of time that we have. Do you would you be okay with saying that humans domesticated dogs? A domesticated uh, dog? Yeah, of course. Yeah, from from wolves, right? So we did so by okay. selecting for certain characteristics that we like. All natural selection is is that, but instead of human selecting for given characteristics, the characteristics that are favored are those that are beneficial to an organism or a population within its given environment. And when you say, "Okay, I'm down with all of that," everything Forrest said makes sense, which you agreed with, and I think that that's perfect. That's great, right? Like that's all intuitive, and we're all on the same page with that. Where you get the evolution in the sense that you're currently understanding it, like from common descent, which is where I feel the discrepancy is is coming from, is when you add immense amounts of time. Because what I wanted to ask you is like, you know, how old do you think the Earth is, in your opinion? I I don't know. Um, I I, I could make I could I could argue for old Earth or young Earth, uh, according to scripture. It's not really a very important doctrine, according to our uh, the Hebraic uh, narrative. So uh, this. uh, (laughs) Ask your question. I did ask you a question about uh, your your uh, perspective on things. Uh, do you believe yeah. um, we uh, information is also uh, somehow genetically? Um, um, how can I say uh, propagated uh, from generation to generation? One hundred percent information. Yes, I'm talking about uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. intellectual information. Like uh, like uh, let me give an example. Uh, a beaver is able to create a, a dam without being taught. Yeah. By so it in, instincts so are are genetically that was, good. That, yeah. was, that was that was genetically uh, instincts. In, Absolutely. In fact, yeah. You can, actually, you can actually find those genes, and if you go in and knock them out, the organism will be incapable of carrying out the task for which that instinct was related to genetically. So you can go in and plink out like. You can go kill a certain gene in an organism when it's developing in utero. And if it's related to a certain okay. instinct, that instinct will not be inherent in that organism anymore. And we've done this in the lab. Did you, did, 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 now, I know you, I know, I've seen you in a couple of debates, madam. Did you just say we could remove a gene that remove, um, uh, you could remove a, a gene that is somehow associated to information on how to build a dam? Where no, did you for, get this information? What study are you referring for, to? Yeah, for instinct, Mr. Yum Yum. Like you, you can knock out genes that are imperative to instinct. You can do this in oh, well. baby rats for their instinct for caring for their young, for their instinct for recognizing their mother. We've done this with with rats, fruit flies, many things in the lab. Why? Why are you calling it? First of all, I don't know well, why you're qualifying it as an instinct because uh, your the, the word instinct is not really something that is concrete as uh, as a definition. But how you yeah, how are you suggesting that? Being able to create a dam is an instinct. That's already the word instinct. I don't even know where you got it from or why why you would qualify it as such. But well, so so you, you have to keep using this how, word. How, how, how you keep using this word information. Yeah. Would, oh, yeah, yeah. You... If, the reason why you use information is because you have to be aware of your surrounding and you have to have skills. Mm-hmm. And for you to be uh, 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 able to build a dam, you have to be able to inter- uh, engage with your environment and have the skills for you to to to, to create something that's com- uh, complex. So, so you want to take it? Go from taking that and qualifying it as a, like, 
So you want to take it all the way back to the first organism that was capable of interpreting stimuli from its surroundings by its sensory organs and then capable of acting upon those to reach a certain outcome. Yes? No, basically what I'm saying is um, you try to suggest that you can uh, uh, genetically uh, um, uh, prescribe or prescribe uh, 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 the the. Are you trying to suggest that uh, genetic is somehow uh, connected to information or a skill? And I want to know where you got that information from, according to what scientific so, uh, research. So really quick before we move on I, there. I don't know if you, any research you, that you, that. So two, th- uh, three things now yeah, is what you just said there. Um, we need to find some stuff uh, here. Uh, Free move. You, you keep using the word information, and I'm not sure why you're using that word. Um, because what we're talking about is, is, is instinct. It's a behavior that is genetically encoded. So yeah, they are interacting with their environment and they are making something complex. That's just a behavior. The same way that tool making is a behavior that humans do the same way that, you know, barking at an intruder in your lawn is a behavior that dogs do that they have instinctually within them. That's something that's encoded in their DNA to behave that way. Um, and what What Erica pointed out a minute ago is that the, so hold on, <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting okay. there. You got to wait. Is that, you know, so I don't know why you're using this word information in this way, because that's just not appropriate for this. You know, we we're talking about like, it's not as if it's something that they, you know, pass on from parent to offspring, like here, child, read this book about how to build a dam. That's, that's not what this is. This is just a behavior that they do. And you also said this is something you're not familiar with. I'm not trying to lord over you here or anything i just want to know yeah. have you ever actually studied biology at like a collegiate level and learned about this stuff or have you just uh, how, learned how about, from creationist web no 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 how about how about you how about you educate me or provide me a research first of all uh sure. tell me why no, call it i'm not asking to be definition. like you don't know shit i'm asking you so i know what kind of person no, i'm talking no, 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 to no, no, no. and I'm whether willing, or not I'm you saying to, I'm, I'm willing i'm willing to play the role of something who knows nothing and i'm going to act like you know everything and I need you to provide me that research, please, because I never heard about, I uh, never heard of that research. That first of all, why you call it an instinct? Number one, number two, um, because that's the name of me, what we're talking can you about. Give me any, re, no, remember the, the the claim that was made: we could remove a gene that uh, yes. somehow uh, that's linked to. All right, so I muted Mister right. Yum Yum, and I'm jumping in with this. You need to shut up when the hosts are talking. It has been every time, especially Erica, you talk over her more than you talk over Forrest. Boy, I wonder why. When the hosts are talking and they're finishing a statement, you need to stop with this, no, 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 whatever bullshit. You need to sit there and listen and then respond and stop putting words in their mouth and have a respectful back and forth. Otherwise, I'm going to come in and be real disrespectful. I'm going to unmute you now. Shut up. When the hosts are talking. I'm sorry, is this Jimmy who was talking? It is was Jimmy, Jimmy, yes. He was here frustrated. Oh, oh it that, was that, Jimmy, that yeah, because he was very frustrated. That's certified. Uh, uh, uh. Well done, you absolute fuckface. Not only did you come on here and basically you were dishonest and gave a different name so that nobody would flag you. Uh, and nobody would figure out that you are the same asshole who calls in with the same stupid stuff. You have, you should be humiliated by your performance tonight. You did not give a single, you basically sat there and went, Hey guys, none of your arguments satisfy my standard. And my standard is as stupid as it gets. And you were trying to get these a level scientists to speak to your at best D level. And I might be being generous apologetics everybody who listened to this call is less intelligent for having heard your voice go fuck yourself you don't get to drop slurs on my channel eat my ass yeah I've, i it sucks because like i felt like we were almost to the point where we were gonna get somewhere i don't think we would have gotten anywhere with him but like we could have actually covered some interesting stuff and then dude just can't help himself to throw around slurs like it's ah uh, that sucks well i mean I mean, you know, the the thing is, yeah, I mean, obviously he's he's got to bust in with the slurs just to really show how tough and and powerful and masculine he is. But I mean, Jesus Christ, right. I, I don't, clearly the problem is one, it's definitional, but two, it's conceptual, right? Because obviously 
The only difference from what you explained to Mr. Yum Yum and what he refuses to accept is periods of time, right? You're talking about natural selection acting on natural variation, which is brought about through mutation. If you wind back the clock, let's start with life 3.8 billion years ago, you're going to get a hell of a lot of variety. I mean, that's, that's, that's all it is. That's like him accepting that and then not accepting common descent is like saying I accept gravity when I drop a pencil from three feet above the ground, but I don't accept it when I drop it from 18 feet above the ground. I mean, it's just a right. matter of scale. So two I plus mean, two plus two is six, but there's no evidence that two plus two plus two plus two plus two is 10. That's bullshit. That's crazy. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like, well, where's the it's real like, bad. You, I mean, yeah, God. And then, yeah, I mean, you know, the the, the 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 defense mechanism of the frightened bigot is, of course, you know, spewing slurs as if you're, a, you know, a, a horned lizard spewing its blood to scare <laughs> a predator. By the way, in I response, mean, not to being told initially to shut the fuck up, not to being told you're an idiot, which I I've, have been saying silently on my end. It was in response to you are not respecting the other people. You are speaking over them. You are constantly cutting them up. I'm not even talking about like where he starts speaking and you decide you want to ask a different question and you start to ask a question and you can't get it in. I'm talking you are in the middle of your turn to talk and you would go, no, 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 no. And it was literally like, hey, theist. Well, because we were, I'm not we were getting off script for him. You know what I mean, but that's exactly. the thing. We were going desperately the trying to pull you back to, the, to his script. And the, the yep. thing is, is like you two are, I, the, the call was a little frustrating because on my end, I'm like, y'all... Y'all are trying to bring him up to your level, which he is incapable of. Like the 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 debate well, you're having is again A level science versus D level apologetics. I'm an idiot, and I can argue with D level apologetics all day long. It's worse than that, right? Because it's not that he's incapable; he doesn't want to. I mean, I I truly mm -hmm. think there are very few people out there who are incapable of understanding what Forrest explained and then applying that over a long time scale, boom, you get genetic diversity. Cool. Like, yeah. it taught me that dumb. It's very easy to not want to know. And that's the concern that I have for, for Mr. Young. So I don't think he gave a shit. I didn't, I don't think he wanted to know. If he did, then, then he would have been, first of all, he would have been upfront with his definition. I mean, this is like a classic move, right? Is like, Tweak and change the goalposts and the definitions as you move along so you never get caught in a trap. I mean, we, we were one yep. step away from, well, yep. of course I accept microevolution. Macroevolution is what I don't like. I mean, it's the, it's the kid yeah. classic. It? It's a Ray Comfort move, too. Oh, oh do you, you not understand, understand this thing that I've been saying to everyone? Okay, go ahead. You go ahead and educate me. And then you tell him, he's like, oh, well, now I know. And a week later, you can be talking to the same person who will say the same wrong thing. Rick, I mean, did you all see the name yep. tag change I made for him after I found and out he was... I, I, yeah, I, I did. I saw Jesus it. Christ, I did. <laughs> okay, let's see if we have another theist on. I think we do have. We have Mark in New York, who is a non-denominational theist trying to steal man argument from contingency, the case for why God is a reason there is existence. Mark, you're on the line. Indeed. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, so this is one of the arguments I've been kind of taking a look closer look at recently, and um, I, I've heard some objections. They're a little Mark. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm getting audio issues on my end, and I'm trying to record you. Can you just? Is there anything you can change? Yeah, I took it off. Can you hear me now? This is incredibly yes, better. better. Thank you. All right, I'll shut up. Yeah. All right. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Um, so some of the objections I've heard to the argument are very deep in the philosophical weeds. So I was, uh, curious, uh, what your thoughts were on it, Aaron, and if you want me to present it, I'm happy to do that. Okay. So the, the, the basic idea is that God is the reason there exists, that there is existence. If that's the argument and this it's God is incompetent, the... yeah, this God is utterly incompetent. So, you know, it, it God well, being made, a kind of God can do what he made day what say day no i said in response to your point that he may be incompetent i said he may be incompetent but oh, okay that, gotcha right yeah well so th here's the problem if, if if god if i were a god and i'm going to create a universe and the purpose of my creating this universe is for life there's a number of ways i would do that and it wouldn't look anything like it does 
for one thing, I think I would create an eternal plane. And it, yeah, in that eternal plane, you can travel and travel and travel, and you'd never get to the ends of the earth because it's infinite. I could, I could make my, my world an Immobius strip that is itself an Immobius strip in another direction, in the, in the right angles. So it would just be eternal everywhere. And uh, we would have life everywhere. What, that what would be would one be the possible goal. I'm sorry, what? What would be the what advantage be the of that? Is the purpose of the universe for life? If the purpose I mean, of I mean, the universe, I, I, I don't creating the universe, no, is to create no, life, then no, let's I don't create. Think it's not, not, it, it's not, it's not, to, it's not an absolute. It's not to maximize the amount of life. It, oh, okay. For so, there to be. So, by by the, yeah. the purpose being life, then then this God has created a desolate world on which we have a single glass of water with a betta fish in it. Why would you need anything more than that? <laughs> hey, I mean, isn't that kind of the beauty of it? Like, so you create an entire world, a desolate moon, for the existence of this one glass of water with your betta fish in it. Therefore, the but entire moon like, doesn't need to exist. It, well, I mean, I guess, I guess what I'm saying is like God, God doesn't lack resources. It, it not, it, it, if the issue was he had limited resources, then, you, then I would see some sort of logical problem there. Like, why, why would he do that? Of course God has but limited resources. Been, That's why he needs your money. <laughs> Um, so is that really is that the, is that your strongest objection to the argument? Or? I, th I think that's the only one necessary. So so God creates a universe that, seventy eight trillion light years across, and we've mm -hmm. got the one glass with the betta fish in it. Clap clap! I mean, good job, God. So you created an existence that is totally useless. It's full of empty spaces, full of boiling poison and all of this everywhere. But, but you've, you've managed to fit in all of that, the, 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 the one tiny little bit of life. And the only reason we don't have more life is because why would we need more life, right? So let's just create all this empty, useless, poisonous, deadly space, trillions of light years across, all poison and death everywhere. But we're going to use the excuse that, that because we have this one tiny rock, less than 8,000 miles across that temporarily we have life on, that that's the, that's the reason the universe exists. That's your argument. Well, and you're, know, you're, I, you're questioning, you're questioning whether this was the strongest objection I had. I, I have to think this was seriously your argument. Well, no, no, no. Cause I have responses to your objection. I just wanted to, I just wanted to, I wasn't sure if there, if you were going to add additional points. I, I have responses to that. I, I don't need any. I, I, my main. Well, no, we do because you're, it sounds like what your objection is based on, and you might find this helpful. Maybe not. You probably heard it before, but it sounds like what your objection is based on is that there is no good reason. And what I'm saying is, I we don't know that there could be aesthetic value in the size of the universe to God. There also could be scientific reasons why, which is, in order to have the galaxy. And the stars burning their fuel to have the heavy L and to have the process unfold the way it did, which is tied to this, this separate issue that if I, if I have a 30 seconds to mention, I want to, to mention as well, which is the, the hiddenness of God, which your prior caller mentioned. There's um, the fact that God, God is supposed to be somewhat hidden to us because faith is supposed to be a voluntary free choice. And so... If the universe was structured differently, it might raise a lot of suspicions to people that, um, almost like an intelligent design argument, that that could be a potential reason. Um, so it could be that God wants to remain somewhat hidden from us. And this is the best means to do that. We don't, we don't, we have no idea. Uh, so God wants a relationship with it. us, but he wants to remain completely hidden from us. And he doesn't want to give any Not evidence. Complete. He wants us to believe, but he only wants us to believe on faith. 
And the only thing we have to have faith in are the most credulous and least reliable, most questionable liars he can find. Only people who lie bear God's word. That's it. Uh, and, and the only information we have about God is a collection of intracontradictory myths that have all been disproved. Because God is grotesquely inefficient. And the reason that life exists is because God created a universe of boiling, poisonous, flaming chaos in which tiny pockets, maybe more than one, maybe, but we only know about one tiny pocket in which life can exist temporarily. And this is your argument. This is the reason that life exists is because God. The most inefficient, who, who are the contradictory liars? God. What? Who, who are the liars, Dave? Who are the liars? Everybody who professes to know fuck all about God. <clears throat> you mean like the common person who believes in God? You're saying that person is lying? Everybody who says they know anything about God. Every preacher. Mm-hmm. Every imam, everybody who ever said that they know that God exists, everybody who ever said that they know which God it is, everybody, everybody who ever said that they know what God wants, who God is, what he wants, who he hates and why, where we're going to go when we die, anybody who isn't honest enough to say, hey, I don't know, I just like to pretend that maybe there's somebody looking out for me. Anybody that says anything like where they're professed to know what they don't know, because that's what faith is all about. Faith is not a virtue. Faith, faith is only valuable to liars. They are the only people in the universe that need your faith. I guess my response now would be the strongest form of deception is self-deception. And so I would be more inclined yep. to... That's a perfect example. That's, that's what faith is in a nutshell. Self-deception. That's exactly what faith is. Couldn't have said that better myself. Thank you. <laughs> But how do we know that? That that that's really what the rub is. How do we know that? Is Seriously, that, you know, yeah. Seriously, well, because in other faith words, is asserting even, even that, if all the arguments, even if all the faith arguments is are pretending wrong, to know what you right? don't know, right? Faith is assuming things without reason and defending them against all reason. How how can you even ask? How do we know that? This is this this is the construct of it. This is how it's always worked. That's all it is. I guess what I'm saying is, like, even if the arguments are not strong, even if people are deceiving themselves, it's still something that, in a sense, lies beyond. Like, science can't answer that question. And so if Mm. science can't give you an answer to it, it seems to me like you have to be agnostic. You can't take the position that God doesn't exist. Okay. Do you, do you do you believe in other gods? Do you believe in leprechauns? No. Why? Don't you have to just take the position Why? that maybe because leprechauns? There's no explanatory. There's no there's no explanatory scope or power behind those hypotheses. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah no but just like God. Characters to, just like God. Uh, no, God. Has, How is that different from but God? There is explanatory. But there is explanatory no, power. It might be. No. You don't think God can explain anything? No. Never has. And I think he never will. Well, I, I don't I know, mean, therefore, magic is not an explanation of anything. No, but I'm saying compared to a leprechaun or a unicorn or the, those are things Same that we thing. know are fictional. Right. I know, you know that God doesn't exist. Up. I know that God doesn't exist to the same degree and for the same reasons that I know leprechauns don't exist. That sounds very unlikely to me. I mean, there are certain mythologies that we could could trace. Uh, What's that? Let's explore that. What, you want me to respond? I want you to continue, yes. And I think you'll, I yeah, think no, you'll accidentally draw the like, lines and recognize certain, what you're saying. 
Yeah. So, um, no, 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 sorry. It's just because there's a little delay. Um, there's certain mythologies that we know are fictional characters because we could trace them back to certain time periods, you know, or yep. you might not be able to put it on a specific author. But God is something that even if there was no mythology behind it, if, if modern history started now, somebody would posit God because it's a metaphysical hypothesis. It's not just some mythology, it's folklore. Okay, I'll, I'll give you it this. Actually has- I'll give you this. I'll give you that people commonly imagine that whatever happens was somehow meant to happen or somehow arranged to happen. That if you wish really hard, that maybe you can change what happens and that somebody somewhere is somehow listening to all of your thoughts. We, we, we humans realize that, that there are, there are times that, uh, maybe somebody is watching us that we don't see. And so we go about our lives, assuming that somebody's always watching us, even when we don't think we, that, that they can see us or we, when they shouldn't be able to see us, we still think that somebody can see us. And more intimately, we think that someone can read our minds. This is a common failing throughout all of humanity. And this is what causes a lot of people to imagine a God. Terribly unfortunate side effect. No, I, I agree with that. I mean, there's certainly a psychological, there's psychological reasons why people believe, but I think there are so many um, intellectually honest people who have given so much philosophers, mathematicians, physicists, um, the, there is no one psychological profile that fits all these individuals because then you, you just be able to spot it. And so th- it's such a broad swath of people that believe an irrational place that, well, I guess that's, that's the issue is whether I think it's rational. I think it might be mistaken. By definition, it can't. I think the, did you look up what the rational means? Do that. Yeah. Rational means is based on reason. Yeah. And what is that? Explore that. And you're going to realize nobody, no, doesn't matter who they are. Nobel laureate doesn't matter. Nobody ever believed in a God for rational reasons. It's definitively impossible. Well, that, I mean, this takes us back to something like a contingency <laughs> argument, right? Like, that's a rational argument. Like we want it, to, we, not that we want it. I mean, we do want an explanation, but everything we're aware of had that exists has an explanation for it, its existence. And so to ask, whether we know it or not, okay, I'll give you that. It, what, what I'm, that I'm of the mind, I'm of the mind, according to it, I've, I've had the, the good fortune of talking to a number of cosmologists on this. The universe didn't come from anywhere. The universe always existed. The universe always existed. Even if it always yeah. existed, it would still require an explanation for its existence. I don't think an infinite duration negates that, right? Because you would still be justified in asking, what is the explanation for its existence? Like the fact that it, the path maybe goes back infinitely, I, does that really take away a need for an explanation? You're still left think, wondering, well, like, you know, where did this all come from? Why? If it, if it always you, existed, then by definition, it didn't come from anywhere. Well, so you're saying it, 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 it exists necessarily. But I think those are two different things. Like it can, it can exist. If, if, if nothing existed and nothing comes from nothing, so nothing would still exist and we wouldn't be here to talk about it. So the fact that we are here to talk about it means that something existed. And since you know, the first law of thermodynamics is that matter cannot be created or destroyed. And even models of cosmology that have a singularity still speculate that or still say that the singularity was itself eternal and that the universe you know, and the universal laws, as some of them at least, have to be eternal, like universal wave function have to be interpreted as eternal, then the universe right. is in one sense or another eternal. And it's not that it doesn't need a, an, an explanation, but for me personally, it doesn't matter what the explanation is. If there was a beginning of the well, universe and, 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 or, or not really doesn't matter to me. It doesn't change one bit about what I study. Either way, evolution is still a thing. The Bible is still false. 
Either way. Well, it's interesting you brought up the, the quantum wave function because this is this is a point that actually gets discussed uh, in some of the theory circles because it, it's essentially that almost be, turns into a design argument. Because what what you what you have is if you have the Big Bang singularity, and then if if the if somebody posits like well before that we just had the laws of physics and they just sort of existed in some sort of platonic form. In a sense, like what there is, there's something called like the uh, Wheeler De Witt equ uh, equation, and in order to solve that equation, you need to put in constraint to generate the universe that we have. It effectively becomes a design argument. But somebody has to go in and to generate a community. community. So we need something to to create the thing that was never created. So we need to create well, that, someone to cause the thing that was never caused. It just yeah, it's that it seems more radical. No, because what I was gonna say is math is usually not doesn't math math doesn't cause anything. Math is just a description that we put onto things. But um, what I was gonna talk about math. So well, I meant like with the notion of a god, like, right? So, so we're mm -hmm. so we're arguing for the notion of a god. Yeah, yeah, and 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 you're trying to say that that's rational, that in some way, yeah, belief in a magic invisible man who caused the thing that was never caused, who created that which was never created, is somehow rational to assume when not only is there no evidence for such a thing, but all we have are logical contradictions. All we have are frauds, falsehoods, and fallacies yet coming from liars in its support. And that's it, and that's all, and not anything else. How is that a rational argument? Well, I think you, f you feel that way because you don't think there is good evidence for it. But, but and Show me good evidence. Justified. Be the first person in my 25-year career of arguing with theists every damn day. Be the first person to show me good evidence. Well, I guess it depends on what, I mean, all, all I mean by evidence is anything that has the tendency to be a fact of consequence more or less likely to be true. So it's not, I, I don't consider evidence to be some big thing. It's just anything that makes something else more likely. And, you okay, know, so and my, my definition of evidence, the, the simplest definition that I've ever seen, the most succinct that I've ever seen is a, is a fact that indicates. So a fact means we objectively verifiable yeah. data. We both agree that this thing is true. We can both show that this thing is true. And then it is positively indicative of and or exclusively concordant with one available position or hypothesis over any other. It has to be indicative. So show me a fact that is indicative of your God. I've already listed several that contradict your God. Give me one that promotes it. I think existence is a fact that burns some, some tiny, I would say 0.00%, but some. I'll agree with you on the first part. Yeah. It, it, I'll, <laughs> the 0, 0.0, I'm totally down with you. That's, that's how much support I agree <laughs> with. You don't think existence at all requires any explanation at all? I think if there was an explanation required, it would not be. Mm -hmm. A magic imaginary man. But it's, but why are you excluding that hypothesis like 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 ex post? You know, it almost sounds like you just you're not you're not open to that as a as a hypothesis. <laughs> okay, so anytime we didn't have an explanation for anything, right? Was it ever justified? Ever in ever in history? Was there ever any time, any instance when I don't know? Therefore, magic was an acceptable answer. No, of course not. That's where we're at. But perfectly rational. But, but, but like, uh, and you're actually a great person to, to mention this too, because I know you're very strong okay. in the, uh, the the biological realm. Um, uh, Stephen Meyer, uh, and. I'm trying to, I'm actually blanking on the other guy. Oh, John Lennox, who's a professor of mathematics at, at Oxford. And Michael B, uh, Michael Behe, Behe, I think he's being spelled. Um, anyway, they're intelligent design proponent, um, of sorts. Well, that's uh, arguable. Lennox, I don't know. Yeah, they, they, they are design proponents 
but I've heard their arguments that I would argue that they're maybe not as intelligent as they want to make themselves out to be. Uh, Stephen Meyer, for example, recently tweeted an upcoming debate that he's having with me that I had no information about. I didn't oh, even really? know. Yeah. Is he, he's broadcasting on Twitter that he's debating me. Nobody mentioned it to me. I don't know anything about well, it. The There's no date given or nothing. The wires must have gone. I, I would love to hear you debate him because he's... Uh, oh, would he's I really love to like... debate him? Oh, and be he? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Let me have him. That would be so much fun. I uh, but, I don't uh, want to I don't want anyone to start putting things down on their calendar. But the next phase of line development involves debates. Anybody wants to get help us get these things set up? Uh, yeah. Look out in March. I mean, I'm down that to debate awesome. Stephen Meyer and 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 Michael Behe, both of them. But At because the they don't have time, time. I would I would I would love that Meyer. Uh, can you share this spell? Actually, like I, I was just look, trying to look this up earlier today. Like in one of the appendix. Um, he puts like a list of, um, test, like what, what's the, the predictions that he thinks like would be more likely to be true, like under the intelligent design, um, uh, model. So he's really attuned like into the scientific method and, you know, he's not a creationist. Except that intelligent he's, design he's really... doesn't have a model. It really doesn't. Science can't, it's the, it's the postulation that they propose that science can't explain something science has explained, therefore magic. That's their argument. I will give Stephen Meyer one, one caveat, one credit. He recognized that some of the evidence that was being proponed, promoted by other evangelicals, other ministries and so forth was fraudulent. He was very hesitant about making the statement that for example, the Inca stones that yeah. were that were proved to be fraudulent by the Peruvian dentist that was paying people to make these fake rocks with the carvings on them so that he could sell them to ignorant tourists. Stephen Meyer, I think it was, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Stephen Meyer, made the admission that some of them are authentic. Some of the some of these rocks, these, these stones with the carvings on them, some of them are authentic. But, but he said it was so funny the way he said this. But I think the ones that have flying saucers and dinosaurs on them are fake. Well, I'm glad oh, that you think that. <laughs> oh, very oh, tentative. Is. But yeah, they don't they don't have that, a good they don't have great. a good argument at all. And 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 Michael Behe, I delighted in following the whole Kitzmiller versus Dover thing when he was up on when he was on the stand. Yeah, you know, when he when he makes these arguments that that science will never explain this that or the other thing, and then the you know the the, the witness stack a book at fifty eight books high uh, fifty eight books high stack of explanations of the very thing that he said science will never explain, and his his response yeah. to that was to dismiss it. He wouldn't admit that he was wrong about anything ever because creationists never do. That's what faith is all about. Never admit when you're wrong. That's that's another summary statement about faith. Believe things for no reason, defend them against all reason, and never admit when you're wrong. Pretend you know what you don't know. At the, at the faith is the most dishonest position it is possible to have. There's no way to make faith more dishonest than it already is, unless you're a professional apologist. And Stephen Meyer and Michael Behe both are. No, no, they're they're they they're, they're not really professional apologists. They. They actually. Oh yeah, they are. they are. Yeah, they, they kind are. Of morphed into that. They've split it. That like, uh, but he's a perfect. Like, went to UK. I guess he's PhD and he's a professor uh, at uh, Temple. Saying that they, um, I'm saying that they don't have degrees. I'm not putting Behe and Meyer in the same category as Doctor Carl Baugh and Doctor Kent Hovind. I'm not saying that they're like you know the guys with the made up. Uh, made up degrees entirely that they just call themselves doctor when they, when they like Carl Ball, for example, imagined the university that he got his degree from. It never existed. Kent Hovind at least sent a hundred dollars right. away to order catalog to get his degree. My only comment about that court case is just, and they might, the, the judgment might've been correct substantively, but we don't want court deciding what science is, you know, 
And as a general matter, I mean, I'm not saying in this particular case, but we don't, we don't want to leave it up to a judge to say like, this is what, you know, like, because that judge ruled that way, therefore, like, because I've heard that put forward as like, sort of like, no, intelligent design is false. Like the judge ruled against them in that court yeah. case. And it's like, in, not, in, that, in that court case, intelligent design was ruled to be a criminal or was shown to be a criminal conspiracy to get around the law against cre teaching creationism in school. It was deliberately fraudulent. It was, it was concerted to evade the law. It's specifically it, it, to evade a 1987 Supreme Court ruling. So it really was a, a right. criminal conspiracy. And that's all creation. That's all intelligent design theory is. It meets exactly none of the criteria of a theory. They don't have a model. All they're well, about well, hope, is well, denying science in order to promote the idea that there is a God. No, they, they, I think they do. Like, it depends on a model, right? Like, that, like, that life was seeded through. It, could, it doesn't have to be God. It could be, like, another intelligent. No, no, intelligent design does not include that. And Dawkins said as much yeah, in, that, in that another grossly fraudulent movie that, 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 uh, I forget what the, the guy's name is. Um, uh, ben Yoler, yeah. Yoler, that, that, yeah, whatever his name is. I forget his name now, but he, but he, he did this clever editing on that. He asked Dawkins for an explanation where the answer is intelligent design. And given the parameter where the answer has to be intelligent design, well, since there's no God, then the only thing we have left is, you know, the aliens would have to be the only intelligence since there's no God. And then Ben Stein, made the allegation that Richard Dawkins believes that the planet was seeded by aliens. No, he doesn't. That was never argued. Ben Stein is a professional liar. That's what apologetics is. Everybody who, argue, who is a professional religious apologist is a professional liar. All of them, no exceptions. I want to be very clear on that because I expect that I'm going to be debating these people. They cannot defend creationism without lying and i'd be happy to defend that in a debate well i hope you i hope you take up the challenge you can, i think it would be i hope you hope i take up the challenge i just issued the challenge let's see how long we have to listen to crickets well i got because i thought you said he tweeted it out that like this well he happen. tweeted out that we were already having a debate that we were never having that I was never even yeah. informed of. I find out well, from I'll other people. They're telling me good luck in your debate, in your upcoming debate with Stephen Meyer. And I'm like, I'm not debating Stephen Meyer. And then they show me the tweet. <laughs> I'm like, just the first I've heard of it. When the hell is this supposed to happen? Yeah. When was somebody going to tell me? It sounds like somebody was trying to orchestrate something like behind the scenes, like to get it, you know, like to, uh, it's not it that hard to reach me. True. And if it's somebody like Stephen Meyer or, or Michael Behe, who I would absolutely love to chew up like gristle, I would certainly accept. And unless I want to debate it, it really doesn't matter who the person is. It matters what the topic is. I want to, I want to debate a topic that can be won. You know, so I mean, it, it's, it's how Meyer's the question books? is worded. That, uh, I'm sorry, what? Would you read Meyer's books in preparation for that debate? No, I don't think I would. For one reason, I, do, I just flat out don't have time. When I do debate somebody, when, when, I'm, when I, I, have, I have done a couple of promotions for books for authors where I have to take the time out to read a book, but I, I don't read fiction. You know, I, I, I actually have to because I do the Book of Mormon series and I do the, 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 the Blasphemer's Bible series and I just did for three and a half years, I did the Quran series. So I do read fiction you know, as part of my job, but I would rather not befuddle myself with fictional writing so I don't like to read creationism. If it was any truth to it, it, then my associates would have brought that forward to me. They would have showed me, hey, this actually is true. Oh, really? Well, let me look into that. Let me reconsider myself. But that's never happened. I don't think it ever is going to. Well, there's a lot of, you know, in, in the academy, there's a lot of um, bias against, it, like, even the word creationism is such a loaded term. Like they don't call themselves creationists. Well, I know they, um, they call like, themselves example, intelligent design theorists, which is just the, which is the same thing. Yeah. So 
in the court case, what they revealed was that the, there was a book called Of Pandas and People that originally gave a description, a definition of creationism. And then uh, Barbara Forrest discovered a, the pre-1987 version of Pandas and People and the post-1987 version, because that was when the, the Supreme Court ruled that it was illegal to teach creationism in school. And she discovered that the textbook that, that Stephen Meyer and Michael Behe were both promoting was exactly the same textbook. They just had two macro commands to change the word creationist to intelligent design theorist and creationism to intelligent design. That's all. That's what it was, a macro command to change both of them. And the result of that was that it was a misspelling because, hey, they're creationists, so they don't know how to spell things. And so one of them came out with, the, there was a, the, the macro command was confused by the misspelling, and it said C-Design proponentsists because it didn't make the correction correctly. And it yeah. showed the change was deliberately deceptive. They were trying to fool people on purpose with an out and out lie. It was a criminal conspiracy to get away from, to get up, to get around the law against creationism in schools. Right. Well, the reason I said that is because I, when I was in college, I actually did my thesis against teaching, uh, creation science in the, in high school science classroom. I kind of took the position like it's not science. If you want to teach it in some sociology class or religion class, you know, that, that different, but it shouldn't be taught in the science classroom. And when I use that term, especially back then, I mean, this was a while ago when I was in college, the term, there, there was this concept of like creation science, like it was an alternative explanation, like a myth story about how life got started. And it just didn't go anything beyond that. Like there was just no structure to it at all. And intelligent design, uh, like they include uh, the panspermia uh, hypothesis within the intelligent, like well, my, you're, you're talking about directed panspermia. You're talking about directed panspermia, Correct. which, Correct. which also right. doesn't that's right. relate to this. But when you say just panspermia by itself, you're talking about something that's in, that's very different and also unnecessary. So I, I get a little bit confused as to why you keep bringing it up. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's because it's the direct. You got the thing that, that Dawkins was like. It, I don't. I mean, I'm not sure the, the exact term. But when Ben Stein asked Dawkins about it, he was. Taught, when when Dawkins said like the space alien, like that's what I meant by panspermia. Um, yeah, direct so panspermia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you understand right, that what right, Ben Stein did was deliberately deceptive, right? Um, I I take your word out for it. I I I haven't heard that before. I think when, when he I've heard when he then when he the then cuts that interview, and then says. That this means that Richard Dawkins believes that life came from aliens when Richard Dawkins clearly did not believe that. You don't understand that Ben Stan right. was lying when he said that. That, yes, but I watched the interview and I watched. Okay. Uh, and so when, uh, when Stephen Meyer and, and, when, when, and Michael Behe and the other intelligent design frauds changed the definition <laughs> of creationism, to, you know, because they kept the exact same definition, by the way. The, the definition never changed. They just changed the definition of the, the, the word that they're defining, which means creationism right. is intelligent design, and intelligent design is creationism. They're exactly the same thing. It's the same definition. They just changed the word, but left the same definition. Yeah, you understand that, that was right? A long time ago. That was but does it matter when it was? Ago. Does it matter if that was two years ago or if that was 10 years ago? That was a lie then. It's a lie now, right? It was still a I'm lie. Saying it's the right? definition. If the definition in 2005, yeah, when they, they were just or, or in 1987, when they did that, was it a lie? If they were being deceptive when they made the edit, like, yeah, I think that's shady. I don't think no, that's they did the, they did the edit specifically. So that they could pretend that, oh, well, uh, teaching creationism is illegal. Well, we're not teaching creationism. We're teaching intelligent design, which is creationism. It has the same definition. They just changed that one macro command to change the word deliberate deception, lie. Do you accept that that was a lie? 
I think whoever did that, yes. I'm saying I don't know that. Whoever was did that. I okay, so you you agree that Stephen Meyer and and Michael Behe were lying. Well, no. What I'm saying is I don't know if they knew that. Like they weren't. You the don't know the if the if the book that the Discovery Institute was promoting with before and after the macro change, before and after the Supreme Court ruling. You don't know if the Discovery Institute knew what the Discovery Institute was doing when the Discovery Institute it demanded that they make that change. Mm -hmm. I'll look. At, I'll take your word for. I'll take your word. I, yeah, you sound like an honest person. And I take your word for it. So um, I'll look into it. And I, I as I told I, you, I, there is no way to defend somebody. creationism honestly. You have to lie to defend creationism. Every argument for creationism, and by that I do mean intelligent design because they are exactly the same thing, you have to lie. There's no truth. Well, again, this goes back to whether it's self destruction or lying, because lying implies Does it matter? like a, a purposeful. Show me the truth to it. What's that? If you can't show me that there's any truth to it, then there is no truth to it, and we're done. Yeah, no, I know. Well, I mean, look, look, I think it's something you 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 seem to have the position that reasonable minds cannot disagree on this, and, and that's just not the position that I have. Like, I think that yeah, informed, yeah that that is my position. Could just can... right. That is my position. Yes, we're at forty well, minutes. So you all that. know, yeah, um, and I'm, we're not getting any. We're not getting yeah. anywhere. No, no, but it's 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 helpful to me to to uh, to, to, to to have this conversation. So I'm thank you for that. I would suggest uh, I've I've really made bad. a couple of videos where I've asked for people to present evidence of creation. If you think it's a rational position, come up with a reason that that that, that, that qualifies as evidence. Show me the truth of your position, or admit when you can't. Creationists can't admit that they can't substantiate their claim. They just they they want to put everything off on the other person. Want to shift the burden of proof. They want to say, well, you can't prove there's no God. I don't have to. You can't show me there's any truth to the assertion, so we're done. If evolution, if, if sort, I know this term rubs people the wrong way, but if like the macroevolutionary theory was sort of disproven, where would that leave you it's sort of it's in terms of the science? If... And you're not, I don't think you're understanding the term at all. Macroevolution has already been clearly demonstrated and directly observed and documented to start with. But if, if evolution significantly, some capacity of evolution was disproved, there still wouldn't yeah. be any evidence of God. If evolution were disproved tomorrow, the Bible would, has, well, was already disproved yesterday. There, there still <laughs> is no evidence of God. It wouldn't make that claim more likely to, to you in any, uh, in any way. No, the Bible's still wrong. God is still wrong. God is still a lie. Yeah. Well, it is interesting. I mean, uh, one of the guys who gets criticized a lot is he's associated with over Dr. 40 Reed. minutes now. James. Okay. No, I'll, uh, let's call it a day. I'll let you gentlemen run. Thanks for the chat of having a field day with me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you damn right. <laughs> See you, bud. <laughs> Bye. Uh, we have Aiden from him in Arizona wants to talk about how Christians and atheists can have better conversations. So good. Welcome, Aiden. Wait, Aiden. Hello. Is that you? Wait, teenage yes. theologian? Uh, yes, that is me, Jessica. Hi. Sorry, he Hello? follows me on my social. Hi. We've chatted. Hi. Oh, cool. Well, <laughs> I, I, I'm so welcome, Aiden, Jessica. I, what are, what are your thoughts or questions? Uh, okay, so basically, um, okay, so this is my first time on the call-in show, so if I screw up, I'm, I apologize. Um, so basically, I was just wondering, how can uh, Christians and uh, atheists have better conversations? Because, like, you know, if you go, like, on Twitter or any YouTube comment section, um, basically, uh, you, you'll find a bunch of people, you know, tearing each other's heads out, yelling, and, you know, all that stuff. And I don't really like that. You know, and um, I thought maybe you and Jessica would have like um, uh, some insight because I know like uh, uh, Jessica has had, you know, Christians on her uh, YouTube channel and done uh, my uh, live streams with them. And I know you debated um, Michael Jones and Inspiring Philosophy, who I actually met in real life. Really nice man. 
So yeah, we went to dinner basically, after. Like, although I think he doesn't like me as much anymore because uh, he said something and I told him to go fuck himself or something on Twitter. Um, and since then, we haven't really spoken. I think he he had a slightly different take on go fuck yourself than I do. But I was in the Navy for eight and a half years. There are people who are going to tell you that you him. called the exact wrong person to ask about how to have the better conversations. I do have thoughts, but I'm, I'm going to let you <laughs> just start with your thoughts. I mean, I don't. We're going to ask me about ha having better conversations. I'm yeah. quite literally known online for eviscerating bigots. But that's like, un for better or worse, that's my reputation. I do think what I will say is that when people are, because, so here's the thing, right? Like, Aiden, you and I have interacted multiple times and there has been no animosity. There has been no uh, vitriol, none of that. And the reason for that is because you are actively listening, you want to learn, and you are not in the conversation to like beat me over the head with it or to win or to like embarrass me or or to marginalize me or other people, right? So like in those conversations, yep. I am happy to engage in a respectful um, dialogue, to put it bluntly. The reason I, that they're, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, no I, I thought you were done. Go ahead. I was just going to say the reason <laughs> that there are so many vitriolic conversations online um, is that so many people, especially those that think they get their understanding from a divine being, right? So they're inherently correct and it's because God said so. Uh, and therefore, like, their positions, which are largely hateful on many topics, are correct and nobody can argue with them. The reason those are vitriolic, to me anyway, one, is that these people are infiltrating government and actually causing legitimate harm, uh, like death, right. harm, all of that stuff. And, and mm. oftentimes, these people have lived their entire life so privileged that nobody has pushed back against what they're saying. And so, like, I actually have no uh, delusions that I'm going to change their mind. What I want them to know is that there's a consequence for being a piece of shit. Okay. And that is being humiliated. Uh, but if someone is wanting to learn and wanting to engage and wanting to actually talk, and I think you know this because we have, like, I'm 100% here for that because that is how I found my way out of out of a very very fundamentalist high demand religion okay. i kind of want to uh well, kind of want to jump in a little bit because I, i've never there. had a conversation with aiden but recently i've done a lot of debates yeah. and and there are people who notice a difference in a a little bit in me in a formal debate with the moderator versus me on the call in shows and the, the reason for that is very simple. On the call-in shows, uh, I'm not dealing with anybody who's supposed to be an expert at all. And I have other people on hold. And I'm the one that's sitting here steering to say, is this call going to be productive? Are we going to learn something from this call? Are we just going to sit here and repeat ourselves for the next 10 minutes? Is somebody going to get so pissed off that, they, that this just devolves into yelling and nobody looks good? Um, am I being disrespectful to the four or five other people who are waiting uh, on hold? I'll probably All of those are considerations on the show. In a hmm. debate with a moderator, it's you're there, you're there for the whole time. This is the person who's there as an expert. And so the only time it really gets heated in those debates is when somebody um, ignores what the debate's about to try to go after something else. I did a, I did a debate last week with Stuart Connectly. We've debated several times. I've debated his dad. It tends to not get heated between the two of us, despite the fact that Stuart does things that annoy the shit out of me. He spent a good chunk of that last debate saying, Matt thinks this, or Matt probably thinks this, or Matt would say this, or Matt would probably say this. Um, I just, I'm, I'm getting ready to release the debate review of it. I'm literally sitting right there. If I'm sitting there and my opponent tells other people what I think, what I'd say, what I would do, instead of asking me what I would 
think what I would say or what I would do, then they're trying to prop up a straw man and they're pretending that they know me better than I know myself, or they're, they're trying to avoid uh, getting an answer that they don't want out of me. And that will really piss me off. And despite that, I'm generally um, calm when Stuart and I debate, even though he, he did it a million times. Um, well, all right, that's a slight exaggeration. He did it a lot and it pissed me off, but I stayed calm. I think the reason is that for whatever reason, before we started debating or as soon as we started debating, Stuart and I made some sort of personal connection where, oh, I actually like that person. Uh, I, I, I think that I care about that person. I mean, we're not friends or anything, but there are some <laughs> of my you know, opponents who never get even close to that sort of connection. And then there's others like Blake Junta and I did a bunch of debates and we always got along. And, um, oh. it's, I think there's a personal component to it in much the same way that you watch the anti-gay Republicans, um, who changed their views on same sex marriage and something after one of their family members comes out as gay or gets married. Uh, it took something close to them personally for them to have enough of a connection to care enough to put in the extra effort to not let it evolve into name calling and yelling. And what you see online most of the time from me and Jess and everybody else is, oh, here's some anonymous person flinging poo at me on Twitter. Why should I give a fuck to even try to keep it peaceful? And, and the difference that a lot of people don't see is, um, I'm not famous, I'm not a celebrity, but I'm pretty well known and I'm a pretty high profile target within our tiny little pond. I'm a big fish in our tiny little pond. And because of that, my life is very different from most everybody else's, the people who are calling in and all that. Um, it doesn't matter what I put up as a video, I'm under attack from vegans and transphobes immediately within the first five or 10 comments. I put up a video about Pascal's major and ethical vegans come after me. Uh, I put up a video about religious, um, offense and somebody, you know, says something homophobic immediately. Um, and most people don't have to deal with that. And so if it comes out on occasion where the stress, uh, gets to me or where I get to the point where it's like, uh, I don't, I just don't care. You know, like with liquid snake, I was done with that conversation. There's nothing more to say. But despite all of that, let me say this and turn it over to Aiden. I would always like to find better ways for people to have conversations. I would like to change mm -hmm. mine. I don't do this to earn points or to, I don't, I don't know, to, oh, look, I own Zord the Christian. Ha, ha, ha. That's too easy. I, I can do that. I can do that without even attempting uh, to do that. I genuinely want I people to find myself laugh most of the time. Yes. Yeah, so there are times when I do it for the last. Sorry, but what are, what are your thoughts on how we can do better? Are you talking to me? Or just... Yeah. 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 I want to know what you think about how we can, because I think you okay, and I disagree so... on the God thing. So I don't know whether we'll get to that conversation tonight or at any point, but how would it, how it, like if you, if you, if you were to pick out the best way for me and you to have a discussion about whether or not it's reasonable to believe that a God exists, what would that look like to you? Uh, I think that would just basically just look like just kind of like what we're doing now, just basically talking about our, uh, you know, basically just talking about what we agree, what we disagree on and stuff like that. I think like, basically I think cause what most like Christians and atheists and what everybody gets sucked into it's probably tribalism, you know, us versus them mentality. I think like, um, if we just settle basically saying like, look, we're both on a pursuit of truth. And, you know, we just settle the fact that we, we may, we both may like, may, may not know, be a hundred percent certain on anything or, or on what views we hold to. Uh, we can have like, um, a better conversation, you know, basically, you know, just basically just, should just try to be friendly and whatnot and stuff like that because like i've had like honestly like at my school 
in my high school, like I'm a vice president of a Christian club. And I basically like, um, had more talk about religion and Christianity with non-believers rather than my fellow believers. And they've actually gone pretty deep. And so I think basically, I think what would look better is that we both share a curiosity to understand our, our, our views, our own views and understand basically, um, where we come from as people, you know, I think that's one of the best things too. And then also too, if, if any Christians are listening to this, I would say also just remember that, and, uh, even non-believers are made in the image of God and are worthy, uh, of all respect. So I think basically. Number one, we just need to recognize that we need to respect each other as an individual human being. And number two, also show kindness and compassion towards uh, uh, where, where we come from as people. So I want to say two things or three things, maybe. One, Aiden is in high school, so y'all act accordingly. Two, Code. Um, just that's all. Two, In a perfect world where religion wasn't influencing my existence or the existence of other people, like their rights, then sure, Mm -hmm. we can behave in a way that is like, oh, you believe that? That's fine. I respect that. Just don't talk to me about it, right? But the reality that we live in right now is that Christians, especially fundamentalist evangelicals, are or have infiltrated our government and they are imposing their minority will on everyone and they're trying Mm -hmm. to do it even more so the problem is that presenting this front of civility and both sides and let's all be nice to each other and sing fucking kumbaya by the fire is that actual lives are being impacted by the hateful rhetoric that is coming out of the evangelical right now i'm not saying that's you i don't think that's you Mm -hmm. i don't know but this is what's playing out culturally and socially at a very high broad level And so pretending that, like, that's fine, these are just things we believe and we can respect each other's viewpoints is like me saying, oh, like, you want to kill me because I have purple and pink hair? Like, that's fine. Like, that's fine. We can respect each other's viewpoints, you know? Like, it's okay. Um, It's not okay. And and that's the thing. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's not that I, I have Christian friends that are like progressive Christians and we don't have to get into all of that because I know we probably all have differing opinions on that. Where I have always come down is this. Are you speaking out against religion trying to infiltrate the government? And are you supporting bigoted rhetoric that harms other people, right? You can have whatever spiritual beliefs you want. That's fine with me. It's none of my business, to be honest. I have friends that are pagan, mm-hmm. polytheists. I have friends that are atheists, agnostics. Like, I have lots of friends. The issue for me is when you start using your religious beliefs to control and harm other people, especially through legislation, I'm not going to treat your position as just like, you know, just like, I can respect it. That's fine. Because it's not fine. It's you trying to control and harm a broad swath of the population. Again, I'm not saying this is you doing it, but I am saying Mm -hmm. this is why sometimes the conversations cannot just be us respecting each other's positions. Like, I'm not ever going to respect someone that's like, yeah, I just think Black people are less human. Right? And like, exactly, exactly. But like, what I'm saying is, Like, I grew up in a very fundamental sect of Christianity that has infiltrated the government that is like, yeah, trans people, mm, yeah, abomination, hell, not real. Don't Mm. don't treat them as equal human beings, right? So, like, that's the thing. Like, that's sort of the difference for me. Your spiritual beliefs are your spiritual beliefs. 
I don't care. But I do care when those beliefs seep into law. There's a there's an unconscious bias. E, 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 Aiden, you said something um, a little bit ago. You said even non-believers are made in the image of God and deserve respect. Um, mm -hmm. And I kind of want to point this out because that carries an implication that one would presume that we don't. My position is that, well, yeah, what if I said even believers are deserving of respect? It, it's kind of like that backhanded compliment. It's it's fine to say my position is that everyone deserves respect, even if their beliefs don't until such time as they demonstrate that they're not deserving of respect anymore. But by default, people and their rights should be respected, even if their beliefs don't. But when you say it's the difference between saying God loves everyone and God even loves murderers, God even loves life, God even loves pederasts, trans people and black people. Does that not sound absolutely horrific? that we're implying that here's a collection of bad things that aren't deserving of love. And two of them are, are whether you're trans or black and, but God loves you anyway, even though that, that is the type of message. I mean, and I know you didn't think about that. You didn't mean that you weren't trying to slight anybody, but when you say even non-believers are made in the image of God and deserve respect, what if you're wrong and nobody's made in the image of God? Are we then no longer deserving of respect? Yeah, I just like to say, uh, well, I apologize if I offended uh, you guys by no. saying that. Um, I, that thanks. I'm, I'm just making an academic point, kind of. And that is, if, oh, if you're wrong okay. and none of us are made in the image of God, what then would you use as a basis to declare who deserves respect? That's a metric. Uh, that's a good question. You know, I really get, you know, I, I've really thought about that, that question too. Like, what if like I'm wrong, you know, what if God doesn't exist? Um, and basically, um, if, if I realized if I just came to the fact that, you know, Christianity isn't true, we're not made in the image of God, I guess you could say I would just use, um, my own, uh, I guess moral intuition to, to judge of whether you're worthy of respect that answers your question. Yeah. And, and because, so the only reason to even mention it, it th that was the only reason I was mentioning it was because when you say something like even believers are made in the image of God, it, it kind of says, I'll respect you because God tells me I have to. <laughs> which, well, by the way, like, um, which, by the way, oh, isn't sorry. true. There's nothing in the, there's nothing in the Bible. You know, there, there's, well, it's, you know, I've only come only to the, well, I've got, I'm promoting two or three videos here. Continue, Aiden, my video, my problem. Okay. So basically, I was going to say, um, like, when you said that, that God says I have to respect you because he tells me to, like, um, I would say that's a kind of like a, like a, I guess, forgive me if this is the wrong term, but that's like deontology ethics, I think that's what it's called. I go more, more like what, uh, what inspired philosophy said in his video on virtue ethics, which is basically... Uh, God, you know, tells you to respect others because it leads to a more virtuous life. And I think many other Christian philosophers say like, you know, loving God, loving your neighbor, loving your enemy is a way to so, achieve like uh, the highest good, if that makes sense. That's Aiden, kind of like how I perceive question. it. question. Yep. Like, mm -hmm. very serious because I don't know the answer to this. Um, is inspiring philodendron i mean uh is inspiring philosophies voting in favor of trans rights is he voting in favor of gay rights is he voting in favor of women's bodily autonomy because simply saying that you respect people when you do absolutely nothing to support their human rights and actually actively mm -hmm. work against them that's not respect that's, I see. That's just a facade so that people like you better. And, 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 I and think, this is this is the real question. Like, I don't know what he's voting for, but like, I think that's really important to think about that respect is not just something that you say. It's something you do. Yeah, it's I, I there's a couple of videos that I just released and one of them actually it touches on this because um, he inspiring philosophy tweeted God loves all trans people. I did a whole video oh, about that. that tweet. 
I did a whole video about the tweet. It'll be out to everybody else tomorrow or the next day. It's out to patrons now. Um, and some of the things that I mentioned to you are already there. Let me, let me do this because I'd love for you to call in sometime to actually defend what it is that you believe on behalf of a God to see how that conversation goes. But I can't do it tonight because we have other callers waiting and I don't want to like overwhelm you on night one. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm a lot to handle and me and Jess together are a lot to handle uh, yeah. times 10. Yeah. And, and so I would like to, in the interest of how to have better conversations, end this one on a positive note and have you call in some other time if you feel up to uh, defending what you believe and why. I just want to say before you go, Aiden, I think you're great. Um, mm -hmm. I really, really like you and enjoy you. And I think you are on a really good path. Keep questioning, keep seeking, keep asking, keep researching, and just let that information lead you where it will. Okay. Hey, thanks, Jeff, for the kind words. And thank you. To, and thank you too, Matt. Have a good night. You're sure. Welcome. Thanks, Aiden. We, uh, we've got a call. You, you, do you see that call on the line? You ready for it? Do you want it? Yeah. All right. We're going to talk. We're going to bring in Bernard, who is a person without pronouns. That's incredible. I suppose use the default they, thems for Bernard. Did I? No, it's only totally not. Oh, what pronouns would you prefer then, Bernard? No, it's not prefer. I just don't, I prefer not to pronounce behind my name on a screen. Oh, gotcha. Well, I don't know how to broadcast to the audience how they should refer to you in the chat. Hey, well, we'll that that, that would morning. mean that the default, they, they them. them. Yeah, they, them, or you can just use Bernard's name. That's, uh, Bernard does, Bernard wants to do things on, on Bernard's own terms. So, uh, they will be respected in that way. <laughs> uh, you can either well, use they, them, or they. <laughs> so, Yep, say Bernard will be expected. Totally, totally. Bernard, okay. they, well, no, they, them is the default, the, the one for everybody, and Bernard otherwise. But anyway, now that we've gotten past the pronouns thing, uh, go ahead and chat with them. Uh, Aaron. Yeah, you well, you haven't, I'm curious got, you haven't to got the pronoun thing, but okay. Yeah, so, like, but the question posed like, here oh, is saying seeing if Aaron is consistent in his beliefs. So seeing if Aaron is consistent Aaron? in his beliefs. On our, well, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to read your question. Seeing if Aaron is consistent in his beliefs based on our prior debate in 2015. First of all, I don't know who this is. And yeah. two, I, I'm curious what my beliefs are. Because I'm not aware that I have any. Yeah. Yeah. I was, of course, not aware. That's okay. Um, I was wondering, because we, we, uh, we had a debate in like 2015 on League of Reason. I don't know if you remember that. Do you remember that or... On, on, on my, on the, 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 the website, League of Reason? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, we had the debate. Anyway, you said you go, you, you typed in, you could prove something without evidence. Would you still, would you accept that as a position or what? I doubt very much that I would have said that. It's not a doubt. It's Maybe if you gave me some context. Maybe if you gave me some context. There is no context. It's like you wrote, you wrote, um, our deal was I could prove something without ev evidence. No, I would not have said that. Yeah, well, okay. But you could screenshot it. It's on League of Reason. It's there. Did you, you look screenshot it, it? I, yeah, I screenshotted it. I'm trying to like. I got I'd like to see a actually. link to it because I, I don't know who you are. I don't remember this conversation. I would not have said just the statement that I, that, that my ascertain that, that, that I claim that I can prove something without evidence, unless we're talking about something specific where logic would be sufficient to prove it. And so I don't need evidence. Well, Maybe if, if it was you, a, if you go to legal reason and you search Aaron Ra Bernard. And then you go okay. uh, advanced search, you think? No, not advanced okay. search. I think it just comes up, but it might be because I searched it before. And, okay. and now I'm trying to find it. So, so what is the, oh, what yeah, is the phrase? It. What is the phrase exactly that I'm looking for there? If I were to do that okay, later and I'm not page, doing it on the show. Page six. Page six. 
And then you, yeah, you said it and you're like, I don't have to provide evidence to prove something. And then I kind of laughed oh, at oh, that so and then you stopped talking opposite to me. opposite message. I don't have to provide oh, evidence boy. to prove something. So it was so that the context there is that I don't have to prove something. Okay. Try not to analyze it too much until I get the actual quote. I, uh, I just thought it was kind of funny. And then the funny thing is you said to me in the beginning of this debate, you said, after the debate, I am not going to be a creation. You're going to deconvert me. Okay. So th this was one of those options where you I, I, I was going to explain the evolution to you. Yet you'd understand it using a Socratic method, wherein you answer every question or point posed to you. And then we move on to the next level based on that. I, I right? have to jump in and just make uh, a suggestion. No. Bernard, you sound like a whiny little bitch. So why don't you just actually propose something that you two disagree on as opposed to, hey, here's something that I recall you saying and the way I want to say it. And there's, you know, I'm saying there are screenshots, but I don't have it pulled it up. Why don't you actually just propose a debate topic and debate on the topic instead of whining about the last time you were on? And by the way, I also wanted to stop in to make sure that you check the screen. Don't turn the sound on. Let's not make it annoying. I updated the Chiron to make sure that it, it resembles something that you're probably much more comfortable with. So it's it's there for you. Oh, I, I probably won't even watch it, but it's okay. Like, I, I uh, like whatever, I guess. If that's your perception of the conversation, I understand it. I was just saying, I was just coming here just to explain to Mr. Raw that he's told me that after the conversation I had with him, that I was going to be an evolution. And yeah. if, he if said you I can go through the parameters, me, but I'm, laid, but I'm yeah, not, that was laid out, but I'm and, not. And then the requirement is, the requirement is that within a couple dozen mutual exchanges, wherein you have to address, you have to answer every direct point or query. Then you will be an evolutionist for a proud evolutionist for the rest of your life and will be embarrassed that you were ever a creationist. The problem that I've had with this is I've issued this challenge and I've tried, tried to walk this through with dozens of people over the years. And with one singular exception, all of them have refused, repeatedly refused to answer any fucking question they just won't they never I, concede I anything not even, the, not, not even the definition of what evolution is nothing so that i, I have to repeat I, I the understand. same question I, six or seven times and you still don't answer it i'm like okay i've done i've repeated this question a half dozen times i am no, under no a further obligation this discussion is over you didn't meet the standard I, so i'm under no, no obligation to continue but if you did I, if I, you did walk through and, and answer the questions appropriately and so that you, you just answer the questions at all so we can get to the next step so that you understand level one, we get to level two, then you understand level two, we get to level three and you'll get there. But I can never get anybody else after I, level one. I, I understand. I understand. But the thing is, um, like the way, the way we were defining evolution in that argument was we were defining or you were defining macroevolution as chain at being more above the species level. Yeah, which is the standard and definition then, according to every academic institution. Look it up. He, he, right. Well, okay, okay, that's fine. You can bring along all the academics, it doesn't matter. But what I'm saying well, is yeah, if, if that then, is if so, if evolutionary biologists invented this word and says this is what this word means. And then some creationist fucktard comes along and says, no, I think it means one kind turning into another fundamentally different kind so that elephants give birth to pine trees. I'm sorry, that's just stupid and wrong. And you have to admit that that's the wrong definition. And this is what the word really means. Like, I understand why you're angry, but the thing is, we I don't were, like being we lied to. Disgusting. I, I don't know why creationists. And then feel okay you, with you that. went sideways on the definition because I said when you say change at the species level, you're pretty much uh -huh. defining microevolution as well. No, I'm not. I'm sorry that you don't oh, know what microevolution okay, is either. That's you think. So yeah, I, I, there, I are, there are what you want to think, but well, it's not what I want to <laughs> think. It's what we can. It's what we can prove right now. Go to evolution one hundred and one. 
from UC Berkeley. Look up the fucking definition. It'll give it to you. That's the See, easiest one to find. To, you don't have I can to give you a me. half a dozen other. You I can give you a half a dozen other ones if you want to you know, wait to where I can share links. I can share links to other academic institutions, all of which give the no, same I, definition. I'll, I'll read, I will read absolutely zero of your links, but. Okay, like, so you, you don't want to. You, but so I, you know you're wrong. You're just not going to admit you're wrong. You no, know, false dichotomy. I don't know I'm wrong. I know I'm right. Well, you, no, you can't know that you're right. Because I know that I'm right, and I know that I you're know. wrong. Because I can prove that you're no, wrong. I know you're mad right now. No, no okay. Hey, you're like, trying not you to know, you're you're right now. You I told bitch. you to look it up. You won't look it up. You know that you're wrong. You, that's why you <laughs> won't look it up. Because you're a chicken shit, want to make believe something you know is not true. Or you know how to name, prove that you're wrong. Name. You won't do it. Hey, what's well, not? Name. All right, Bernard, you, can't, you keep mentioning the swearing and the names. Names. Fuck off. You, you don't want us to swear. You keep mentioning the swearing and the name calling. We'll agree to not swear as soon as yeah, you give us your pronouns. Me. Hey, Bernard, fuck face. As he soon as you give me. us, hey, fuck face. As soon as you give us your pronouns, we'll stop. We'll stop swearing at you. Oh, my goodness. Well, like, it doesn't bother me. I'm just thinking your audience, you're getting sworn at. Like, I'm on the debate site. And the no. second you, if, if, no. if you're on, like, a purple attack, they know you're wrong. Well, how do we know? How do, how do we know, Bernard? How do we know which of us is right? How can everybody listening to this well, know which one of us is right and which of us is Bernard? Okay. Well, the guy shielding you from me right now, the one who jumped in and laughed. Wait, wait, the of, one the one who's not he, shielding he act, because you're, you're not right open. here. You're bouncing against my armor right now. G go ahead. How do we know? How does everybody listening to you right now find out that you're full of shit? How do, we, how do they do that? How do we figure out who's right here? But no. Like, okay, you kind of had it back to front here. I mean, like, if we could keep it on the argument. There's like, a way to find out that I'm right and you're full of shit. How do we do that? Uh, time travel a million years back? We're talking about the definition of a word. Oh, we can't do how that. Do we, That's right. How okay, do we no, figure out what is... How do we figure out what the word macroevolution means? Whether it means what all the academic institutions mean... Or all well, the evangelicals opinion, in the trailer park it means. Well, I definitely don't. I don't pick your version. Oh, so you, you use know, the because, wrong definition like you, on purpose to no, lie about what the word means. No, no, no. You're just trying to go off on a self-righteous rant here. How do people no, no, find out? I don't pick a definition Who, which like of, that. Which of our definitions I'm is correct? Trying, how, does, how does everybody find out who's right? Because there's a way. To know. I'm, well, Am I'm I trying using the right to answer that, but you keep going. Or are you making the right going? How, how do we? How do we find out? All right. All right. If you're asking, if you're honestly asking me the question, trying to give me some time, I would think. Okay. How do we find oh, out I'm which saying. definition is correct? All right. If you quit cutting me off, uh, just the last time. Okay. No, nope, I'm, I'm going to cut you off now. Is that... Okay. Okay. Now you can give it, you little bitch. Oh, he he he! Allowed. He's amazing. I, I agree. Thank you. To be like that little guy. Okay. Oh, you would. You right. would love the my life. It's much better than yours, bitch. Of course, it and is. so is mine. The macro evolution is easy to explain. I just think to myself, like, if you follow the uh, logic of like godless evolution, then you have to say one parent preceded the other into like way back in time. So that would mean. That at some point in time, a chimpanzee at the zoo and us share a grandparent. Correct? I love that. Doesn't have anything to do with the question I just asked. That's what I love. Arne, yeah, I, love no, that you asked define, I love that you asked a question. I love that you asked a question and said, How do we do this? And he goes, If you'd stop cutting me off, I'd tell you how everyone else would see I'm yeah. right and you're wrong. And instead of saying know, that, I'm he goes, I'm When I'm I think about it, I just think about okay. the godless. Oh, my goodness. So, we're both using different definitions. How do we determine which of our definitions is correct? I would think okay, I'm that we to just look it up. Okay, listen. If I said to you, if we go back and then that the, the, I mean that a chimpanzee and us, we share a grandpa. That's true, right? Like, I mean, can't agree to that. That's I don't know question. what version of evolution you're thinking about. Christ. But, 
True or okay, false? Okay, Aaron, are you true you or the false? Guy or not? True or false? The moon is made of cheese because I feel like you think the answer is clitoris or something crazy. You don't know how to answer. Yeah, a there's a beautiful question. Do you have to troll this guy or not? Like, there, there's classic literature What's that you really ought to read. It's like Alice through the Looking Glass, and she's talking to Humpty Dumpty, and Humpty Dumpty is talking about what glory means. And that he says that glory means a knockdown argument. And Alice says, that's not what glory means. Now, how do we determine which one of them is correct? Is, is Alice correct that, that, that glory does not mean a knockdown argument? Or how do we determine which is Humpty Dumpty correct in his definition? Would, would say maybe we just look up what the definition of glory is? That would be my suggestion. What is your suggestion to figure out which one of them is using the correct definition? Well, okay, well, I would first suggest talking about Humpty Dumpty when we're talking about evolution is probably wrong. Like, that would be my first thought. But, and secondly, we're talking about the definition my analogy. of a word. How do we determine whether I yes, have I'm the correct definition or whether dumb fuck has the correct definition? Which is it? I, I'm trying to get there. You're never going to get there, are you? Well, yeah, because I've said it three Tell times, but you keep going. Tell the audience how okay. to figure out which one is the correct okay. definition. Can they just Google okay. to look up the definition from an academic ready, institution? Or the audience. That's what I would say. What would you tell the audience to do okay, to find I'm, out what the true definition of macroevolution is? Okay, I'm trying to tell the audience. So okay. what I would say is, according to evolution at the moment, we have what's called... Like, if you go back to, like, the chimp human ancestor, then we can <laughs> say there you was suck a... at this. Bernard, try, I'm going to teach you how to do this. Parent. Shut the fuck up. I'm going to teach you how to do this. Say this. Say this phrase. The way we would find the it. correct definition... Am I arguing with Aaron or Shut you? the fuck up. You're talking to me right now, bitch. I don't know I... who Aaron is. Okay, well, yeah, Aaron... Who the fuck is can... Aaron? You're talking to Jimmy right now. Okay. Yeah. Jim, and Jimmy's going to walk you through this because you're so bad at it. You need someone to hold your hand like a will, baby. You, this is how you're going to answer his question correctly. You're going to say the way to find the correct definition of macro evolution oh. is, and then you're going to complete that sentence and it'll, and that will, you'll get it. You, you might've done something. Give it a shot. The way to answer who has the correct definition of macro evolution or to find the correct definition of macro evolution. Give it a shot there, Bernard, give it a go. Is trying to answer it like my way here. No, I, I didn't know it was you're not answering you at all. You dishonest fuck face. I am. I am answering. Well, what is the correct definition of macro evolution and how can we verify that? Okay, well, I'm, I'm more pushing towards how to verify it because. So, so you're saying, more pushing toward yeah. not answering the question? So the question no, is I'm pushing towards how, how do we to verify figure it. out which is the correct definition? Well, how, how, do we, how do we find yeah, that by, out? By, by verifying it, by, by, by verifying the verify. definition, how do you verify what the correct definition is? Would you say, look it up? Well, I'm trying to explain. There's things like a hundred. How much explanation can there be? You, you either look it up and say, oh, Aaron was right. Or you don't look it up because Bernard can't admit when or he's wrong. Aaron is wrong. Hey, Bernard, how many hours are in a day? Like, uh, do I have to answer your, See, this your is guy what I, do there, what I, Aaron, I, I wanted to show you. First of all, just so you know, you're on my channel, motherfucker. Aaron, this is the host of this show, but your little whiny thing of like, do I have to answer? Or do you control this man? You don't even clearly know where the fuck you are. And I think that might be true of you also generally. I don't know that you know where you physically are in space right now. And I'm not surprised that when asked a simple question, you also don't know how to just answer it because you can't do it with the questions you hear. To where I was I was expecting for me to say how many hours in a day and you say potato. That's I what you've Jimmy, been doing so I far. I think, Jimmy, that you're correct because I've talked to a lot of creationists and that does seem to be the case. They don't know where they are in time or space. Yeah. They don't know what things were invented after or before what other things. They can't tell me what state or country lies north, south, east, and west of them. They can't even do that. They're utterly lost. That's why absolutely that, everything about where they the are. Date they is it. called AD. Yeah. yeah. Date is, dates are BC and AD. 
So kind of, yeah. Yeah, you, you know why? It's you know why like that. that is? You know why that is? Oh, I, you know no, I, I fully expect you to have some sort of answer. Well, yeah, you should, because I'm smarter than you, you so I'm going to. Yeah, so in, in, the 1500s, in the 1500s, Pope Gregory III decided he didn't like the Julian calendar because it didn't focus on Jesus. So Pope Gregory decided to create his own calendar and backdate it to when he thought Jesus was born. But he ran into a bit of a problem because Jesus was supposedly born both before 4 BC when Herod died and also oh, after God. the census of Curinus, which was 10 fucking years later. And there was no way to put him in the middle. So without any way of, of, of reconciling oh, no this contradiction, Pope Gregory III decided to just pick a number in the middle and call that the year zero. So actually, Jesus totally. would have been you know, born. It's, it's like your ring of head. It's what? It's like your ring of head. It's like he reads books, motherfucker. Give it a shot someday. It's, it's like Aaron was there. Jesus Christ. Who's hey, Aaron? There. Do you see elephants giving birth to oak trees in the room with you right now? Yeah. Uh, that's the other guy. I was on. I was, I was listening when that guy said when that guy came on. I actually liked that guy. I bet you did. Well, that's, that's too bad. But anyway, how do we figure out what a word means? If we're going to, if we're going to use common language, good, by the way, if that guy's still listening, huh? It, it, when we use common language, how do we determine whether we're using our, our verbiage correctly? So if you like, for example, like, if you I say, honestly, that, if no you say that glory means a knockdown argument, how do we determine whether that's right or wrong? Like, I see no knockdown argument that proves that there's a grand but how do we determine whether the definition is correct? To me, thousands how of years ago, or millions of years ago. Tell whether the definition is correct. How to tell whether the definition is correct? Okay, well, you're obviously asking about macro evolution, so I'll, I'll say it again. Oh, I'm obviously asking yeah. you how to define a fucking word. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn you on to something you've, prob you've obviously never heard of. Is, and it's going to sound really pornographic when I tell you, because it starts with the word dick, but it's called a dictionary. Have you ever heard of one of these? They, they, I'm sure they didn't teach you about these in homeschool. But you can use yeah, a dictionary. The first one. You, you can, yeah, I know, I know. And that's why some of the words in there are wrong. Like animal, for example. There's not a dictionary that gets the definition of animal right because all of them say that that animal is, includes a single-celled protist, which it doesn't because oh, now you're by now you're already a dictionary. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I am. So because dictionaries are written by Christians, and that's why you'll never get a, cr a proper definition of abiogenesis or spontaneous generation or the definition of animal for because there's just some words well, that, you know, religious biases, We'll put in there, but if you get into biological definitions, totally, you totally, talk about scientific totally. terms, then you, yep. Yeah. Would you accept a definition from a dictionary to describe faith? Uh, uh, pretty much anything like we, like if, because I'm trying to keep it on evolution, you know? That's a, yeah, that was the answer to every single topic. So is the answer so, yes or I was mean, the answer I, no? Would you accept a, a, a regular dictionary's definition of the word faith is that is that yes or is that no? Um, the answer is like I'm trying to keep it on evolution. The answer is I'm. It, like, the answer is know. I'm trying. Okay, so 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 yes, you would accept that definition. If I would read you the definition of faith from a dictionary, would you accept that? Yes or no? Oh, um, I I don't make deals like. There's no deal okay, here. So you don't I'm know just saying like what a dictionary is. You don't know what words mean. No, I, I really so you didn't can't say that. Focus on a conversation at all. In what way did you think this was your I, show I to set that. the I terms was, and I'm direction? Just to keep on Jesus Christ. Well, we're not. I'm fucking trying to keep it on face. evolution too, but well, you don't know what words mean. So that's going to make it a little difficult. Really. You're you're you don't know what dumping. evolution means. You don't know what macroevolution means. And, and Gregorian you don't know, calendar. No, I mean, you shit. don't know how to look up a definition. You don't know how to figure out what words mean. Yeah, well, Aaron, you don't know how to stay on a topic. You don't know who the fuck is Aaron. His name is Aaron. Jesus fucking okay, Christ. Aaron. Sorry. It's spelled Aaron. Who are you to kind No, it's not. Anybody. How many A's do you see in my name? How many? How many are there? Uh, One. 
one. I don't know. So every Aaron, Aaron I know and I always say Aaron. Aaron. Yeah, so you've been saying the wrong word all the time because you never know because you don't you don't look up things and you don't read things because you're fucking stupid. No, but I when, suggest, I think, when I think of the guy Aaron, he doesn't come around and bite my head off saying you're saying my name's wrong. Who's Aaron? Kind of like that. He literally told you yeah, his name was Aaron like, multiple times when before I in this Aaron, episode. Like Aaron? Shut the fuck up. Whose show do you think this is? Shut the fuck up, you old bitch. If you, no one can hear you. I muted you and I'm watching your little bars going. He told you multiple times his name is Aaron. The show, he was introduced as Aaron. You have not gotten it right once and you can't identify how to use a dictionary. I don't know how you think you're winning anything here. I'm going to unmute you in a moment. But before I do, I just want to say, you're a whiny little bitch. Okay, am I still muted? No, I can hear you again, unfortunately. Oh, okay, okay. Apparently, apparently he likes to use whiny little bitch a lot. Apparently, that's his big well, thing. Well, yeah, you, you do give justification for that quite often. When so, I hear a whiny little bitch, bitch I'm going like if you're on his show. <laughs> Not body yeah, How do we determine which of us is using the language correctly? Hey, if we can just take it to evolution... Yeah, like, get, get, let's do know. that. But let's but let's first make sure that we're using the correct words because you don't know what evolution no, means. There's no and you don't know sure what macroevolution means, and you don't know what microevolution yes, means. So we're gonna yes, no, do. you don't. So we're gonna what, what? How do you know? Yes, I do. What, how, let's yes, give do. me a definition. Show me where we can look it up. No, I I know I know what it means, Darren. A a a no, right, well, then show me. whatever. Well, prove it. Prove prove to me that you know what it means. Okay. We're gonna I'm look it up. Prove it. All right, ready. And tell me, tell me where we where when we can look take, up this definition of yours. Where is it? All right, everywhere. So it's okay. it's everywhere. Now, so dictionary dot com, to... Toyota dot com will have the whatever. definition of macroevolution in it. You, you said There's everywhere, so Toyota dot will have that. What? Oh wow, wow! I guess you said, said everywhere. You a bit. If you look at Toyota, so, so in this coffee cup, I will see the definition. Of macroevolution. I don't see it in here. Yeah, so maybe that's it's kind of why you're confused about Every, it, Aaron. Uh, Aaron. Well, Bernard, maybe you didn't so, answer so stupidly. That, Aaron, I'm going to encourage you well, to, once looking, again, you're looking at shut the fuck up. Don't try and talk over me, bitch. Aaron, uh, I've muted him again. Uh, uh, I would encourage you to give him one more try to go down, because this isn't, this isn't a formal debate. This isn't a democracy you do the exercise as is laid out, and R and I would suggest that if he refuses again, just hang up on the bitch. Okay, I was having fun with it. Oh, I was okay. too. About twenty six minutes, and I've only got so many chuckles yeah. in me. Yep. And this guy is really totally total. Totally. Okay, so well, I was. Uh, where, where can I look for the definition? Am I muted? Am I muted again? <laughs> no, I can still hear you. So, where can I look up the definition you're using? <laughs> Okay, not in the bottom of your coffee cup. Uh, all right. Okay, you know, so where can I crazy. find it? Where can I find not it? Not in Toyota. And not I, in Toyota. So don't don't tell me where said, it's I not. Said, I said, I said, we just spend all I day telling you where it's not. I said where everywhere. It is. I, stand, I stand by that. I, I mean, oh, so it is in the bottom of your coffee, coffee, coffee cup. So, But it's not See, in the bottom of your coffee cup, so it's not everywhere. So tell me where it is. You introduced me where it's not. Tell me where it is. Where where can I'm I look up this definition that you're using? Okay, well I'm gonna try to just go evolution, and if like if I get hung up on, well, you're not going to tell me where I can look up this definition. I won't hang up for you, but Jesus, I already, Christ. I already told you, Aaron. I already you told already you. told me, oh, hey. Aaron. Oh, you know what? Fuck off. Hey, uh, Bernard. Do you know what BCE correct... stands for? It means Bernard can't explain. And you know what? <laughs> BC stands for it stands for bitch caller later bitch L. <laughs> are you dropping him it's up to you yep 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 he's done <laughs> later douche oh man you dropped the whole that was, I mean that was stupid how, how, how can you ask I couldn't ask a simpler question could I yeah by the way my my uh I will cite my source now on BCE means Bernard can't explain, and and BC means bitch collar. Uh, everywhere is my source. Actually, 
Tell me, is it in the bottom of your coffee cup? I bet it is. <laughs> Look at your coffee cup. Tell me if it says bitch call at the bottom. Oh, what a good. Okay, we can we can just do the supers now. <laughs> I had fun. Jesus Christ, that what a self important, yeah. self righteous douche. David in Arizona, you are on the line. How are you? Hey, how's it going? Matt, how's it going? All right, how are you? Good to talk to you, finally. It's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you saw my topic, right? You want me to just get straight to it or? Yeah, sure, because it says it, you want to talk about how religion can sometimes be right. Um, and I, I don't I don't remotely disagree with that. So go ahead. Okay, cool. So, well, let's say that I hear a lot of uh, religious colleagues that speak uh, with you guys and they say a lot of really dumb things. Uh, and you guys obviously, you guys correct them. Sometimes they don't, most of the time, they don't worry uh, when you guys just, trying to get across to them and you know that really sucks the initial it makes religion look really bad and i understand that christianity is by one of the worst uh as well as technology with their beliefs and how they go about you know just explaining them so one thing is that uh i show that we need people like you guys to keep people like those in check maybe maybe eventually those parts realizing that what they're most of their beliefs that are not actually from religion, they're just from people that have set beliefs there. Like people in power have put those beliefs in there to uh basically gain power or you know pass their uh, own. Uh, uh, stop. Stop. Yeah. Uh I'm not interested in your speculation about conspiracy theories about the power and everything else. Um religions can and have been right about a number of different things, but I'm not aware of religions being right about anything that is core a core tenet foundational to the religion so like take catholicism catholics are currently right. okay with the science of evolution but their religion doesn't really have anything to say about it but i would say that catholicism teaches transubstantiation and and god creating the universe and all of these things which aren't demonstrably true and so what is it that is true about religion that is of value and verifiable that is tied to the truth of the religion itself. Okay. Uh, I guess you could say, well, one of the points would be, uh, the family structure. Uh, you take that away and, you know, things begin to crumble. I, I you know, no, no, sir. I don't know because I don't know what you think the family structure is according to the Bible. How many spouses can someone have according to the Bible? Those are Old Testament stories where the oh no oh so you're gonna toss you're gonna toss out the Old Testament which means you toss out um, no, origins no. no no origins and original sin right. and the Ten Commandments and every bit of prophecy so we're just gonna chuck that out no no of course uh, the thing is that you know as humans we are flawed so obviously those people they no 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 you're a human what, you know, like, what, I know what what no no I'm sorry David but. Um, our flaws as humans are irrelevant to whether or not the Bible advocates for a family structure um, that you and I might object to. Uh, but in any case, well, let's assume let's assume yeah. that your fictional make believe version of Christianity's family structure one man, one woman united together and and having kids. You're saying mm -hmm. that outside of that particular structure, which is a fictional one that is not actually part of Christianity that things break down mm -hmm. then why is it that other families seem to work just fine and what businesses of yours or anybody else's what my family looks like no of course not uh you're right you're completely right um no i mean as in when i say uh family structure i don't mean uh, well no hang on like yeah hang on if, if, if i'm mm -hmm. right there then you were i asked for examples of what right. things with hang on I asked for examples of what things within a religion that were tied to the core tenets of the religion were true. And you immediately went to a family structure thing, which, by the way, in addition to not being true for Christianity, even if there were an ideal family structure that Christianity advocated for, that doesn't tie to any of the core tenets of Christianity. 
that family structure, to whatever extent it might be true and good and productive, is independent of whether or not there is a God, whether or not there's anything supernatural, whether or not there's an afterlife, whether or not sin is a real concept, whether or not there's substitutionary uh, blood magic Mm. atonement for sin. So what about the religion itself is true and useful? Right. If you uh, look at the commandment, uh, the book of Proverbs, you'll see that basically it tells you, you know, don't look at another Christian spouse. David, so, I'm, I'm going to stop you because you're embarrassing yourself here. And man. I'd like to make sure you don't do that. First of all, the commandments are not in the book of Proverbs. Um, second of no, all, I know that. I, you just said the commandments in the book of Proverbs. No, and sorry, and. Oh, all right. Fine. You're still embarrassing yourself because I asked you for something that is true at the tenets of the religion. If a commandment says don't steal, that doesn't tie at all right. to whether or not there is a God or whether or not there's, the God is the reason why one should or shouldn't steal. Other cultures have had uh, instructions to not steal. It doesn't take any sort of God or anything supernatural to understand why somebody would say, I would rather you not take my shit and I won't take your shit. And what we'll do is we'll shit on the people who take our shit. What is it Wait, about you want me to- the religion? Uh-huh. What is it about the religion that is true and useful, that is specific to that religion? Well, you know that Christianity is uh, based off of Judaism, and I'm not a Christian. Oh my I'm God! That. Oh my God! What? And you, what are, are you incapable? Are you incapable of answering the question? If that's so, just say so. I, I'm trying to answer it. That's your thing. Okay. Name one thing. I'm. I'm. I'm going to. I'm going to stop talking. It looks like Jimmy's back. I'm going to stop talking in a second after I ask you this question. Name one thing mm-hmm. specific to. A religion that is verifiably true and tied to that religion and not present in common knowledge outside of that religion. Go. Gotcha. <clears throat> uh, let me think. That's a very, that's a very, uh, like I'm, you're asking for a very precise, uh, answer so i have to yeah I mean, can you give me an example of what kind of answer you're looking for that way i can no because i'm not the one sitting here saying there are true things in religion name a religion tell me something that's true of it that isn't true everywhere else well if you have to you, very you're broad, the uh, you, it's not you okay it. so first five seconds ago it was too specific now it's too broad david here here's your opportunity name something that is fucking true within a religion um i mean that's that's too like oh my god goodbye david goodbye 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 i don't know i think matt can hear me i don't know i can hear you i can hear you wait did you already hang up on david no i didn't hang up on him i should but i'll let you do it yeah i just i have something from the beginning because uh I'm David. I want to like you. And right now I'm going, how can I like the person who started off the thing with what are probably queer phobic dog whistles? So please explain to me how non-traditional families, what specifically about society has broken down that you would attach to non-traditional families? I mean, I'm not anti-queer. I'm not anti-anyone. Um, Can you answer good. any yeah, question that is put to you, or do you have to fucking dodge and preamble every ta- every time? Answer the question that was asked. Clarify your dog whistle. Um. Well, I mean, Matt. I mean, when you say well, you, the, the the answer you're looking for, I, it's hard to say because religion has very okay. similar. Uh, hey, stop wait, 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 stop talking. Yeah. Stop talking and listen. This is really easy. David, do you subscribe to some religion? Yes, uh, I am. I believe in Judaism. You believe in Judaism. What? Give me something from Judaism that is true that 
isn't true of other religions. That something about Judaism that you can verify that's true, that convinces you Judaism is the right religion. Well, uh, uh, by talking about that, then I'd have to move towards science. And that you know what, error. David? David, I don't believe that you are honest at all. I'm going to stop talking here and let Jimmy do it because I have bent over backwards to try to give you, you called in to say, wants to talk about how religion sometimes can be right. And you've talked about trivial things that people are right about, that religious people may be right about. And every time, no matter how I phrase the question from it's too specific, it's too broad to say, please tell me one fucking true thing about religion. You have come up with a tap dancey answer from the very outset. The next time somebody asks you a question like that, you should say, one true thing about my religion is, and then state it. Be, yeah. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. One true thing about Judaism is, and then state it. Right, right. I got you. <laughs> you want Do you want to take that, John? I, I we want to try you want to try it? One true thing about Judaism is, start the sentence that way and, and finish it. Okay, I mean, I was in the church for anything else besides the whole family structure thing. Uh, but okay. Uh, but, I, I okay, so you're a fucking liar that instead of calling in to talk about religious truths, you called in not prepared to talk about anything other than the family structure thing. How, how okay, then let's talk about this family structure thing because I'm pretty sure you're about to be pwned as a fucking bigot. What about society yeah, has broken down because of the, for the non-traditional families? Um, as you can see, there are more uh, single women out there. There's men that are, you know, out there basically soiling their oats. They're, they're, you know, and just... Uh, Did you say soiling? Did you say soiling their oats? Did you say soiling their oats? Did you say the words uh, soiling maybe. their oats? I mean, did you not hear me right? I... Did you say well, that... soiling just... their oats? Why can you never answer a fucking question, David? Did you say S-O-I-L-I-N-G, their oats? Yes or no? Oats. Oh. No. Did you What's going on? Shut up. What? Oh, my Shut God. up and listen. I'm muting you now. It sounded like you said soiling, S-O-I-L-I-N-G, their oats. I'm going to unmute you. Is that what you said? Yeah, soiling their oats. So like, okay, what? you are now too stupid for me to speak to ever again. The correct phase oh. is sowing their oats. It's about sowing seed. You don't soil your oats, you dumbass. Oh, okay. Bigot. Well, no the fuck away. Going hard. Next. Uh, Ephraim, a theist in Texas, the usefulness versus truth of God. You are on the line with Jimmy and Aaron, but mostly Aaron. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Is it Ephraim with an N or an M at the end of the name? It's an N, but I've pronounced an N. I hate Ephraim. Ephraim. And by the way, can you give me, did you say M is in mother or N is in Nancy? He <laughs> meant and as in Nancy. And as in Nancy. And as in Nancy, you said, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, okay. Just making sure it's right on the screen because we had, I had two conflicting spellings up. Anyway, go ahead and give your, uh, your, your God proposal. Uh, this is very interesting. And I think that, uh, I think I know where Arn's going to take it. This is why I'm interrupting to tell Arn. Arn, the caller identifies as an agnostic theist, which I suspect you believe is impossible, much like myself. So, no, no, no. It's rare. Okay. It's All rare, right. but it happens. Okay. Uh, there you go. Ephraim, I, I give you to the, the most capable man on the show here today, Aaron. Well, you said that, uh, hold on, let me get to it. Better place. Give me one. I can't, I want to go up, throw the trash while I was on the way. You but, waited uh, till you were on the line I mean, to take out the trash. Yeah, I waited a little minute. We're very It wasn't that bad. Before you have to accept my call. Okay. But, um, yeah, right. I went to you. Give us your proposal. Give me one. Well, no, I, well, 
the, 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 the issue, the issue is that a one over here, you're asking me to give a proposal for a body. Uh, I don't know if, uh, you guys, you got yeah, that, the, uh, yeah, proposal for no, I'm not going to get the job. <laughs> Ephraim, what did you come no, to I'm present not, that? I'm not proposing for that. I have okay. no evidence that about it. Either. So no, I'm not. Okay. I'm not going to do that. First things first. Are we on speakerphone? Yes, you are. Let's kill well, that. No, I don't want to. I don't want to have the. I don't want to have this discussion with the cars driving by too. Uh, so let's go ahead and put put us just straight yeah, to the handset yeah, yeah, yeah. and okay. tell us what you yeah, called so, in for uh, us, not to tell us why God exists. Yeah. So I, I didn't come in to tell you that uh, God exists. So. Uh, the the reason that I called it basically uh, on uh, atheists forums, I see that guys value more uh, truthfulness versus usefulness, and I think that there is a distinction to be made between the two, right? So one can hold a useful belief that is not known to be true, versus uh, not holding a belief that is true but yet harmful which I, I just wanted to get your guys' opinion on that. I didn't understand the question. I got to fully confess. I think he's asking, let me, let me reframe it, Ephraim. I think that you are, Ephraim, sorry. Ephraim. Ephraim. Uh, I think you are asking, Aaron, whether or not he believes there could be things which aren't necessarily demonstrated to be true, but still useful if you accept them as true and therefore you should accept them oh. on the basis of their usefulness. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let, let right. me just answer that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bohr's model and Dalton's model. I accept both, even though we both know that both of them are wrong. We know that the quantum metal is better, but Bohr's and Dalton's both have their own uses and you can't do stoichiometry with the quantum model. I accept that we use imperial when we should be using metric. That's the closest I got for you. Okay, so I don't think that Aaron disagrees. You, Jimmy, I don't know if you do or don't, right? So if I, I would, I mostly, let's do, say, I I mostly would, do disagree that we should believe something because it's useful than more useful than it is truthful. I mostly agree that, or I mostly disagree that we should do that. So we could have a useful belief for a society and yet not hold it to be true, not, 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 not adopt it as a society. I would need someone to show me why as a society, we should accept a non-true belief as true. Uh, I just gave you two examples. Because I don't don't understand that quantum metal is going to affect society. Well, it affects society. I don't know, but in practical application, yeah. you can't do stoichiometry with the quantum model. The quantum model explains things that neither of the other two models do, but you can't do stoichiometry with quantum. Yeah, these aren't, re these aren't close to what Ephraim, Ephraim's calling about. Ephraim's calling about something like a God belief being useful to basically control the morals of a society, oh, even though oh, it's not based okay. in truth. So right. if something right, right, is right, true right, right, and right. not useful, except by those who want to manipulate the masses through fear and oppression, then should they believe that? No. Well, no, we should, we should dis disregard and, and this, this, uh, we, we should get away with the garbage, right? With, with the things that, that are not useful, but everything we should disregard everything that's harmful, but I think that we should keep that, which is useful, right? So give us one that's useful. That's not true. It's our special, right? That it's, not inherently what? true, right? There, there is nothing that special? makes your kid more special. What's the definition of Have special? Have you met That's... my kids? They're pretty special. Yeah. Well, what's the definition of special? <laughs> I think parents would say that, but, but, but I mean, hey, you know, I'm you, special. There, there's I know nothing the, I know inherent I that so. makes your child special. Sorry. That's that's all right. I was it, I was making a joke. It, would, it was a politically incorrect joke anyway, so it doesn't Ephraim, matter that you interrupted me. If you're going to come in here and say, like, as a society, we should adopt some things as true, even if they're not, and then you go with Blue's Clues level colloquialisms, I you got to get get me get me better than Steve and the Clues, man. What's a better one than that? Well, no, well, it, you, you just yeah, you you the subjectivism of the colloquialism you just shared is nonsense. Like literally, like you're special. No, well, he's not. Fair enough, well, but... yes, he is. I only love three people in the entire world as much as I love this kid. <laughs> Therefore, 
three out of eight billion. That's pretty fucking special. Like, what is the the subjective nature of the phrase you just used? Is is Efren? I don't think you're stupid. So give me a non-stupid example, please. Well, no, look, fair enough. But what I was really asking is in principle, right? So you can you can you can separate from being specific to the principle of the thing, right? So Okay, so for now, you principle. have yet to give me an example that challenges my belief that it is probably not a good thing to do, but you can challenge it by giving me a good example where I would go, oh, yeah, actually, and you're literally talking to the guy who says, don't lie to kids about Santa. So go ahead and give me an example of something that we should be sharing as true, despite the fact that it isn't, and what the utility of usefulness resembles. Yeah, and, and you, you made me, Jimmy, you made me want to recant what I just said about Bohr's model and Dalton model, because Bohr's <laughs> model, Dalton's model, and the quantum model are all incomplete. They are all at least partially accurate. And what I have always said, I mean, for 20 years I've been saying this, only accurate information has practical application. There is no value in placebo information. So, Efren. Right. So, so, so if, if we hold, if, if as a society, we hold uh, beliefs, right? So, for example, if we say uh, a, uh, let's start a religion of Greg, right? So, if, if we say that uh, pick a different one name. tenet of the... The only Greg I know I despise. <laughs> so, pick a different name. Pick Bob. Bob because works. I know somebody. I have a personal hey, friend. Go, the, the religion of Bob. Religion based sure. on Bob. There's at least one Bob I like. We'll do Bob. Religion of Bob. Yep. Go ahead. And, and if right. you're not so, aware, there so, really so, is if, a religion that worships Bob. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I don't know about it. But uh, okay, so uh, if, if we say that, look it uh, up. And say that the, 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 if, I will. Go ahead. So after look it up uh, the church so of if, if, Bob. <laughs> okay, uh, so. If, uh, if as a society we invent a religion that is uh, the religion of Bob, right? And and as a society uh, we hold, uh, let's say the, the first tenet is treat people uh, with the dignity and respect whenever possible, right? Second tenet. You have a staple guy uh, near me, and it's hard to not drive staples into my face. We said something that isn't true that is useful. And you're not presenting something that isn't true that is useful. You're presenting a non-truth to justify a truth. A truth, treating people with dignity and integrity, we can justify totally objectively if we're saying the well-being of humans is the standard that we are trying to uh, uh, aim for. So give me something, not a truth that we want to justify with an untruth. Give me something. I'm not kidding. It's right here, and it's going to go right into my fucking forehead if you don't do this right. Uh, it might go into your forehead then. Uh, oh, God, Efren, why then? Why do we need lies to defend truth? Let's defend truth with truth. Well, because it, we, we don't know that they're lies. That That's the point, right? We, we don't know that they're lies. They, they, they may you be know. not true. The but religion of Bob true, right? might be true. You're kidding. Well, the one the, we if, just if the made up? Are, if, if we hold the tenets of the religion of Bob as true, that would be useful for the society, right? Versus uh, while we know that, no, no, that no. it's not if you knew anything, evidently If true. you knew anything about the church of Bob, you would realize that it's not useful for society at all because the tenets of the church of Bob are to drop out and get stoned and, and have more, more slack. It's a different religion. This is the new religion of Bob. There's a new one. Efren, you don't even actually believe. I, I can will hear not it in have your you voice. Blaspheme. You don't actually now believe what you're defending. You're just afraid to realize either your position is stupid or your defense has been. So I'm going to back off yeah. the word and say, you got some thinking through to do, Efren. Please yeah, call and I, I will not done. have you. I, 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 I will not have you blaspheme J.R. Bob Dobbs. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> No, well, it, the, 
I, I was going to defend it in principle when you asked me to defend it with specifics. It's a little bit more difficult. I didn't plan to do that. You were going I was to defend gonna, a I, useful I, lie or untruth or something that isn't shown to be true. Something that is not, 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 not a lie. Something that is not known to be true, which is very different from a lie, right? Okay, and you didn't do that. You went with, here's something that is true, and here's a, 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 a what is almost certainly a lie, but, you know, it's the universe, so anything's possible, according to Deepak Chopra. Uh, uh, and you wanted to defend a truth we can defend without lies. Oh, Ephraim, Ephraim, I'm sorry. You are closer to his camp than you realize from the onset. I've been thinking Deepak this whole damn time, my friend. I'm sorry if that's an insult to you, my guy, but that's that's what you that's what you brought to the yard. It kind of well. So you don't think that we can hold beliefs that are not known to be true as a society to be useful versus a belief that is known to be true but yet harmful i don't give me think... an example exactly what's one that right now is happening are there any so uh well uh i i don't want to go with the uh, tram issue so i i, I don't know enough yeah, i wouldn't to... oppose you either Yes. So well, is that it, is there it, any, it, so, was that the only issue? Because if your defense was going to be, we're accepting people's belief that they're a different gender than they were born, and they don't know that to be true, science would disagree no. with you. So let's, okay, good. No, 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 that, that is not known to be true, right? So we don't know that. No, no, no. I, well, I, 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 I know don't too many trans people. people. I really don't. Yeah, it is known. To I be know too many trans people who have shown me a, a, not a lot of the science on this. I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to pretend that it, that I'm anywhere in my field at all. But other people whom I know who have studied this have shared enough information with me to realize, for me to realize, yeah, you've definitely got something there. I don't have. To, I'm too busy to invest a lot of time in researching what you're saying. But I realize, yeah, you've got, you've got. This is not binary. That, that much is clear. While the vast majority of people may be entirely cisgendered and heterosexual, we realize there's a, there's a significant, there's a minority, granted, but we can't discount them that are in the overlap between these two. But we're not that discounting. Not in, okay, so you didn't want to do the transition when we tricked you into doing it, and I don't want you to look worse than you already have so far. So give us an example that's not the trans issue. Okay. Uh, well, uh, a belief that can be harmful, but it's true. And uh, let's go with IQ tests, right? So uh, Hispanic. No, nope, IQ and, tests and, have and, been no, no, widely. Nope. They are totally bullshit. IQ tests. Terrible example. I got to tell you, I was given an IQ test when I was in second grade, and I have to qualify this statement by saying that that IQ test showed that I was a genius in second grade, and I knew yeah, in second case, grade. Though, no? I knew in second grade this is bullshit. Yeah. No. Uh, by the way, you no, also. No, this you is, might be this a is a, I didn't say it because it said I was an idiot. The yeah. test said I was a genius. Yeah. But I still knew that intelligence is not linear. Yeah. The idea that you could put it, you know, put a number to it, is ridiculous. It's stupid. And by the way, I've, I've taken. Do, right? I've taken two in my life. Both also called me a genius. One of them I scored beyond like fucking uh. Uh, Hawking's level. And if anybody here thinks I'm Stephen Hawking's, you're as big as an idiot as that test was. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> I am an, I am a moron. How dare you suggest that an IQ test is something that is true and useful, but we don't actually know it to be, or sorry, something that is useful no, no, and we no, don't no. know it to be true. I'll tell you what, one, no, one no, of the things no, that no, was no. So, I, me, it was more accurate for me was there was a, there was a role playing game called I think it was called Champions, where you, all, you, you play a superhero. And rather than rolling the dice to see how many attributes you get for your strength or your wisdom or your intelligence or whatever, everybody gets the same amount of points to start with, and it's how you divvy them up as to what you prioritize. And that's the thing that got me. So people that, that want to put everything in their intelligence, they, they, they lose something in, their, in their, their physical strength or whatever. That when you look at just intelligence by itself and, and subdivide that, your ability in mathematics, for example, you could be a complete idiot in every other thing and be mathematically a living ca calculator. Or there are some things where yeah, you're, I th I you're think mathematically you're... inept, 
you're mathematically inept, but logical syllogisms just innately make sense in a way that that is well yeah, so beyond I, I other think, people's comprehension. I, I, yeah, no, so I, I wasn't defending the truthfulness of IQ. I was saying something that it's true. Yes, you were. And you harmful. said that was a thing that okay, was no, true. Fine, fine, give us something that is not true, true, but, to be true but useful, because that was the example you were asked but, to yeah, give. Harmful, you said no, that, true, that, but harmful, I, I but IQ tests, are, IQ tests true. are not true. They're arbitrary. They're culturally right, but, but biased. A, you cannot a, actually put a numeric value on intelligence. That is a stupid system for the onset. There, I'm not saying you can't extract no. nothing from them. No, it, I'm not saying that. Do I'm not, not saying that. Okay, Efren, give an example of something that is useful, that is not demonstrated to be true, that society should adopt. That's been the whole argument. Let's just do that, wait, my wait. friend. Let, or I'm, I'm going to defend how many what I said. I have. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to defend what I said. So, but what I said was a a a One, believe that it's two, that it's three, that it's true, but yet four, harmful. Five. True. So I was going with, with harmful. Nobody wants your true but harmful. I can come up with things that are true and harmful. I want things which are should useful. Should a society still hold them to be true? With things that are nuclear. Everything. Should a, should, everything should a society still society should, should accept still, uh, all true things as true and not fall and not even though they're harmful because they're harmful. True. Of course, of fucking course they should. Now, Efren, give an example of something which is useful, but not demonstrated to be true. And by the way, Efren, the thing that pisses me off is you we have created this perception that I am on the other side of you. I have told you and meant it. You could give an example. I just don't know what it would be where I would go, oh, shit, you're right. I don't want society to stop believing that, even though it's not demonstrated to be true. You could do it. But you won't do the activity. I don't know if it's possible. I'm I'm open to it. My mind is open. So Efren, please, I would left off on six. Please explain. Yeah, I, I don't think that uh, I'm going to come up with a with a uh, an example that's going to can you satisfy. Can, so I'll calm down. Can you call in when you can think of an example of the thing yeah. you called to defend? Well, in principle, not an example, but I get your point. If it, if you can only defend it in principle without a single example, do anything well, else. I provided examples, but you, you have didn't. Not provided uh, one you, you example said they were of a useful you, you thing. You said they were subjective, Efren. You have not to, You have not provided an example of a single useful thing which society should suggest at large. If you want to take something that is subjective, you can start defining your terms. The reason why you said it is you I said it was subjective was you said your example was children are special. You did not present the definition of special. So how what the fuck am I supposed to do with that? Well, you dismissed it offhand, right? So it, it, I would argue that they're not special inherently, right? I, I, don't, in which, I don't I don't pose what is the value definition of special inherently in human. What is the definition of special you're using in that scenario? Uh, just answer what the definition of special is. It's not a trick question, well, the, my guy. Well, then, that which is uh, quantity. Well, see, I could think of arguments that would defeat the thing that I would say. So. Yeah, because that's you basically are me, me for calling it subjective. <laughs> and right now you're hitting a wall. I think it's kind of funny too, Efren. You're hitting a wall in your mind where you're going... Fuck, it's subjective. And you can't get past it. Yeah, it kind of is, but... I, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. call when you have an example, buddy, all right? I promise I'll take the call. All right. See ya. All right, I'll do that. Yeah. We've got Haley in Delaware. Uh, Pronounce to she, her. Welcome to the, to the Sunday show, Haley. Hey, hey, thank you very much. I'm happy to have you be here. Happy. We're happy How to have doing? you. What do you want? What, what, what did you want to ask about? Suggest. Well, it says here I wanted in the to call screen, about... you wanted to talk about how the hateful rhetoric of some atheists is counterproductive to their goals. Mm -hmm. Well, most, I'd say. What are the Wait, atheist most, goals? Most, Sorry. Like, okay, sure. Go with that. Yeah. yeah. Haley, what are, what are the atheist goals? 
Um, I would say the atheist goal is to turn everyone into atheists, wouldn't it be? I'm really glad right? you, we asked that That's first okay. because now I can tell you no. The atheism and atheists as a position, as a group, while you have, will have groups of atheists with goals, that within that group they have a common goal, it isn't their atheism that is pushing it. And, and no, the, the, it isn't. To be an atheist does not mean to adopt the goal of turning everyone into an atheist. And this is where... I have that goal. I have that as a goal. I would love to see a world that abandons religion unless religion meets its burden of proof. But it's not even my primary goal. My primary goals are to increase the understanding of what atheism is, to increase atheist normalcy, um, to overcome and combat religious privilege. But see, I, I when, you even... say, when you say the hateful rhetoric of m most atheists, who are you talking about and what's hateful rhetoric? Do we have like an example? Oh, absolutely. Everywhere I go, atheists just try. You know, they uh, accuse, they accuse theists of, you know, trying to rule the world or whatever, but that's the exact sort of thing that they try and impose on others, you know? They try and... I'm, I'm sorry, Haley. Um, sort of believe in what they... I, I'm sorry, Haley, but when you say everywhere you go, atheists are accusing you of trying to control the world when that's what atheists do, Jimmy and I both just said that neither one of us are, are in trying to necessarily convert everybody, although I'd be happy if that happened. We're not here to try to control the world, but you specifically talked about hateful rhetoric, and I asked for examples. Is he? Exactly. So do you I have think. an example? No, 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 don't do it exactly. I asked for examples of hateful rhetoric. I'm waiting for an example of hateful rhetoric. Um, if you go, if, like, I own a, I used to own a forum, and there'd be people who would come in, just atheist troll, and it'd be like, die you bastard. They'd be like, all oh, this hateful stuff, you know? And it's that same type of atheist that is most common and most, you know, do you get what I'm saying? No, no, I, 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 I don't. So, when, so I spend my day, you can go check my Twitter feed and other things, um, constantly mm -hmm. being shit talked and trash talked. Um, I don't, know whether they're atheists or theists uh, it seems that it's happened from both of them but if you run an internet forum and people come in and shit talk you and claim they're atheists that has nothing to do with atheism or the atheist movement or the atheist community or anything if you'd like here i'll do you a favor hello everyone anyone who goes into a forum anywhere and says die you bastard you're a piece of shit you are human refuge. You are either trolling or you are beyond disgusting. That doesn't represent atheism or secular humanism well, and you shouldn't be doing it. What I want to know, Haley, is um, I'm not, I have zero interest in anonymous trolls shit-talking each other on a forum. I'm saying, do you have examples of, let's say, atheist activists who are actually out here trying to do stuff engaged in the hateful rhetoric that you find objectionable? That's what I care about. Uh, yes, actually, my, cool. um, my, oh, huh? I said, said cool. Like, oh, yeah, my old roommate has like a whole project deconversion who's trying to forcefully deconvert every fierce she meets and has like a whole YouTube Forth channel that forcefully. And so, so when I asked for, when I asked for an example, you have an ex roommate who's trying to forcefully deconvert people. Who, how do you forcefully deconvert someone? Well, what Haley said, by, by your roommate's YouTube channel. Isn't that what you just said? Yeah. How do you forcefully deconvert somebody with a resource they have to come to? She's starting with the YouTuber, but then she, as a YouTuber, but then she wants to move into, like, you know, she says she wants to travel the world and, you know, and give speeches conversion and stuff like that. Haley. OK, yeah. here's the thing. I, 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 don't, I don't believe Haley at all. Right. I, so I do believe Haley, but oh, I, yeah. no, no, I no, don't. Haley, you look her up. You could look Haley, her up. Haley, I, I don't I don't yeah. need to look her up. 
what I don't believe is that you are a person who is engaging anything in good faith. I, it sounds like just listening to your reasoning, you have some of the most shallow points I've ever heard. So I'm going to run through a couple of them with you, but I worry about taking this on too long because I feel like this call on the other side would look like we are playing with our food. Honestly, it would look douchey to take this too long. I, uh, it's not possible no, 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 forcefully I, de for, hang on. Jimmy has something to say, and I just want to insert real quick. It's not possible to forcefully deconvert someone. And that also isn't hateful rhetoric, which is what you called in to talk about. But Jimmy has specifics. Yeah. So the, and, and Matt just hit a couple of them, starting uh, uh, more toward the beginning of your call, where your expression of most atheists are like this are based on you had a forum that was pro something and you associate everybody who came in with anti something must represent some movement at large. Uh, I don't actually adopt that making most people atheist is my goal. What I would say is making most people skeptics is my goal, and I have the expectation that that will result in most people becoming atheists. As far as your whole forceful deconversion thing, it's like when people call this show and accuse us of trying to force anything on anybody, and you had to call us. Haley, if right now I talk to you about your belief that you called in, you called into our show, am I forcefully trying to deconvert you? No. Exactly. So if your friend has a YouTube channel that other people have to go to to consume, is your friend forcefully deconverting someone? Not, not with that particular action. No. What did they do that was hateful? What is the what is an example of a forceful action to try and force somebody mm -hmm. to deconvert? And then if you're going to say most atheists are doing it, what is your backup for that statement? But first start with what is a forceful action to try and force someone to deconvert? Um well, that that you kept a roommate did or just no anybody. You atheist, said most yeah, atheists are doing it. So, what are most atheists doing as a forceful act to try and force people to deconvert? Mm -hmm. Well, I can concede that it's not most atheists. Okay, what are a large say, portion of atheists doing that are a forceful act to make people deconvert? Uh, I'd say. Just that sort of, I don't want to say proclamatizing, just <laughs> a sort of. Yes, you wouldn't want to use that religious term that, that would be so poorly put here. So go ahead. Tell me what most are doing to forcefully deconvert people. Um, just the same thing that you guys sort of. Uh, oh, well, I don't, I'm not you guys particularly, but want to accuse theists of doing, of going around and sort of preaching atheism online. Hey, hey give me an example like of an atheist preaching. What's a way, give me a statement an atheist preacher would say. I'm sitting right here. I mean, you hear them say things like, the, just hateful things about religion. Like, like what? Oh, you relied on, wait, 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 wait. You relied on, you relied on God to, to heal you. That's what you get if they die and stuff like that. Yeah. You and, are, oh, Haley, so... you are full of shit. I don't know whether yeah. you're serious or if you don't, aren't an effective thinker. I don't know which way to put it. You are talking about a what? group of the, no, shut up, Haley. You are talking about a group of extreme oh. people at best. You are talking about people like pretending Twitter is real life and going, these people who are loud assholes represent the majority. So let me tell you what, Haley, you're a theist. You know what loud assholes I see? The people who say I deserve to die for being a queer and I deserve to die for not being a believer. Haley, why do you support them? Why are you a part of that group? Why are you a part of this extreme forcing of my belief? Or do you suddenly understand why that's a bullshit argument to make? I mean, it's not really a bullshit argument, I feel. Oh, so you it's are you are a part of that group. You know that. You are a part of that group. You're not doing enough to stop the theists from trying to make me die for being a queer. That's what you're agreeing to, right? Right? Oh, I'm trying very hard. I'm an activist. 
against mm-hmm. that. I'm part of a LGBT I'm sorry. It's the loudest. Say, it's the loudest bit of I them. Say, I, I, they're are, the I majority because they're so loud. Haley, are you even for real or is this some bullshit trolling? What are you? I'm trying to have a genuine conversation with you guys. You we, haven't made a genuine point so far. We've asked you for an, a single example of trying to mm-hmm. force somebody to deconvert. And by the way, even if mm-hmm. I did say, if you relied on healing instead of medicine, you deserve to die. That isn't attempting to force mm-hmm. someone to deconvert, though I would never say that. So what's an example of forceful deconversion? We ever going to get mm-hmm. one? All right, so let let me walk walk it back a little bit. Okay? Yeah, I, you probably have to walk it all the way back so, to the beginning and go with your actual position, which your actual position is, hey, I wish atheists would shut up. I wish they would stop trying to take faith away from people. And I'd like to broad stroke brush every atheist with the loudest shitty people who do this shit on Twitter. And I'd like to uh, uh, say that you existing and trying to be an activist is trying to force your way on other people. And you probably want to go all the way back okay. to the beginning and completely redo the whole thing because so far everything you've said has been bullshit. No, see, the point I'm trying to make is bad. Uh, is this basically? Mm-hmm. Is there a god? No, no one knows. But you shouldn't hate me for what I choose to believe in, and I should hate you. Who do you Haley? think? Who do you think disagrees with that, Haley? Yeah. Who do you think disagrees with that? Do you think Matt or I I'd do? I'd say a lot of my, I'd say a lot of my Christian comrades disagree with that, but that there's a large subsection of atheists that disagree with that as well, and that that no, goes, no, no. Go here's the thing: by your own admission, which, which, by the way, I don't agree with you. You say, is there a God? Nobody knows. I don't know how you know that nobody knows, but your admission that you think nobody knows means that you aren't a believer, that you you do, you know, okay, if we want to parse out belief or knowledge, but the notion that you think people hate you uh, because you're a believer is some absolute bullshit that is derived from the victimhood mentality that exists in the New Testament and is propagated across evangelicals. I'm a former fundamentalist Christian. I'm a former Southern Baptist who was going to be a preacher. I don't hate my former self. I don't hate you because you're a Christian. I don't hate Christians generally. And that's not what atheism is about. What, what I do despise is irrational buffoons who run around believing things that they don't have any warrant for and then legislating, voting, and attempting to push those beliefs onto everybody else to make them conform to a religion that they don't adhere to. That Those actions are the things that I despise. I love individual people on most occasions, and the reason I spend time trying to tell people and, and explain to people that their beliefs are nonsense is because I would like them to be freed from the baggage and slavery of a religious mindset, just like I was. So whoever it is that you're upset about, whichever online atheists, um, you haven't given me anything concrete, uh, about, about anything except that you believe in a God and don't think that there's any way to justify that belief. Well, then I'm going to say to you, why do you believe in something that you cannot justify? Why should anybody respect a belief that, that isn't justified? Mm-hmm. I'd say... Um, it is justified because in my, it's okay if you had different experiences or anyone listening has had different experiences, but thanks to the hope and stuff that I've received from God, I'm still standing. How do you know, how do you know that, how do you know that whatever hope you think you have came from God? How do you know that? Um, wait, what do you mean? Yeah, I, I think we're mean, fundamentally I mean. getting right. to the problem. This, yeah. so this is you. My my objection is that you believe something which you admit you don't have justification for, and then when I pointed it out, you said you do have justification because of the hope you've received from God. Now, what hope have you received, mm-hmm. and how do you know that it's from God? Uh, I I don't. I can't give you an exact 
specific, like scientific. I did psycho- psychosocial analysis. Haley, Haley, of- I didn't. Please stop trying yeah. to invent bullshit. I asked you, how do you know that whatever hope you think you have has come from God? What? I didn't ask for scientific anything. I asked you. You are the person who said nobody knows if there's a God or not. And you are also the person who followed it up by saying you think you're justified because of the hope you've received from God. I then asked, how do you know that this hope came from God? That's it. Just tell me. How do you know? Um, it sort of, it, see, the thing is, it's hard to quantify. I would. I'm not asking you to quantify. I swear I'm going to hang up on you if you don't even make an attempt to to address this. You are convinced that you have hope from God. All I'm Mm -hmm. saying is what convinced you that you have hope from God? Yes, I was getting to that. I'm saying it's more than a feeling. It's something that I've been taught. Prayer is something that's taught and built on just like science and prayer has worked for me oh my god just like science Uh, oh um no no i'm sorry but that's not justification and and you don't you don't teach and build on prayer and you can't say prayer has worked for you in what way has prayer worked for you um i say i'll like if i pray for something it makes my mental state better does that make sense no i can feel that that is no what what, what makes sense what makes sense is that anytime like if if you're having a problem and you say please god help me with this problem yes i can understand if you already believe there is a god who can help you that will make your mental state better because you're no longer worried about a problem you've turned that problem over to god but that doesn't mean that God has done anything or can do anything. Let me when you this. say, when you say prayer has worked for you, um, do you have any dem- any way to point to a prayer that has worked in such a way that we can verify it's from a God? Um, yes, I would. Although it's not as simple and clean as a lot of atheists want to believe. I you know, I swear that, your that. fucking God that if you pull this, a lot of atheists want shit again. When you're talking to me, we're done. I asked you the question. I don't care what oh, other atheists okay. want. You're yeah, the I one that is advocating. You shut up. You're the one that's advocating for a belief. I have repeatedly, respectfully asked you to, to demonstrate why you're convinced. I don't need the dancing around. Mm. I don't need you to whine about what other atheists want or how it may not be good enough. All that is, is an admission that you're about to talk some smash. So what's the reason? Um, I just remember, like, all those nights alone as a kid, and I just felt so alone and isolated, and I... See, I know what you're going to say. I know you're going to stop. Say you, you, you're doing the wrong thing. He's going to he's going to get mad again. You're literally trying to straw okay, man okay. and preempt. Just answer the question and don't tell us what we're going to say. Just answer. Mm-hmm. I the short answer is I feel that what I pray for eventually comes true. Sorry, I got a little tongue. I I I'd like to take this. Like uh Haley if I ask Haley, for something, stop, 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 stop. I already heard you. You say if you ask for something, it comes true. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. When I was a teenager, this happened, I'm not kidding, dozens, maybe hundreds of times. I would be, so it's, it's going to get a little bit weird here because we're going to be talking about the bathroom, but I have intestinal issues and I have since I was a kid and they cause a lot of pain. And as a teenager, because I didn't know how to manage them, we're talking extreme levels of pain bowled over the first couple of times thought I had to go to the hospital and then you learn nope you just you just have that amount of pain and what I used to do is when I would get to a certain point I would realize this is too much and I cannot handle more and I would basically call out to God and I would pray that he would take the pain away from me 
And about a minute to a two minutes later, I would stop being in pain. The pain would subside basically completely. And that happened to me, again, could be hundreds of times, at least dozens of times. Is that proof that the prayer was working and God was healing me? I mean... It sounds like it in your I world, can't right? Think of any... you... I mean... Okay, great. You can't think of another explanation. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah. Cool. I'm trying. I'm going to tell you the explanation, and this is going to show fundamentally why you are not doing enough to investigate your own beliefs, because I no longer believe. I no longer pray. What I found out was that moment of extreme pain that I couldn't handle more of, I actually literally couldn't handle more of. It was the peak of my pain. And my body would hit that moment and it would basically go, okay, this is the worst of it. We're past it. We're done. And it would do it by itself. And the funniest thing happened when I stopped praying, I still hit these moments where I would go, oh goodness, this is where I would usually pray, but I wouldn't pray. Or just to be funny, I'd ask the magic genie in the sky to handle it for me instead of God. And you know what happened? One to two minutes later, my pain still went away because I had developed a habit and a pattern of this natural relief that I was receiving using something called confirmation bias to attribute that to a God. And that is what you have been doing too. When you said it's prayer, it's like science, you build on it and it works more. Science doesn't work on confirmation bias. You were describing confirmation bias when you were talking about why prayer works. So I think that there isn't much hope here in the conversation going at much more useful places. I'm not going to just end it. Of course, you and Matt can talk more. But until you go and look up confirmation bias and look up examples of how people use it and then go, okay, now that I know this fallacious thing my brain does, this thing that is har apparently hardwired, that humans have this thing that they can't escape almost unless they learn about it and put work into avoiding it, let me apply that to my own life and see if I can see anywhere that this may have happened. I don't know how we could have a useful conversation with you until that happens. However, I'm done with you now. If you and Matt want to keep talking, feel free. Okay. Yeah, it's nine in the afternoon where I am, so I might have to go soon, actually. Nine in the you afternoon. Want to anything, Matt? The eyes are the size of the No, bone. I just, I genuinely hope. I mean, whatever harassment you think you're getting uh, from atheists, I hope that stops. But honestly, it's very difficult to take any of this too seriously when you, you don't have anything that's like close to a concrete example, nothing that points to anything substantive. Um, and then when we start talking about how and why you believe, it's like, okay, you believe for the same reason that a lot of other people do, because this is what you're surrounded by. This is what around the people around you believe you were taught prayer. You were taught that it works this way. And Jimmy's example is great for pointing out, you know, Hey, the way we go about interpreting what happens, like when I'm in a, a struggling and I reach out flailingly. Next time, you know, next time you want to pray, pray to Joe Pesci and see if it works out exactly the same way. Um, you know, I mean, I get it. You, you think that's sacrilegious, but I really hope that you take on board this notion that you simultaneously it's believe no one. What? I just said it's unholy. Okay. Uh, who cares what's holy or not? Your, your notion of holy comes from a, a, a belief in a God that you can't demonstrate and that we have no good reason to exist. Your, do you realize that your belief in that God is unholy with regard to somebody else's religion and their God? Um, you, can, you can make that argument. I, I did. I asked you if you realized it. It wasn't an argument. It's a fucking fact. It, what is unholy, be, being a Hindu and worshiping Hindu gods is unholy to, from the Christian perspective. And the Christian perspective is unholy from the Jewish perspective or the Muslim expection, uh, perspective, that's just the way this works. And so if your view is that nobody can know if there's a God, then how do you know which one of those is right? You have arbitrarily decided on 
the one you think is right. You don't have any evidence for it. You don't have any reason for it. Why, why are you a Christian and not a Muslim? Um, because I've tried all the other ones. You've tried what all tried. the others. They haven't had the same. I, I genuinely, okay, now we're just going to stop here because it's getting embarrassing. Um, I, we I gave don't, you homework. I don't believe what? it. Go do the homework and call yeah. back maybe. Can I like leave you guys with like a quote? No. Bye. No. I feel like it will make us worse. I think it'll make us worse. Um, oh, I've tried them all. There's not enough time that's... in life to try them all. Yep. When you say you've tried them all, I bet you couldn't even name them all. All right. So I guess we'll start out with <laughs> uh, Manuel from Texas. How you doing there, uh, Manuel? Uh, we spoke before. Uh, yes, we have. Uh, hi. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how, how are you guys? Uh, I just want to talk how, how, how much like the New Testament is different than the slavery that we actually think. So what I would say is like, you know, a lot of people misquote the Bible in Ephesians 6, 5 saying Colossians 3, 22. So when, uh, what I, I think we have to understand the intentions of New Testament writers. So what I think is... Well, so, uh, so let me know, stop you right to, there, Emmanuel. Uh, Emmanuel, Eman Emmanuel, let me I'm stop sorry. you right there. Because I feel like what you're trying to do is you're trying to separate the New Testament from the Old Testament as if it's uh, somehow a different God or maybe different in a meaningful way. Um, I, I really don't think that you're going to have a good time with that particular argument. Uh, would you not agree that the God of the Old Testament is the same God of the New Testament? Uh, God, God never changes, but his covenant changes. So the Old Testament teaching, how you get to God, how you become righteous, how, how you know, law and grace is two different things. So the, uh, the God of the Bible is... Okay, faith, okay, so, so, but, so uh, Emmanuel, can we start off? Maybe we can start off. I know Dr. Josh likes to do this uh, a little bit. Can we start off uh, agreeing then that the Old Testament covenant with God definitely included chattel slavery where you could buy, uh, own, and trade people uh, as chattel, as property? So, so what, what, what I think is it specifically it allowed, for example, when you look at uh, Exodus 21, it it's, it's a yes or no question. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Emmanuel. It's a yes or no question. It's a yes or no question. Yes or no, the Old Testament covenant with God includes owning and, and bartering uh, a whole ass people as chattel, as, as property. Yeah, it, it, it allows it, but it, it's like a, it's a hidden okay. slave. So you, you, it's, it's a white like heathens, but they're like idol worshippers. So it's kind of like a revenge for God, basically. Emmanuel, do I you want to go to there... do, you, do you want to go to Exodus twenty one two to six and read it to me? Okay, uh, let me just get my glasses. Just give me a okay. second. Because I think you'll find that uh, chattel slavery doesn't only pertain to the foreigners that you're talking about in Leviticus 25. Okay, so you said Exodus 21, right? Mm-hmm. Two to six. Uh, so it said, if you buy a Hebrew servant, he will serve you for six years, and the seventh year he shall go free without paying anything. If he comes alone, he is to go free of load, but if he has a wife, when he comes, she is to go with him. If his master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters, the woman and her children shall belong to her master, and only the man shall go free. But if okay, a so servant pause for just a second. I, I sorry. love my master. Sorry, sorry. I know I, know I told you through Go six, ahead. but just pause there at four. So can you tell me about that okay. woman and her children? No, it, it, it said she, ha, she, she has to be a servant uh, uh, 
forever. And she can go free, I think. That's the context. So is she a chattel slave? Wait, wait, hold on. No, no, she's not a chattel slave in, in this context. Can you define chattel slave for me? So chattel slavery is like being uh, a yoke. Uh, it's like a yoke of slavery. So basically, when we see, uh, you know, 1 Timothy 6, uh, 1 to 2, it says, for you who, who are under the yoke of slavery, obey your masters. So that is chattel slavery, but I don't okay, think- Okay, so chattel slavery, just so, chattel. just so you know, chattel slavery means that it's slavery that is not dependent upon the repayment of the debt, right? Their property, that's what they are. Debt slavery is slavery that is dependent upon the repayment of the debt. So chattel slaves are just property. That's what they are. So, so is so that it, woman and the, the woman and the children, is it dependent upon the repayment of the debt? No, no, I don't think it's a repayment of the debt. I don't think that's what it's saying in Exodus 21, but it doesn't show that you, she is like a chattel slave. So even if it was a chattel slave, it, it's the Old Testament. We are in the New Testament. Why do we really need? Okay, wait, 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 Emmanuel. I mean, I, I feel like we don't, what we don't want to do is shift goalposts, right? So. Uh, if chattel slavery, and I would just, you know, don't make up a definition of chattel slavery, go, go look one up. Um, but chattel slavery is slavery that is not dependent. Manumission of the, of the, uh, the slave is not dependent upon, uh, the repayment of a debt. Uh, these are, these are people that are the property of their master, right? So they're, they're ostensibly going to serve as long as the master wants them to serve. Uh, which is what we all talk about in Leviticus 25, 44 to 46. That's the big place that everybody goes. But this is a place, you know, here, Deuteronomy 15, like these are places where uh, Israelites become, uh, are or become chattel slaves as well. So, I mean, I think that's something that you, you probably need to consider in this discussion. Yeah, yeah, but, but, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure that the New Testament is not the same as the Old Testament. So, okay, that's fine. But let's, let's, because John asked you in the beginning, like, is it the same God? You said yes. And so it sounded like we were just trying to establish uh, first what the Old Testament says about it. You can make whatever theological argument you want from the New Testament. That's fine. And John, I'll shut up. But, um, you know, like, I think that's important to establish, first of all, okay, this is, in fact, what the Hebrew Bible says about these things. Now let's go talk about what the New Testament says. Do you agree? Yeah, we, we could talk about the New Testament if you were asking me. Uh, uh, okay, okay, but as long it, and, and we're in agreement that the God of the Old Testament is the same God as is in the New Testament. And uh, at some point, I'd love to hear how you reconcile the fact that this uh, supposed uh, all loving God can command the taking of slaves. And not just chattel slaves, but he also commands taking of sexual slaves as well. Um, and we can, we can discuss that uh, further if you want to. But um, I would love to know how you can recon reconcile the idea of a omnibenevolent God with this, uh, you know, various uh, um, different kinds of slavery that he commands uh, be practiced. Well, so what I think is God collects a few people and he shows he, all of his love, but he doesn't show it to everybody else, this way in the Old Testament. So I think the context of like slavery in the Old Testament is always negative. So God always asked them, you know, to, to, to keep slaves uh, in different areas with, as they go abroad until they get to the land of Canaan. So what I think is those people are idol worshipers and they don't worship God. Okay. That's why. So he's not omnibenevolent then. You should buy then, a then, servant among the heathen. Then, then hold on, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, then, then God, you would agree then that God is not omnibenevolent. God is omnibenevolent, but only to the people he has chosen. Not to everybody else. I mean, 
the, isn't that omnibenevolence with an asterisk there? So, like, it's got a caveat to it. Omnibenevolent, but only those that suck my dick. Like, and, and Emmanuel, I feel like, Emmanuel, I think we just went over this, right? Because Exodus 21, 2 to 6, those are Israelite slaves. Those are not foreign heathen slaves, whatever you're calling them. That's a good um, point. So, you know, you, you have chattel slaves and it's, it's certainly not in a, at least as the way the text is presenting it there, particularly in verses five and six. I mean, the, you know, the, the, the dead slave who has to leave his wife and children is saying, I love my master, right? I will not go free. So, I mean, even as the way the text is presenting it, um, you know, it, it's, it's certainly doing it, uh, in a way that we today reading it, I wouldn't think would look at it and say, well, that seems certainly negative. Um, at least, at, at least, sorry, we today, meaning I think you as the person defending slavery, sorry, I don't think I should say that, but <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I read it and say that's negative, but it sounds like from your vantage point, looking at this contrast between Israelites and foreigners or anything, you would say that sounds all in all better at least, right? Would you say that? No, I, I wouldn't say that because we don't have to assume that all, all Israelites or all Hebrews worship God. So back in the Old Testament, we see in Joshua and Deuteronomy that there are certain Israelites that worship uh, idols. So, so that's sir, why show, me, show, me in, show me in Exodus 21. It, go for it. Show me in Exodus 21 where it says that these are people that are idol worshipers in 2 to 6. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not saying we could see it in Exodus 21. What I'm saying is, you know, th there are like, there are like Hebrews and Israelites. Who, for example, in Exodus, you see uh, in Exodus 31, when Moses went down from the mountain, they were worshiping idols. So there sure, are sure. Israelites that's that's that fine, but you'd have God. to you, if you're making this argument, Emmanuel. If you're making the argument that God is only allowing chattel slavery for people that are idol worshippers, then you have to demonstrate that twenty-one two to six is describing uh, there's somehow some kind of a connection. But you can't just assume that, right? So you'd have to demonstrate that. Where's that connection? Uh, uh, I might be. Uh... Uh, what I think is you have to look at verse 44. You just quoted uh, Le Leviticus, uh, Leviticus 25, right? It says you have to buy your servants from the... Quoted Exodus around. 21. So... Well, yeah, oh, so sorry. Emmanuel, we're, so, we're working uh, with Exodus 21. Okay, Exodus 21. Okay. The one you just read, 2 to 6. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only for seven years. It's not even like a forever kind of slavery in Exodus 21. Excellent. In the laws of Hammurabi, it's in the laws of Hammurabi, it's three years. Does that mean the laws of Hammurabi are better? It, it might be the, the laws of Hammurabi, if, if, if it is three years, it might be better. But okay, probably not is, something we want to argue here, easy. though, right? And it doesn't sound like that's something you'd want to argue. The point here is that the woman and the children that are born uh, to this debt slave, chattel slave uh, relationship here, the man and the woman, uh, the woman, her, the wife and her children belong to the master's chattel slaves. Now, the, the, the husband, the debt slave can then say, well, look, I'm, I'm going to forego my manumission after the six years. I'm going to go get my ear pierced with the all, uh, and then I'm going to serve as a chattel slave for life. Right. These are all Israelites. So like th like these are you you'd have to make the the de you'd have to demonstrate that here in Exodus 21, 2 to 6, that these are somehow either idol worshiping Israelites or they're foreigners, which I don't I don't know how you're gonna demonstrate the latter. No, uh, what wh what I'm saying is we we have to recognize so I, I don't think they're two separate events where you see Exodus 21 and Exodus th uh, 31st. And the other thing is in Genesis, you see God putting out a curse on a certain people to become servant and to become slaves of a certain people. So I think, for example, you see uh, in, 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 in the house of Jacob, there were like two sons and you see, uh, uh, you see, you see one being cursed to be a slave 
and the other to to be okay. life. What be what is this, uh, uh, Emmanuel? Emmanuel, I'm so sorry, Emmanuel. What does the, any of this have to do with Exodus 21 and like what we're talking about here? Because what we're talking about is the fact that Hebrews themselves can also be chattel slaves. So the whole idea of omnibenevolence to those that, you know, believe in God and accept God or, or Jesus is just totally thrown off the tracks because of the fact that Hebrews themselves can also be slaves. So it's the caveat that you put on it is not is, is not a correct one. Um, it, it just seems like all around uh, way more complicated to try to make an argument for an omnibenevolent God because he's just not omnibenevolent in the Bible. So uh, what I think is, first of all, we have to recognize that the Bible didn't have chapters and verses. So I think all of uh, all of the chapters before Exodus 21 is relevant because it, it's still the same book. So what I- What about Deuteronomy 15? Do you think Deuteronomy 15 is is relevant as well when it talks about Hebrew male and Hebrew female slaves? Do you think that that's also relevant? Uh, uh, of, of course it does because- here, Okay, if it does, if it Deuteronomy does, right? Emmanuel, 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 that's, focus with me, buddy. So if it does, why is it in Deuteronomy 15, it says after they serve for the six years, when they're released in the seventh, they're not just released, they're given with, uh, set out with tremendous provisions from the master. Now, is this a punishment because they're idol worshiping slaves? Uh, I, I'm not saying, uh, well, well, uh, I'm sorry, I have to make myself clear. I'm not saying in all of the context of slavery or servanthood is related to idol worship. What I'm so just the ones that help your that argument. Specific. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. What 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 I'm saying is, in in the context of servanthood, God always because God brought them out of slavery, because He wanted uh, He wanted Israel to to worship God and to be full time servants of God. And you see that if you want a servant or if you want slave buy the slaves from the nation around you. That's what it's saying. So when I- Sure, by the time you get to Leviticus 25, 44 to 46. Yeah, absolutely. I I agree with you. Of course, the holiness code in Leviticus 25 is, you know, later than what you see in the covenant code in Exodus 21 and uh, Deuteronomy 15. So, I mean, I don't know that you can make that argument strictly on the text itself. Like you'd have to take into account the time of writing. Yeah, um, if I have interpreted, uh, if I have interpreted wrongly, I might be in a mistake. What I'm saying, what, what I'm still trying to prove is slavery is always a negative in the entire Old Testament because slavery is seen as a curse. When someone curses, for example, the sons of Noah, you see Noah cursing out Sham, be a slave to your brother. So you, you, you see, you, okay, you, okay, you but, see but uh, Emmanuel, but, and Emmanuel, but, Emmanuel, what, how is it, how is it a curse? Explain this to me, because, uh, or maybe Josh can explain it to me. How would, could it be seen as a curse for a, a Hebrew to uh, sell himself into the kind of slavery that, that the debt slavery that we're talking about, where he gets released after seven years? But because his master gave him a wife and he had children and he decides to become a full-on chattel slave for the rest of his life uh, for that master and him also being a Hebrew, how is this a curse upon him? Like, I'm not connecting the curse part to, like, slavery is a curse. Uh, And furthermore, how 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 does that help you, Emmanuel? How does that help you? I mean, you don't want to be in your position. I don't think you want to be saying that the slavery that is being endorsed in the laws of the Old Testament is bad. Like, I don't think you want to be saying that. I mean, we, we, I think we all recognize that that's the case. But I mean, I don't think in your position, you want to be saying that if you're going to be defending it, right? Yeah, but what I think is when you see the entirety of Scripture, that's why God brought the New Testament under Jesus Christ. Because the Old Testament had its own a lot of laws. You could look at Hebrews eight. It was a temporal. Uh, it was a temporal law until grace in Christ comes. So I don't think 
you can, so you're you saying Emmanuel, sorry, or, sorry. So I'm are you are you I'm saying sorry. are you saying? And it's fine if you are right, but I think we just need to get this out in the open. And John, I promise I'll stop talking after this. But are you saying um, that Yahweh gave commands for to, to, that so that and endorsed what what he would later consider to be immoral practices? Uh, I I don't think the New Testament consider it immoral. What I'm saying is all the laws or the commandments of the Old Testament doesn't apply for the New Testament church because, the, the, uh, because, because law is a guardian so that we could grow into Christ and grace. So it doesn't apply to us. It's like talking about in the 1800s in America, slavery was legal. Now it's illegal. Why are we? T so we can't say that well, the, the, the Constitution and the so Emmanuel, Emmanuel, applies to us. Emmanuel, the law Emmanuel. Can, can you tell me how how exactly was slavery justified like uh in 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 the south in in the early days of of the united states i mean can you can you fathom how people justified the slave trade at that point in time like as far as like how did we what did we use to base our laws around slavery in the south or in in, in the united states in general when slavery was uh, so what I think is, by the way, I'm not American, so I don't want to speak on uh, the things that I'm really ignorant of. I'm actually from Africa. So what what I know is, you know, the Europeans came to our land and they colonized our ancestors and they brought them to slavery. So uh, what I think is uh, the, the Europeans at the time thought that the darker skinned people, you know, colonizing them will be beneficial to their own civilization. So that's what I think it had. And that doesn't apply I mean, to uh, uh, slavery and the new I mean, Probably, but my point was, my point was, was that, you know, slavery in, in a lot of instances, not, not just the United States, but slavery was justified using the Bible because of the verses that are in the Bible and also because of like things that are found in the New Testament. So I, I guess I don't understand the point in bringing up the 1800s. Sorry, I automat I let my Amer like my uh, United States sort of bias, I guess, take over in my assumptions. But uh, my my just my point was was that the Bible, uh, New Testament, Old Testament doesn't matter. The Bible in general is used to at that point in time is used to, uh, you know, our, uh, to to justify the taking of slaves. So. I'm kind of interested. Maybe uh, uh, we can get I to think it's a misinterpretation. Okay, and so we just now have, like, with you or maybe uh, whoever taught you about this. Just now, we're understanding the true interpretation of what the words in the Bible mean. No, you you, you just have to look at the text. the The text in the New Testament says that. You do this not with eye service, but you have a master, which is the Lord Christ. So when I obey my human masters, I'm, I, I'm actually well, right. I'm not serving so, the human master. I feel I'm, like, I'm, uh, Emmanuel, I feel like what you're doing, Christ. Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel, I feel like what okay. you're doing, and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like what you're doing is you're zooming out from the text, basically, and, and getting like a 30,000 foot view of what it's saying, because you're trying to say here, and, and again, I could be wrong in what you're trying to say, but I feel like what you're trying to say here is that, well, God is really the master of everybody. So therefore, you know, everybody is considered like a slave to Christ or a slave to God or something of that nature. So there's no real like slavery because we're all subjected to God. Is that, is that what you're trying to say? Uh, not just that, because be, because the Bible says in First Corinthians seven twenty three that you are bought by a price. Don't become bond servants of man. So everything that we do, we don't do it to human pleasure or to be exploited. Because what what, what I think is, first of all, we have to see uh, we have to see the Lord's teaching uh, about responding uh, good to evil. So. If I obey to cruel masters, 
and I become, when I submit to the system, I'm actually serving God. I'm not serving humans in that context. That's what it brings in Colossians 3.22 so, when it says that like, obey your masters. I think that, so, that's the, the correct interpretation of, of the New Testament. So, so Emmanuel, can I ask you, do, do you think then that the New Testament condemns the institution of slavery? The, the, the New Testament doesn't condemn the institution of slavery, but it condemns the mistreatment of people. So, because you, you see in Colossians 4, 1, it says that masters treat your servant fairly because you have a master in heaven. So, after Paul, uh, after Paul instructing the slaves to, 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 to serve the Lord and to submit to their human master, it, it, it makes a connection and saying that masters still don't treat them fairly. Because you have so it doesn't or, sound like uh, it doesn't in sound heaven. like you interpret it terribly differently than what we see in the in the Old Testament laws. So, f for example, in Exodus twenty one twenty to twenty one, you know those verses are there to mitigate slave abuse. It has what they're for. Um, so, if that's the case, um, I mean, it doesn't sound like. In, at least in some ways from what you're saying, that you think that there is a tremendous difference between what's being stated in the Old Testament and what's being stated in the New. Right, because I feel like this it, is kind of one of the... This, hold, hold, on, hold on, Emmanuel. I feel like this is one of those distinctions without a difference here. Be, uh, uh, because I feel like what you're saying, Emmanuel, is that, oh, well, the New Testament says treat your slaves good. Does that therefore make the holding of slaves like people as property does that make it okay if you treat them all right like is it okay to own another person as long as you're treating them okay I, I, i'm not saying that actually i have a conscious where i think that uh what i think this institution is actually evil but i do believe that god has a, has a better worldview yes. than i okay okay I, I, right I, so, against the word of God. Okay. So uh, uh, we do need to move on here here in a second. But if if the institution of slavery is evil, why did God command evil be done? So, if he's so, omnipotent, so first of all, God is the creator. God is the cre creator of good and evil, light and darkness. So w w what I do believe, Ed, even though I consider it to be evil. And when I see, you know, people killing a certain people in the Old Testament and, you know, God killing a certain people in the New Testament, what I think is God is a better, has a better right, is a better righteous judge than I. If I say just because I think this part is evil, therefore God is evil, I'll be saying I am better than God when I'm not. And that will be, no, no, no. You, just well, I mean you just don't know why. Is that just, just to, so I can steal man you? So. So you think that looking at these things, you would say, yes, that seems evil to me, but God's got a reason for it, or God has something bigger that I don't understand and I can't understand. Um, and so he's not evil, but it does seem that, that, does seem that way to me. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I think one of the okay. factors is that. Honestly, I feel Hello? like anybody that considers... Hello? Uh, you I, I can hear you. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I, I feel like okay. it, maybe we can end it at this because we do have some more calls to get to. But um, I feel like anybody that can recognize slavery as being this um, absolutely immoral thing, uh, it, that it's abhorrent and it, it should have never happened, I feel like that makes you better than God in general. Um, as far as the God of the Bible goes. So, um, I, I mean, I'm glad that you feel that way, but at the same time, um, I, I, I would hope that you would recognize that, you know, the God of the Bible does definitely command the taking of slaves. And if you can figure out that that's evil or bad or immoral, why couldn't God? And if God did know that it was immoral, why is he considered omnibenevolent and then commands immoral actions. 
of his chosen people. Those are the oh. kind of questions that come to mind for me. Okay. So, so, all right. So, what I think is God is. Okay. Sorry. No, uh, you, you go go on ahead. We do need to move on, but maybe maybe you can uh, give give some final thoughts or some uh, anything like that before we move on to the next caller. Uh, what, what I think is when we uh, when we respond uh, good to evil, as the uh, as the Lord said, I think our reward, even though we are suffering in the earth, I think we we have a reward on God. So. I think that and justify the meat in my argument in this case. Oh no! I mean, I will say, and I know we got to move on. And just and Emmanuel, I appreciate your your patience with us interrupting you quite a bit. Um, but I will say that uh, th this position of what I think is just skeptical theism, right? I think that's what this is. Uh, is probably, as far as I'm concerned, if you're going to hold to a position of the God of the Bible is true and just and you know, omnibenevolent and all those things is to at least get to the point where you can say, as it sounds like you're doing, yes, slavery is immoral, right? This is, in a, this, this is something that seems really, really bad to me. And I agree that it's really bad. I just don't know why God allowed it, but I just, I just believe that he does. If, if, if you're going to hold a position, I, I feel like that's maybe one of the better ones to hold. Um, so at least good, good on you okay. for that. It, that doesn't sound like you're trying to argue for the morality of something that is immoral. So thank you. Hold this beer. <laughs> Th thank you so much, Emmanuel, for calling in. I always, always love having a conversation thank with you, you though, bud. Thank you, Emmanuel. Okay. All right. Thank you. You have a good night, man. Thank you, Josh. Right. Okay. Have a good night, too. We've got the uh, calls lining up, and I just want to keep to the format of the show. It's it's uh, yes. Well, we have a. I see a yeah. theist here, James, in the USA. Why evolution doesn't make sense to him. Two birds, two bears can't give birth to an oak tree. This is not a real person. This is not going to be a real argument. This is not his genuine concern. Give him the benefit of the doubt. We'll see. Okay, I, I will hit talk. James, you're on the line. <laughs> uh, thank you for taking my call. I'm, I'm not too familiar with your work. Are, and I was going to call last week that didn't get around to it to talk to uh, Forrest. But um, I understand you're an evolutionist too. So maybe you can help me. Maybe you can help me get my head around it because it doesn't make any sense to me. I'd be happy to. So I don't know if you're, uh, like I said, I don't know your work, uh, but I don't know if you're familiar with uh, uh, evangelist and uh, science educator from the 90s, and he's still around today, but uh, he was a lot more high profile in the 90s. A fella named uh, Dr. Kent Hovind talks a lot about evolution. Yeah, I, I knew you were going to bring that Bob name up. And it, he's, the, he's, first not all, he's not a doctor. James has yeah, called before. He's not this. a doctor. He's a, he's what? James has called before. He's not real. This is a joke. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's what I said. May I ask my question? Prove that you're not a joke with a reasonable question. We'll see. My reasonable question is I watched the debate between Pantahoban and a fellow named Professor Dave, and he never answered a very important question. He said, no matter how many times you breed a strawberry with another strawberry, you always get a strawberry. And the Professor Dave guy could not explain how two strawberries can. It doesn't make humans have, uh, what is it, 46 chromosomes? At what point did a non-human animal give birth to an animal with 46. How did an animal with different number of chromosomes have a baby with 46? When the way that sperm and egg come together with 23 and 23, it's always got to be. I mean, I just don't see how it's possible for different number of chromosomes to give birth to. I don't know how to phrase it. I, I think you understand where I'm coming from. I, I suggest you look up a lecture by Dr. Kenneth Miller, who's a textbook author on evolutionary biology. He also happens to be a traditional Catholic. So he's, he's a God-believing man, but he also was the star witness in Kitzmiller versus Dover, where he had to defend evolution against the fraud that is intelligent design. And he gives a very good presentation on, uh, what was the, what was the name of this pre presentation? It, it, uh, it's on chromosomal fusion. So they identified the exact location in our chromosome where there was a fusion of two ape genes, our chromosome number, number two. And the uh, chimpanzee chromosome, I think, number 24. 
they fused in us. And they've got all the indications of where they fused and exactly how they fused and all of that. So that's how that happened. And it, it apparently did and not cause any... I don't think they identified exactly oh, when it happened. But then so also, and this, and this uh, Dr. Problem. Francis it's Collins, who is an, happen- and then Dr. Francis Collins, who is an evangelical Christian, but he was also the the head of the Human Genome Project back at the day, back in the nineties, I think it was, around about the turn of the you know Y two K, and he wrote a couple of books explaining that although he is an evangelical Christian, he had to admit that there is no no evidential support for Adam and Eve. He said that it is impossible for Adam and Eve to have to have existed as the, the first couple and the ancestors of all mankind. He said that humanity emerged from a population in excess of 10,000 people, not two individuals. And he's the head of the Human Genome Project and is currently under four administrations. He's been the director of the National Institutes of Health under Republican and Democrat uh, presidents. I guess I just have trouble understanding how if you crossbreed, I mean, how many thousands of times a day do farmers crossbreed one strawberry plant with another? And every time they get a strawberry plant, they don't ever get something else. They all, because he, that's against the laws, the laws of evolution. There's two evolutionary laws, the law of biodiversity and the law of monophyly that it would be violated if Kent Hovind's ridiculous parody straw man were true. There's never been a time in evolutionary history where one thing ever turned into or gave birth to another fundamentally different thing. That is a lie that is commonly told by creationists. Evolution doesn't allow it, doesn't teach it, never happened. There, everything just pretty is it. Evolution is descent with inherent modification. So you start with one ancestral form, and you get two subsets of that form, both just both different from each other, but they're still subsets of the original form. One or both of them may be different from the ancestor in some way, but there's still subsets of that. And then they have, in turn, multiple subsets again, which, again, are increasingly different from each other and from the ancestor. But they never are fundamentally different. So they're always just a new version of the same thing that all of their ancestors were. So they st- you still belong to every parent clade that your ancestors did that never changed. There was never a time. Kent Hovind is absolutely wrong on everything he's ever said, including the the bit about him being a doctor, because he's he's actually a convicted fraud. Okay, so you're if two animals got together and had a baby with a different number of chromosomes from the chromosome fusion, if that happened, which has nothing to do, first, it has nothing to do with their recombination. By the way, that's a mutation. But then, who is that baby going to? have a baby with because there's not going to be another one like him for him to reproduce with because he's the only one with that number of chromosomes, Changing right? Changing a chromosome does not mean that you can't eat or breed. So you're telling me that there was a baby that was uh, a, a, a human uh, hybrid that had a different we, number we of are, chromosomes than the chimpanzee. We, we are apes. So... Saying, mm-hmm. saying an ape-human hybrid is like saying a duck-bird hybrid. Can you imagine a half-duck, half-bird? Does that make sense to you? Well, I, well all that I'm Can you even is have a half-duck, half-bird? have anyone to breed with. Is it possible to have a no, half-duck, half-bird? No, because a, a duck is a, a kind of bird. Exactly. And we are a kind of ape. So... There is no such thing as a, a, as a well, human ape hybrid. Well, I guess all I'm saying is that if, you know, uh, you know, a hundred million years ago or whatever, when uh, uh, a more hairy version of a human had a baby, how could it have, what, who could he have had a baby with? Who could that animal have reproduced with that would give away to modern day humans, cut in. you know, a hundred million years ago or whenever it was? I yeah, you can cut in, Jimmy, but I, mean, I with, can't answer this. Not with response to his question. Hey, James, do you think that our show won't work if people don't pretend to call in, not understanding what the topic is, and then not listening to the response and then saying something literally in total contradiction to what the response was, just listening for keywords? 
Like, do you think that if you don't call in pretending to be a clueless theist, the line is going to crumble and we don't have actual honest people who are theistic ready to, to, to participate in these calls? Like, what is, what is your motivation here? Is, 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 do you think you're helping us out? Because if you do, and I'm actually saying this legitimately, I'm not just trying to roast you. If you think this is helping us, it's not. We'd rather have the like honest, actual theists call in. Uh, people calling in to troll because they think it makes theists look bad. Theists make themselves look bad plenty enough. We don't need the extra help. Yeah. I'm being, I am being as genuine as I can be here. I've never heard a good response to it. Except I you heard actually heard like, between... you actually heard like five from RN and you didn't listen yep. to a single one of them. And then you repeated the same point without taking into account what he just said. So either yep. you are a troll, which is where I'm going with, because I'm pretty sure you've called before. I recognize your voice and I recognize that whole thing about, I don't know if you've heard about one Dr. Kent Hoven at the beginning is a huge red flag. So. I'm going to tell you how to be a better troll or you are calling as a totally dishonest interlocutor and not even trying to actually participate in the conversation. Those are the only two. I, the third option is you're monumentally stupid. And I don't think you're monumentally stupid because the types of you're, you're, you're putting, you're stringing words together better than the amount of stupid this would require if you are genuine. I guess I'd be the the, the the second one. I'm if you're calling me dishonest, but I'm I'm trying. Not... All right, James. Then go back and watch. I'm just going to give you the benefit of the doubt, right, even James, though I still think you're let, a troll. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me let me just help you out with a couple of things here. You you said you didn't understand how there could be a difference in chromosomes. I just explained it and gave you the reference to a biologist, a professional biologist, who gives a full lecture on it, including all the genetics. Go watch that, Doctor Kenneth R. Miller on chromosome fusion human chromosome number two. He covers everything. So that is the answer to that question. How can you have an eight-man hybrid? I just gave you the answer to that question. If you had a time machine and an eternal lifespan, you could go back and watch the birth of every generation from, you know, from, from 100 million years ago, if you like, all the way up to your mom, and you would never be able to find the generation. You wouldn't be able to point to the first human. You wouldn't be able to distinguish them. Because from apes, from what you recognize as apes into humans, there's so many intermediaries, you wouldn't be able to say that one. Even if you found the one that had that chromosomal variance, you wouldn't have an external cue for that. They would still be able to interbreed with the other ones around them. Th th Thank you for talking. I mean, I, I'm still not 100% on it, but I, I do appreciate you talking to me. And I'll, I'll look up the doctor. I'm sorry. Yeah, one I, other I, thing I know I'm you said Francis Tollins. I don't remember the other one, but if you could I'll Kenneth, take a look Kenneth at it. Kenneth R. Here. Miller. Kenneth R. Miller. And one other thing, on since, since she's brought up uh, Kent Hovind. Now, Kent Hovind has talked about chromosomal variants a time or two. And he's brought it up in arguments that uh, when we showed genetic proof that seals and bears are closely related to dogs, he dismissed all of that, talking about the chromosomal variants, the, the number of chromosomes bears have, the number of chromosomes seals have. But it's only when it's convenient to him, because later he argued with me that, that butterflies could not be a subset of moths. And then he had to admit the vast chromosomal variants just within butterflies. So that there can be 92 chromosomes of difference just with just within butterflies. But since he wants to argue that butterflies are all the same thing, well, then it doesn't make any difference. It's special pleading. So he, he will take any fallacy he likes. What, what matters in one instance won't matter in another. Well, thank, thank you for, for taking my call. I'm going to go check out those, those lectures you recommended. And I'm I might call back next week to talk to Forrest if he's if he's going to be there. And I'm I'm sorry if I came off as pushy or dishonest or anything like that. I I legitimately want to understand this stuff, but it doesn't make sense to me. But I I'll, I'm going to go I'm going to go look up what you recommended, and maybe I'll have a better picture after that. James, also I would watch also the call back. Watch the call that you just participated in, because the thing that frustrated me so much about you is that Aaron would answer a question. And you would then respond with a question as though he didn't just correct the question prior. So watch the callback and take notes if you are remotely genuine.
I just had a debate with somebody that was very public uh, just a few days ago where I had a, a, a creationist I could confirm was a real creationist, an author of books of creationism. I get him on a, on a discussion with me live. And he did exactly the same thing. He would ask questions thinking I can't answer them. He only asks questions he can't, he thinks I can't answer. When I provided the answer, he then tried to change the subject. He would not ever admit that he was wrong, on that I would proved him wrong on anything. He refused. He kept trying to switch back and push things back onto me. So I expect dishonesty out of creationism. That's the only way it can be defended. But I'm not saying you're overtly create. I don't think... You're, you're overtly dishonest. Kent Hovind is overtly dishonest. So don't ever listen to anything he says. And he doesn't know what he's talking about, ever, about anything. I don't know. I'll, I Look, I grew up, I was homeschooled in the 90s. And that was the old... I'm that sorry. Was what, that was what we... I, my, my parents didn't know enough about science to teach me that themselves. So we had VHS tapes from the ministry. And it all makes yeah, sense but, the way he wraps it up. But... Yeah, but but I tell you, unless it's talking about the consistency of prison food, don't ever take Kent Hovind's opinion on anything. Have a good night, guys. I'm gonna I'll, I'll watch the callback like the other host said, and if I'm okay. still not 100 percent on it, I hope it's okay if I give a callback next week and ask more questions because I am being genuine here and I want to understand. Absolutely, this, look me up. I can have a private conversation. Make sense to me because I've I've only heard it painted. One way, and every time I hear evolutionists try to paint it another way, it doesn't make sense to me how two animals... I know, look, I'm not even going to finish my sentence, because I know you're going to tell me he already answered that, and yes, I'm going to feel back and watch. like an idiot for saying it again. Cool. So have a good night. Thank you. Good night, James. Right. As, as somber as he sounded at the end, I'm still not convinced. And let me just give you the pieces of evidence for Troll. One, he kept using the word evolutionist. Two... Yep. He knows who Kent Hovind is, but not who Aaron Ra is. And Kent Hovind has an Aaron Ra obsession. There is, I don't know how you watch and have consumed that much Kent Hovind and Aaron Ra never came up. That's, that's kind of wild to me. Three, his, he told the screener, two oh. bears can't give birth to an oak tree. That is a level of straw man that takes choosing to say something that stupid. So at the end, of course, I started to feel bad as the, as the possible somberness of his uh, speech made him sound like he might be more genuine or he's really good at this, really good at trolling. And this is what he does for fun. Whichever it is, James, now you know how to engage. Maybe he's like, oh, I'm going to do a whole arc where I convert. I'm right. To atheist deconvert when I become an evolutionist. What's going on over there? <laughs> we have Greg from Canada Pronouncer he, he am, uh, who has proof of science in the Bible and proof of prophecy. So welcome, Greg. We've been waiting on proof for ages. I know. Uh, uh, hey, years. To, uh, check. Hello? Go for it. Hello. Uh, nice to chat with you. I actually spoke with you and Dave Warnock about half a year ago, Matt. Um, but uh, I'll start with the proof of science. Mm. It's from Jeremiah thirty-one thirty-two. Do you want me to read it or do you want to read it? Yeah, please read it. Okay, it says, Only if the heavens above can be measured and the foundations of the earth below be searched out, will I reject all the descendants of Israel because of all they have done. Now, we know that even uh, our scientists today cannot measure the heavens because they expand so rapidly. They can only, uh, uh, what do you calculate, Wait. right? Yeah. What, what was the and verse they, again? Uh, Jeremiah 31, 32. And by the way, there's three points of science in the Bible, but I'll, be, I'll give you this one. Hang on. But uh, Jeremiah 31, 32. Stop. Can you not hear me when I say hang on? Yeah. Sorry. I think okay. we're on a delay. I'm going to. Oh, my God. Hang on. I'm going to speak now. And you're going to not speak now because I have a question for clarification. We will get to all the various things. What version of the Bible okay. were you reading from for Jeremiah 31, 32? Because that's not what it is. Uh, NIV Thompson. 
NIV Thompson chain. Jeremiah 31, 32 says, it will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was husband to them, declares the Lord. Yeah, see, now I have to go get my NIV because I don't have the digital version of this. So now I, I'm that, opening up. Right now. So Doug, it up. You can I see it light, quite, I can't see. right here. 31, 32, that's what it says. Because in the NIV, it says oh, it will not 31, be. 31, 37. 31, 37. So you verse. didn't even know so what I've... verse you were referencing. Oh, I apologize, I'm, but I would, I, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm, I'm working under uh, very oh, there. Serious, I guess what I'm writing now. Sorry, 31, 37. Better sorry, writing. I apologize. Yeah. So 31, 37. Yeah, if, I'm drinking if heaven beer is sitting here under a blue light. Okay. Okay. All right. Verse so 31, 37. That's science and God. Uh, the ver- thus, thus saith the Lord, if heaven cannot, if heaven above can be measured and the foundation of the earth searched out beneath, I will cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, said the Lord. How is that science in the Bible? Well, because we can't even measure the universe today. And no, 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 First of all, we can measure the universe in many, many, many different ways. But how does this verse represent science or a scientific bit of knowledge in the Bible? Because that is a statement that if heaven above can be measured, which it either can or can't, that doesn't tell you heaven can be measured or heaven can't be measured. So please explain to me how this verse tells us anything scientifically verifiable well uh, in my opinion i think three thousand years ago they had no way to know that the universe was constantly expanding right it does that's not relevant that there's nothing in this verse that shows yeah, that they knew anything no it's not it's not relevant there's nothing in this verse that shows that they knew anything about whether or not the universe could be measured. And there's nothing in this verse that makes a statement about whether or not the universe can be measured. So your very first verse says, if, and then a qualification. That is not a statement of fact. It is saying, if the heavens can't be measured, I will or will do th- not do this. That is not a scientific statement at all. It's not a piece of knowledge that was scientifically confirmed later. And just because you don't think we can measure the universe now doesn't mean that we won't be able to measure it in the future. We can measure it. Matter of fact, we are living in the one time when we can measure it. If it continues to expand, then the edges of it will be at a point where people later will not even know that the rest of the universe exists somewhere down the line. We are ideally suited to do the measuring that is possible now. How does that verse tell us anything about science? Um, in my opinion, it says it's a challenge. And we, uh, and if you look uh, uh, scientifically, they cannot, they can uh, guesstimate the, uh, uh, the size of the universe, the expansion of it, but they cannot measure it. There's a difference between calculating and measuring. And we have not fully explored the foundations of the earth below, right? Have we? This is 3,000 years ago. Am I wrong or am I uh, reading into You're wrong. Uh, too much into you, it? You are, you are absolutely wrong right. and desperately, you, like desperately seeking Susan in the sense that you're trying to find science where there All isn't right. science. Um, and by the way, do you know All the right. Jewish word that she's there for measured? Do you know the Jewish word that she's there, or the Hebrew word that she's there for measured? No. Do, do you know whether it means measure or calculate? Well, in my translation, it says measured. So, do you I, know if the, the Jewish NIV word is. there? Do you know if the Jewish word no, there means measure or calculate? Cool. So, you don't know what the Jewish word is, and yet you made a declaration that it doesn't say whether or not it can be calculated. It says measured. 
which means you are another person who is ignorant of the origins of this, who is trying to use an English translation for you to figure out what you think it means. Now, this is not being said to be mean to you. It's a problem with Christianity. And that is, you were so sure that you had a voice, a a verse, that taught us something about science, claiming they knew something about science 3,000 years ago that we only just now discovered, when that is not at all what that verse is about. It's not at all what it says. How on earth could there possibly be... Stop and listen. How on earth could there possibly be the God of the Bible in reality, and he fails to teach his followers how not to be ridiculous and confused about what a translation says versus what actual science is. If there were a God, instead of you having to dig through Jeremiah to find something that you think tells us about science, only to discover you're wrong because you haven't even bothered to look at it in the Hebrew to find out what the word is and to see what the usage is and to find out what the language was like at the time. But God didn't correct you. From now on, before you call the show that I'm on, I would like you to pray to God and ask him what you should say to convince us. Because if you keep doing what you're doing, not only will you not convince us, you will be committing embarrassing acts on behalf of your religion. And you don't want that. You are. If there's a God, he doesn't want that. So God should be very quick to tell you, here is what you should say to Matt and Jessica. Okay, I got one. Can I uh, respond? No, you got one what? I have one. You corrected me uh, before, and yet you were wrong. We were talking about sharp prophecy. I have a scripture that, I have a scripture here, Luke 22. No, you should read Helping Jesus Fulfill Prophecy, and then get back to me after you read that. Uh, Yeah, I don't care. Breathe heavily. Breathe heavily. It's called Helping Jesus Fulfill Prophecy. Okay, listen, Luke 22, 36. Listen, okay. so we were talking, we were discussing if there was self-fulfilled prophecy. And I, I brought up the wrong scripture for Matthew. But here's one from Luke 22, 36. Where this is Jesus in red letter. But now if you oh, have a well, purse, take it. And also a bag. And, and if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. It is written. And he was numbered with the transgressors. And I Jesus tell you, this is Christ be fulfilled in me. Is that not self fulfilling prophecy, Matt? Do you understand how the Gospels were written? Luke 22 and 36. Do you have any fucking idea how the Gospels were written and when they were written? Yes, I do. Okay, yes. please. And, explain. but listen. Uh, nope, nope, I nope, also, nope, 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 nope. One explain. point. It's not. I don't care not, about your point. Explain to me how the Gospels were written and then we will continue. Because you don't well, fucking listen, know. Do you know what? Uh, uh, nope, you listen. Listen. Uh, Explain to me. From, get the fuck uh, out of here. Can I answer? No, you can tell if, me how it, the gospel You can right. answer. You, you guys, can answer. You can answer if you answer her question. That's it. I am. I am. I, well, I don't know how, how are the gospels written, written. But I'll tell you, they're not. Oh, no, no, no. I just hung so up you on don't. you. No, no, no. He flat out said, I don't know how they I were don't. written. Yeah, I love it. So I hung up on you. Yeah. Um, so here's the y'all, thing. Two minutes. Jimmy, sorry. Yeah, no worries. So it's Luke 22, 26 and 37. Um, there was this issue that he thinks we had about whether or not there's self-fulfilling prophecy. If I say I'm going to hang up on you and then I hang up on you, that doesn't count as prophecy. Is it technically a self-fulfilling prediction? Sure. But that doesn't make it prophetic. So Luke 22, 36, um, and I will, uh, I will do this in, uh, oh, let's do it in, in the ESV. Jesus says, supposedly, which we can't verify, but now let the one who has a money bag take it, likewise a knapsack, and let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me, and he was numbered with transgressors. For what is written about me has its fulfillment. That's not a prophecy. It's a claim of fulfilled prophecy. The prophecy that it points to is 
it's like saying if somebody said someone will come along one day who people will despise i can say that was a prophecy written about me because there are people who despise me i have come along and as predicted uh people despise me therefore prophecy has been fulfilled that's not what it means to fulfill prophecy my my phone is beeping all kinds of stuff but um prophecy needs to be clear and it needs to be answerable by a single set of circumstances not prone to interpretation or speculation it means nothing to say in a day along the way someone will make a decision and it will be uh, one uh, six fold of love and then when somebody picks the six of hearts you say aha it said six fold of love love is hearts six of hearts the, the the bible predicted that you know the six fold love that you would pick six of hearts that's not fulfilled prophecy it's not fulfilled prophecy when people are actively working to fill it just like when i go to a restaurant and i order a medium rare steak the waiter isn't fulfilling prophecy when he fucking brings me a medium rare steak <laughs> needs to be answerable what? by a single set of circumstances without interpretation <laughs> uh we've got isaac in texas prior to him isaac welcome to the show you wanted to talk about thought crimes so i i think we can talk about thought uh, crimes. yeah yeah so i was in a discussion with a friend of mine who's a pretty devout christian and uh they were talking about the having a belief that uh well basically matthew 27 28 the idea that if you think about having sex with another person you have effectively had sex with the other person and kind of. um they they said that they believed that it was equivalent to actually doing the act and i wanted to talk to you guys about how to approach this and how to sort of deconstruct Believe because it, it really is quite nonsense. Okay. So first of all, it's not Matthew 27, 28. That's Matthew 5, 28. Not to be pedantic boy, but Sorry. just in case uh, yeah. somebody was trying to get past there. Um yeah, what is I it that you want to know? First numbers. Yeah. Well, um, I kind of just want to hear your guys' argument against the idea of a thought crime. Um, that, that's really what I'm trying to, to get a wrap because I, okay. I've done I'm some opposed looking into it and there doesn't seem to be much in that realm. I'm opposed to anything that comes close to thought crime legislation. The very concept of thought crime is anathema to my view on what one could be morally responsible for. The practical reality is that you don't have access to what's in my mind. Um, you can't prove what my thoughts mm -hmm. are. And by and large, it shouldn't matter to you. That said, inferences about my motivations for actions and my thoughts are relevant and evaluated when we're like, for example, we're sentencing a criminal. If, if I, I, if I murder Jimmy because he's a terrible producer, um, that doesn't mean that I'm a danger to anyone else. It doesn't mean that there's a likelihood, there's no chance of recidivism as long as I don't have another terrible producer. Um, but, and, and so those things can be considered and say, you know what? Yeah, this guy did a terrible thing. He killed another person, um, but he's not a risk to society. On the other hand, if I murdered Jimmy um, because he's tried to copy me, now, I'm a risk to everyone else who might have tried to copy me. Or if I murder Jimmy because he's queer, now I'm potentially a risk to everyone else who's queer. The motivations that people take for their actions, um, that's what we can evaluate uh, in sentencing because we're trying to determine how much more of a risk this is or this individual is. Mm -hmm. um, the thought crime that is advocated for in the Bible within Christendom uh, like you're referencing with Matthew 20 or Matthew 5, 27 and 28, where, he sa where it says, uh, you've heard that if you, you know, commit adultery with another woman, blah, 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 that's sin. I say, if you look at another woman with lust, you've committed adultery with her in her heart. Now, setting aside the fact that this is, um, 
it's there to teach some kind of lesson about purity of thought and encourage people to not, uh, you know, let their mind go to impure thoughts. It only matters in the sense that there's supposedly a God who can read your mind. And so that God isn't just going to punish you for taking the action. He's going to punish you for wanting to take the action or thinking about taking the action. Um, and thought crimes exist throughout Christianity, not just the look at them with lust. I mean, that's the cornerstone of sin. Failure to believe, which is thought, is damnable. Um, apostasy, the one and only um, unforgivable listed sin, is specifically attributing to the Holy Spirit something that, or attributing to something other than the Holy Spirit, that which would come from the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, like a miracle or, or whatever else. And that is absolutely, I mean, yes, you're making a profession of your thought, but the thought itself is, is the sin. Um, it's silly in the real world because you don't have access to people's minds. It is laughable that the, anybody could think there's a God who doesn't understand the basics of human psychology to the point where he's willing to punish, punish you for purely natural thoughts, like I, I, I like uh, you know whatever you're attracted to. If you look at someone lustfully, mm -hmm. and granted the Bible only has it if you look at a woman with lust. So I guess if you're gay uh, and you look at a man with a lust, that's not a sin. But doing something with the man would be a sin. I don't know. But thought crimes make no sense to me in the real world. Um. And in within Christianity and what the Bible's supporting, um, I cannot. I find it difficult to believe that there is a God who actually holds to those antiquated, bizarre ideas of making your thoughts enough to damn you to to, to hell. And by the way, Isaac, I I would take uh, it in a completely different direction than Matt took it, though Matt's direction was very good. Let's say there is zero examples of thought crimes ever leading to abuse. Let's say there are zero examples of it being a negative thing and things that we could point to to where it became bad. With zero examples, mm -hmm. I still wouldn't believe in thought crime because you haven't actually given me a good reason to take thought crime on. So uh, when you ask us why we as atheists mm -hmm. would be against thought crime, I'm going to ask you as a skeptic, why would I be for it? way before the against. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the problem, so I actually did bring that up and the problem I ran into, um, is just, it's a conflict of beliefs and they seem to approach the whole thing as though the beliefs are, uh, equally supported because neither is, uh, explicitly proven. So usually um, in that scenario, you can get them which, to acknowledge that they only support the concept of thought crime if the enforcement is happening in their religion, that their religion is the enforcing power. Yeah. Because suddenly Christians aren't for thought crime if they live in a Muslim country or if Muslims were, if yeah. Muslims were getting more political power. And so the acknowledgement that the secular yeah. basis for law is better for Christians, it is better for everybody of every religion. Because you can yeah. only exist happily if you are a member, a believing member, and even then happy is, a, is subjective, a believing member of the ruling party's religion. The, it, the logic there is very simple and very easy. You wouldn't want the enforcement of thought crime mm -hmm. unless it was your religion's thought crime. And the only way to make sure that nobody's having that imposed on them from the legal position, from the very real consequences position, uh, is to make sure that you are existing in a secular society that does not expect other people to live a religion that is not their own. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if I could briefly walk you through an idea that I have and see if you guys, or see what you guys think about. That. Sure. And then I'm going to ask you um, why you believe in a God, but go ahead. Sure. Um, so the approach that I was thinking about is based around the idea of cons um so one of the key assertions that he brought up was that having sex in your mind is equivalent to physically having sex and so the question of consent becomes quite 
pertinent because you have not asked them for consent. In, right? But they haven't justified um, the first part, right? So, mm-hmm. Yeah. The notion, the so notion that the idea I it isn't. W- would we at least agree that when I'm having sex with someone in my mind, they are not there at all? I'm not actually having sex with them. I'm having sex with with just a mental construct of them. Um, sort of, sort of. Well, 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 well. I, I, I really so the need direction to, that, the direction that I. He's sorry, suggesting that, 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 sex with someone, yeah, that if I have sex with someone in my head, they're there. I think I know what's missing here. Isaac, consent is a co- question of autonomy. Do you understand that? Yes. So how do you violate the autonomy of somebody by thinking about them doing what, whatever to you? So the, the way that it, w- it was brought up is that not, no, 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 not the way it was brought up. How could attractive. I get, I get their stupid argument, but it isn't a good one. They haven't justified okay. it. So you had said you were no, giving us a thought experiment where you were, I think, trying to make it work. If you just want to acknowledge there's no way to make it work, then let's move on to why you believe in God. Well, I, I still got to get an answer to this and I want sure. to finish. So Isaac, finish your thought and we'll, we'll see if I can get an answer to my question. Go ahead. So in his case, uh, he was making the point that to recognize somebody as physically attractive, you must first have sex with them in your mind, which is an absolutely absurd claim. And I'm just trying to, to point that out in a undeniably obvious way. Asexual people Uh, find people physically attractive, but I don't think that your person is going to accept that asexual people (laughs) exist. So I, again, I, uh, yeah, no. no, no, no stop. Oh boy. Stop. Stop. I need to get this. I thought I made a statement that was crystal okay. clear and I got a sort of. If I, in my mind, as a fantasy, have sex with someone, that person does not exist in my mind. Their consent has not been violated. They are not present in any fucking way at all. I am fantasizing about a, a, a straw version of them that exists only as a construct in my mind. Can we at least agree, agree to that? What? Yeah, no, I agree. With you. I have not. Then why did you say sort of? Um, I'm, then why did you see all of this rehashing because is because you. when I asked, stop talking. All of this rehashing is because when I asked you the question, you said sort of. How can it be that someone is sort of not in my fucking mind? I was just trying to recall what he said. That's all. I'm sorry. Okay. See, consent is irrelevant with the fictional beings in my head. As a matter of fact, in my head, if I lust after someone, that construct in my head has consented because I have zero interest in having non-consensual sex even in my fantasies, but some people might. I ha- there's, there's nobody here. That's what I was trying to get to, is mm-hmm. that consent cannot be an issue if I am the only person involved. Correct. Okay. Now I'm clear. I, I feel like I want to yes. I, I clarify before comments come in because of Twitter stuff. The moment you begin to externalize yes. this at all, it can become a problem. We are talking yes. purely to the internal. This is not yes. advocating for deep fake porn, for example, that we can list the harms for. Uh, uh, we are talking about what you do in your brain. If you never externalize it, you've never done anything. And just because you jerked off thinking about Timmy or whoever, don't then message Timmy about what you did. Keep it to your fucking yeah, leave, self. Leave Timmy alone. Yeah. Yes. Man. I mean, part of this... Uh... Part of this approach is just trying to lay bare the complete absurdity of what he's trying to say, which is that it's equivalent to having sex. That was part of his assertion. It's not equivalent. Um, it's and the, it, he's wrong. It, is the is the I, I is the unicorn in my head equivalent to a unicorn? Are you fucking it? Uh, just kidding. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I, I'm really not trying to say that personally. Um, it's just that's 
a key aspect of his assertion that I'm trying to disprove. Um, does that make more sense? No. Why are you trying to disprove an assertion that hasn't been proven? It's, it is simply wrong. It is simply false to say that fantasizing about having sex with someone is equivalent to actually having sex with them. That is just undeniably yeah. false. Isaac, I'm going to do something I've never done on this show. But it would end the discussion. I'm going to do something I've never done on this show ever. And I'm going to offer you $20. And I'm, it's a legit <laughs> offer. Isaac, if you get that okay. person to call in, and I, and I can verify it's you because I can see your phone number. Nobody else can. So we could email back and forth. You can say, hey, it's really me. Here's my phone number. Here's the proof. I will give you $20 to get that guy to call in and tell it to us himself. Because I think there's yeah. a lot being caught between you trying to represent and you having a mind that works and this person not having a mind that works. So I'm gonna offer you $20 cash. I wish I could offer more, but $20 if you can get this guy to call in and, and have it out with Matt and I himself. Yeah. All right. I don't know if I can do it on the same phone number. Um, no, 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 no. We're in an online class together. I get so. it. I'm not saying he, that, that that person has to call in on your number. I'm saying you can email me and say, hey, they're calling this day. I can prove I'm really Isaac. Because right. right now I'm going to get emails from people who said, hey, I'm Isaac. Can I have $20? And maybe they're going to call in and pretend to be whoever <laughs> else. I, I'm All saying right. you can email me, dear Mr. Atheist at gmail.com. Right. We can set it up and I will give you $20. Don't tell this guy about it to... To, or just, I mean, whether you care about the money or not, I want to talk to that guy directly, personally. Yeah. That'd be great. I'll, I'll see what I can do because I would be very interested in that. Me too. All right. Uh, so you now you not had the, some questions about my um, belief in God? Yes. Jimmy has a question. Yeah. Why do you believe in God? Because it's a useful construct to me. Ooh. So you don't oh, believe cool. in God. You utilize. You cosplay a belief in God for its utility. So I choose to believe in God and I know that that's a contentious no, state, but you can't, that is contentious. You. You, 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 you cannot. Um, so believing in God means that you are convinced that God is real. Yeah. Okay. You don't. You aren't convinced of something by a choice. You're convinced for reasons. And when you say, I believe in God because I find so it a I useful construct. Wait, 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 wait well, Isaac. I, I was told, Let Matt finish. When you say, I believe in God because I find it to be a useful construct, um, that is not equivalent to, I believe God is real. Calling God a useful construct doesn't mean that you believe in a God that is a real God. Mm hmm so which is it? Do you believe yep. that there's actually a God or do you believe that God is a useful construct? Um, I believe that God exists for the thing that, that I have been able to achieve with that belief. And to the outside world, there's no distinction between uh, me simply believing that a God exists and me using God as a mental construct to achieve some goal. I, I didn't. So, wow. You, you have both claimed that you believe that God is real, that there is a, an existing, an extant agent actor and that God is a useful construct. I don't care about the useful construct. Yeah. I want to know what evidence, what reason you have to be convinced that there is an agent actor God? That's not a thing that translates to other people is the problem. Isaac, yeah, would you that, agree that, then? I'm, yeah, no. I'm agnostic. Isaac, would you agree so, that you don't, don't have a good that. reason anyone besides you should believe? Yeah, I completely agree with that. Okay. And which, which God do you believe in? Do you do you follow one of the... Oh, that's a loaded question. Do you participate in Christianity? Um, do you participate in Judaism? It's so do you frustrating. Yeah. yeah. 
No. It's so frustrating to be like, um, I believe in a so, God, but this doesn't translate to anybody else. That is the definition of self-delusion. How many other things do I mean, you believe? Yeah, it, you how many other like things that, do it, you how many other things do you believe that can't translate to other people? How many other esoteric beliefs do you have? Not many. Not many. Why Actually, would you I have the only one. any? Why would you have any? Do you not care whether or not your beliefs um, are true? In that particular case, I actually don't. Oof. Okay. Oof. I, I don't Isaac. care what you would think, you think about a God. Sorry. Isaac, I, I want to put it kindly because when people yeah, hear words like, have, wait a right. second, Isaac, when people use words like I'm arrogance. I'm aware of what fucking rights I have. <laughs> Isaac, I, I, I want to put this kindly and, and, and make sure you understand that when I'm using words like arrogance, I'm not trying to attack you as an arrogant human. But I want you to really consider okay. this idea from my perspective of the arrogance of the position of in the millions of years that humans have existed and been able to communicate with each other and the billions of people who have died. I am the sole person who has the only I only have a good reason for myself and it is myself. And I accept it on truth that I'm the person in all of that history who has got God correct or the most correct or correct enough for me, that is, that is just something I cannot get my head around. And again, we've already established it. I am capable of tremendous oh. arrogance. Um, if I may. Yeah, you may. That assumes that, that I'm under the impression that I have a particular, uh, God in mind and that the correct belief. I only believe in, in the aspects of God that relate directly to me you do so you do um, have, uh, that's why Isaac, i don't really Isaac, even more you have arrogant. a particular god you do have a particular god you're you think that me not i'm not saying you're accepting a god of christianity or a god anybody ever posited i'm saying you accept okay. isaac's god it is the ultimate position of arrogance And again, I'm trying to not just sound rude I, when I, I say it. I don't have a better I'm word. Sorry. Than that. Just think about it then, Isaac. But for what real. could be more arrogant than thinking that you have a personal God that is yours, that is justified, and the only one that is justified? What could be more arrogant than that? Well, that kind of assumes that, that it's just my God. Isaac, think about. I, I'm not comfortable. With that yeah, something. it's. What becoming, do you mean that it assumes that it's just your God? Like, if you have some unique idea about uh, the existence of the sun, for it, is it just your sun? The sun actually well, exists and we make, share that it. That doesn't follow. This is pretty much what I told yeah, you, buddy. Yes, you don't make sense. That does not follow. Uh, uh, the sun is a, an, a, a physical entity that we are all aware of and can evaluate. Isaac, you basically repeated to me what I just told you was okay. the reason it's arrogant. Millions of years, billions of people, Isaac's God's the right one, and only you know that. Or only you accept it or choose to believe it. That's the point I was making about arrogance. And again, I wish I had a better word. Well, I mean, I'm not trying to say you're arrogant and I'm not, so I'm better than you. I'm talking about the arrogance of your position and why you need to reevaluate. And I believe you're becoming defensively pedantic now. Well, the question is just like, I guess I still don't understand what makes it arrogant. I, I don't hold that my beliefs are special. They're not. Oh, shit. Shit, shit, shit. The call may have just put him back on hold. Uh, I accidentally slept the computer that's managing it. Let me get it back in. Ba -ba 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 -bum. Don't think it, it's arrogant to have the thoughts of my... It, it, huh. Isaac, can you hear me? I'm going to... Isaac, I'm putting you back in the queue if you can hear me because I'm having to fix the fucking stupidest thing I done, which is put this battery pack that's keeping my writing tablet right next to the power button on this computer. So that's going to get moved. And hopefully Isaac yeah. doesn't drop. For clarity, the, the, the aspects of this, so 
to believe that there is a God, but that your justification for believing God doesn't translate to other people is fine. Ready to connect. You may, Sorry. you may have had a private revelation. Now, whether or not uh, that private revelation you is warranted, but but Isaac isn't talking interface. about. Oh, I, Jesus Christ! I I thought it was done. I can't time it out. I was holding the mute down. I'm bringing Isaac back in right now. So Isaac okay. should be back on with us right now. Thanks, Isaac. Sorry. Okay. Who? Oh. I was wondering. All right. So here's the thing: there are billions of people throughout history who have believed in a God of some sort. Do you believe in a God that matches up with any of them? I honestly don't know. Um, cool. So it's possible, well. it's possible that you have a belief in a God that only applies to you. I, uh, Can you please be more specific with that? Thing? Well, or, all right. Question in, number one was, do you share a God with me? anybody else? And you said, I don't know. And so the question number two was, is it then possible that you have a God that only applies to you? I don't know how to be more fucking clear about that. Yeah. Do you share money that applies to everybody no, else? The, the or is it possible that, that the money, I'm still the fucking fly. talking. Okay. Is it possible that nobody else shares your God concept? Yeah. Are you convinced that your God concept is correct? Uh, not the every detail of it, no. Well, any fucking detail of it. At least one detail. I'm what Sorry. one fucking detail Not of your fucking aspect. God is fucking correct? That. He has granted me the ability to handle uh, specific aspects of my life. And, so the uh, one sorry, thing, I'm, I'm just the not one thing, to get into the the, detail, but... then fuck right on off. You dishonest, smug, little, arrogant fuck. The one thing that's true about your God is that he's given you something, but that necessitates other characteristics, which you also believe are true. You have invented a God and you are smugly dismissing everybody else's. I have zero interest in ever having a conversation with you about your God again. Yeah, Isaac, you need to do the same homework about confirmation bias we gave one of the other people and really look into it and think about how you might have applied it to your life. But I will still give you $20 to get me the thought crime guy on. Sure. Just not you. Okay. Thanks, Isaac. I want to take this one first because I saw it come in before the show even started. We have Anna in Eastern Europe, um, who's a theist. And how are you? Is it Anna or Anna? Anna. Hello. Anna. Awesome. Welcome. Can you hear me all right? We hear you just fine. Um, how are you and how can we help? I'm uh, in my deconstruction, but um, it, it's, um, my position is a bit different. I wasn't really raised serious. Um, in my upbringing, religion really didn't feature much. Um, not that I was raised directly atheist, but religion was something that other people did or had. Uh, but I was curious about the topic. I explored a lot. Um, from the quote unquote real religions like uh, Christianity, Islam, and so on, to the more um, <laughs> alternative New Age, pagan, and so on religion. Uh, but I am stuck with a belief I can shake. Uh, and the funny part is that I didn't really realize that I was theist until I started watching your shows. Uh, and first, uh, I remember one of your shows. Um, I, I won't be able to really quote you, but you said that you don't believe in God, but if there was one, 
it is an evil of gods and you are willing to fight against it. And that's when it hit me. I wouldn't be able to say that without being afraid. And it made me realize that on some low level in the back of my mind, I still believed in a deity that can uh, make my life miserable if I'm not a good girl. Does this make any sense to you? Yes, absolutely, yes. So now I'm wondering yeah. how, could, how to shake that uh, voice in the back of my mind. Uh, sure. I'm afraid to believing, I'm afraid to stop obeying these rules, which I can't even really point out. Um, well, the, the question is, which God are you most afraid of? For example, are you more afraid of um, the God of Christianity or the God of Islam? Um, it's a bit of a mess because it picks up a bit from all directions. Um, I believe in an anthropomorphic entity, which is not quite supernatural, but possesses the knowledge, uh, which makes it indistinguishable from a supernatural being. Sure. Um, but if you do, so it has the well, uh, the well, temperament well, of the Old Testament God, uh, but um, I never believed neither in heaven or in hell. I just believe that we're stuck in this plane, uh, and the Old Testament bully can make our lives miserable if we don't obey. Ex except we have no evidence that that being exists. We have no evidence that it's actually doing that. And so the question is. If figure out which God you're afraid of, and then how do you how are, how do you know what you are supposed to do to avoid the wrath of that God? I have absolutely no reason to believe in a God like this. I'm aware of it, but on the emotional level, the fear is still there, and that is so, so what, what I'm asking is: if you assume that the God that you're afraid of exists. How do you know mm -hmm. what you are or are, should or should not do to keep this God happy, to keep it from punishing you? Um, in, I'm sorry, uh, I'm having problems formulating this and, uh, answer. I'm not a native speaker. Um, That's fine. Basically, I have a tendency to try to find him the meaning to the bad things that happen in my life. I'm not really able to write them off as coincidence of the integral part of every life. Yeah. So um, in trying to find a reason, but, but I the, tend to go back to this God. Sure. Here's okay. the thing. Can, sorry. Go ahead, Forrest. Well, I was going to say, I think, I think what, you know, Matt's saying, and what might help to understand is, is like, there's this old quote by Bertrand Russell, uh, that said that based on the sheer number of religions out there and all the different, you know, iterations and interpretations and all the different, uh, uh denominations of, of every religion, even if we could all be sure that one of them was right, every single person should expect damnation just as a matter of probability. Even if you believe in one of them, based on the sheer number of them and all the ones that disagree with each other, you're probably going to hell anyway. So, you know, you, you are surely you've been brought up to be afraid of this God, of this religion that you have. And that's totally reasonable. Lots and lots of people have been. There's no shame in that. But ask yourself, how afraid are you of all of these other ideas out there? How worried are you about Sekhmet, the crocodilian headed God of Egypt? and offending him. <laughs> and also, how can you be sure that even in the religion that you were brought up in, even with the rules that you were taught, how can you be sure that those are the right ones? You can't. And so at the end of the day, you either need yep. to be afraid of everything or decide if this God does exist, then and if, and if it is a good person or a good whatever it is, then it should be able to tolerate being questioned a little bit. And if it can't, then fuck that guy anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you said, when you said you didn't ever believe in heaven or hell, I didn't go down the normal route, which is, you know, Hey, if the goal mm -hmm. is to seek an afterlife, 
you know, which heaven should you seek? Should you seek the best heaven or should you seek to avoid the worst hell? And what if in the process of avoiding the worst hell, you land in the second worst hell or the third worst hell? Or if you're seeking the second or third or fourth best uh, heaven, it turns out that uh, the fifth or first or eighth best heaven is the right one. But because you believed in a different one, you're punished. So the, the, I just skipped all that. And I, uh, the question is, mm-hmm. it, if you assume that the God you're afraid of is real, how do you find out what you are and aren't supposed to do in order to earn that God's uh, favor, in order to avoid the thing that you're fearful of? Uh, and if you don't have a mechanism, if you don't have some way to say, oh, here's how I know what I should and shouldn't do, then whether or not you can stop yourself from believing it, and I don't think that you can, belief isn't a choice. I'm not convinced whether or not you actually believe so much as whether or not you're willing to act as if you believe uh, out of fear. But at the end of the day, whether or not you can, you are convinced that there is a God, if you're not convinced that you have a good course of action, if you're not convinced that you have some way of knowing what you should do, then I would argue that the best way to do, the best thing to do is to live your life as if you didn't believe in a God. That way, if there is a real God and he comes up to you and says, why are you worried about this other God? Why weren't you worshiping me? You can say, I would love to, if you had explained any of this to me or told me what I needed to do. Oh, wow. I really like this argument. I love me. It's almost something a lawyer would say. <laughs> I've, I've been accused of that once or twice. So, in essence, it, it's about um, daring to do something without being short of the consequences. Yeah, a little bit. And, and that's the thing is, is like, like you, you mentioned at the beginning of the call, as I've said a lot of times, even if this God was real, I would still be against it because this idea that if you don't believe in me and you don't worship me and you don't love me, I'm going to hurt you is awful. And if you add on yeah, the mm-hmm. idea that I'm also not going to give you any good reason to believe in me and worship me and love me, but you still better do it, it's 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 evil and it's kind of dumb. And so even if this was real, yeah, it's, it's, it is a very scary proposition. You, you were taught uh, about a boogeyman in your closet that was used to scare children, and then they never told you it wasn't a real thing. And like I said, there's there's no shame in that. It happens to all of the, a lot of people. Um, but just put it in your own words. You know, ask ask yourself if a human being gave you this exact same situation, what would you do with it? Take your God out of the equation, because a lot of times people like to, they, they even if they don't realize they're doing it, they'll give special rules and special permissions to a God. Take that out. If I told you, hey, you better love me. And if you don't, I'll freaking murder you. And and you never, never me before. And you have no idea who I am. Or if you if some random dude on the street said this to you, how would you handle it? Would you go on believing this and, and doing these things? Or would you say, you, I don't need to do any of this. Um, I, I would actually prefer to probably have the police involved really quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. And unfortunately, you can't call the cops on God. So, like, the best thing you can yeah. do is just say, screw it. I'm, I'm, I'm not interested. Okay. Um, thanks to both of you. You have given me something to think about. But um, awesome. I think I will be calling you again. Okay. I hope so. Thank you, really. Thanks, Anna. Thank you, Anna. Super nice lady. I'm ready. Yeah. Speaking of limited on time, we've got Serene, who's in kind of a hurry, who's a theist, uh, pronouns she, her, wants to argue for the existence of a generic God. Let's not waste any time. Go, Serene. Hi. Um, I'm actually agnostic there, which means, like, I kind of, I, I used to, I used to be a Christian, but, um, a lot of the stuff in the Bible I don't really agree with anymore, but I kind of feel like, um, there may be a God out there. I'm not sure. It could be, honestly, I think it could be due to like some sort of sunk cost. Serene, let's just do your argument as quick as possible then. Here's why I think there may be, because otherwise, if you're just saying, I'm agnostic, I don't really know, da, 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 there's no there's no value to this conversation otherwise. So just give us your why you think there might be, and we'll talk about that. 
Um, I think there could be because um, everything, you know, has a start to it. And I think that, like, maybe someone could have made this wor- world. Like, it doesn't make, I don't know, it doesn't fully make sense to me that, like, we came out of nothing, I guess. I don't know, and I think that's just due to some cause or just, like, maybe, like, a logical plot. But I just want to know your, your thoughts on that. You want it or me? I'm happy to Go either way. Uh, Serene, what do you think nothing is? I'm just going to start there and we'll do it very quick. A lot of vacancy. Uh, just the absence of open. anything? Yeah. So you should know that current physics models don't suggest that that is what nothing actually is. And in fact, we don't know how everything started. And by the way, we also don't know if this whole everything had a cause applies to the universe itself. That's a quality of the universe once you're in it. We don't know whether it's a quality of it if you're out of it or if out of it is a thing. And so what people like Matt and I are saying Mm -hmm. is with all of these I don't knows, if we're going to go with, well, it could have been, what couldn't have been? If we're going to go with, I, I, and by the way, you say you're an agnostic theist, which means you've accepted the belief to some degree, but you just recognize that you don't actually know if it's true. So are you agnostic about the possibility that I'm actually a time traveler and maybe I go back to the beginning of the universe and start the universe? Is that, is that possible? Or are you, a, are you an agnostic believer in that proposition? That you may have started the universe? Yeah, me personally. Me. me personally. I'm going to time uh, travel to the beginning of the universe to start it. I mean, I, I don't think time travel is possible. Oh, why? But, but so you're not a believer in a don't know. You have a don't know proposition. You don't have a better reason to suspect that God exists than that time travel doesn't. So why would you call yourself an agnostic theist, but you're not agnostic about the proposition of a time traveling creator? Am I, am I, are you suggesting that I'm like identifying wrong? Like, I don't understand the, nobody. Identifying as an agnostic atheist or something? I think to say that you are an agnostic theist is to say, I'm coming down on the side that I think it probably was a God. Whereas you have two agnostic yeah. atheists here. Well, I, I won't give Matt mm-hmm. my labels, but I think that's what he uses. You have two, you have me, an agnostic atheist here who says, of course, I'm not going to say anything didn't happen, but I have no reason to yeah. believe it was a God. Or even I don't have a reason to, a good reason to say, let's leave God on the list of examples that we should be mm-hmm. testing out. Let's, let's put this thing that is totally unscientific when every other gap that closes that we don't put God into has been closing through the scientific method. Let's go ahead and hold God to fill that gap in case we never get that one. I don't have a good reason to start with God. And it sounds like you think you might. Okay. So like, I have a question. Do you think that it's like cognitively dangerous to think that there could be an existence of God or. Do I think it's cognitively dis? It's a complex question with a complex answer. I think that the utility of God as it's been, as humanity has faced it, has mostly been a net negative for the species. So I could make the argument both ways. Okay, that makes sense. I I think that, I personally think that like uh, uh, living your life kind of based off of the organized religious aspect, I think it could be dangerous because um, I know it could take away um, like individual thought prophecy on the fact, uh, I mean, and the like, but, um, but Serene, why is it guess... important to you to maintain agnostic theism for a God, but not for me time traveling? Cause I think you're trying to say that you're not as attached to it as I think you are. And yet you aren't willing to take the same agnostic time traveling position as you are with agnostic theism. So why is it important to you to be an agnostic theist, but you don't feel the same pull? to be an agnostic Jimmy's the time traveling creator. I mean, because I've been exposed to more things that relate to God than I have been that, that made sense in the past to me that then I have been relate, um, exposed to information about tr- time travel. So would you say um, that I, I, I think I'll tell you what I think it is. And I think that you started to say it and then you sort of changed, uh, I think you are trying to fit in with a religious world and you find it easier 
to tell people you're a theist who's agnostic than you do saying, hey, by the way, no one has a good reason to believe this. Because while you might have been exposed to more people who believe in God, you weren't exposed to more actual positive reasoning for a God than you have been exposed to more actual positive reasoning for me being a time traveler. In fact, I can do that with entirely naturalistic explanations. I don't need to appeal to the supernatural once. Some of them won't pan out. It'll be relied on. It'll be mostly science fiction, but I can make it sound real. Yeah. I, I will address that makes one sense. point where, where you were, Serene, you were basically asking, you know, do you think it's, you know, cognitively harmful um, to, to leave room open for ideas like that? No, it's not cognitively harmful to leave room open for the possibility of something um, in the vaguest sense. But whatever mechanism, mm-hmm. whatever heuristics, whatever data in your head leads you to conclude that X is possible is problematic if it turns out that X is not possible. For example, if pick any God or similar proposition, I, both possibility and impossibility would need to be demonstrated. If I reach the conclusion that it's possible or that it's impossible, absent warrant, then that means I've reached a conclusion, absent warrant. And if another thing comes along where we're trying to evaluate, you know, its possibility or impossibility, um, it's likely that I'm then going to get it wrong or more likely that I'll get it wrong. Does that make sense? Uh, Not really. I'm sorry. Didn't really understand. All right. So let's say I believe that something is possible and it turns out it's actually impossible. Whatever led me to believe that God God is possible, what Mm -hmm. that's, I might use the the same information and that same heuristic to evaluate whether or not fairies are possible or dragons are possible or whether or not Mm -hmm. vaccines cause autism or whatever, you know, whether or not it's safe to cross the street, probably not the latter two, but you, you don't really know if you have if you reach a conclusion and the method by which you reach that conclusion is flawed and that can be used to reach other yeah. conclusions, then danger is possible. Make them. Okay. Serena, I, I cool. think I want to end, end on this. I know you're in a hurry and I want to hit some of these other calls. We've got an hour left and great calls lining up. I, I think I want to end on this. Serene, uh, to the statement, I believe a God exists, would you respond yes or no? I being you, not me. A God, yeah. You believe a God exists? Could exist. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not could exist. Does exist. I believe a God exists. I am convinced exists. some sure. God exists. Yeah. It doesn't to yeah, say no. To say no doesn't Here, let me, mean you let me make close this really the possibility. Easy for you, let me make this really easy for you, yeah. Serene. The number of blades of grass on the planet is definitely either even or odd, right? Yeah. Do you are you convinced that the number of blades of grass on the planet is even? No. Does that mean that you're convinced that it's odd? No, it just means that I don't think it's even. Right. It doesn't have to be you got even. it perfect. So this Jimmy's doing the same thing. Are you convinced? Okay. So a, a God either exists or it doesn't exist. Those are the only options. And Jimmy's saying, are you convinced that a God exists? No. So, and nothing is problematic about that because you're also... Are you convinced that a God doesn't exist? No. See? And the world didn't end with that acknowledgement and nobody came uh, to haul you away or torture you. You're basically saying, I am not yet convinced of either the proposition that a God exists or the proposition that a God doesn't exist. And that's fine. It's when you become convinced that this becomes a problem. Basically, Serene, the reason why I wanted to do that exercise with you is you identified as an agnostic theist. 
And generally, Mm -hmm. an agnostic theist is a person who says, I am convinced that a God exists, but I don't know it for a fact. An agnostic atheist generally says, I don't hold a belief in a God, but I don't know that there isn't a God. And you actually, on that scale, fall more on the agnostic atheist side. So I'd I'd recommend, if these terms matter to you, to me, terms don't. I want terms to describe me. But if somebody says, you're an agnostic atheist, so now let me tell you what you believe, those people can very much go fuck themselves. And so I'm trying to avoid (laughs) doing that to you. I'm trying to not go, Serene, you're an agnostic atheist, so let me tell you what that means for you. I want you to know that usually agnostic atheist is more what you're describing than agnostic theist. And I would suggest you go and look at these terms and see which one describes you better. At the end of the day, though, the terms are never as important as what they are describing. Yep. And as long as you become comfortable with who you are and how, what you believe about things, um, it's all good. You, nobody has to label themselves. Labels often get in the way. I, I, I've spent 18 plus years and on doing call-in shows, and I've argued with both theists and atheists about whether or not the label that I choose for myself actually fits. And yeah. at the end of the day, um, I, I think it does. And I hope that you find... I hope that you either find the label that fits with you or you decide, I don't need a fucking label. I am, I'm not telling people how to live. I'm not, I'm not convinced of what I believe. I'm open to learning things. I'll, I'll be convinced of anything provided there's enough evidence for it. I'm going to keep an open mind, but not so open that my brains fall out, that kind of thing. Uh, you'll be fine. I agree. Uh, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. And, uh, thank you for your clarification and uh, challenging my, uh, I thought probably. Thank you, Serene. And by the way, I'm sorry if at the beginning of the call I was too short and curt right off the bat. I don't think I was over no. Haley. I should have taken a breath. Uh, but thank you, Serene. <laughs> no, it's it's okay. No, I, I understand. Bye. Thank have you. Good day. Bye. Bye. We've got Clark <laughs> in California. Uh, Clark from California, you are on the line. Hey, how are you guys doing? Tremendous. How are you, Clark? Doing amazing, doing amazing. Are you yeah, going to give us um, the forest so line, never had a bad day? You sound happy. Yeah, I'm always happy. You Good. know what I mean? Good. So um, I wanted to argue for the existence of God. Uh, namely, it's going to be an argument for uh, panentheism. The idea being that all of reality comes in like different degrees of reality. It's sort of like a Hegelian perspective. And the absolute idea or like the complete... Uh, process of reality coming to realize itself as a process the absolute idea in that way is god so the argument is going to be for that to, just to preface and if, if you want i can give the argument you wait wanna, but you said panentheism correct yeah yeah which is the belief that the universe is the physical body of god uh wait the, is the, the universe is the physical body of god uh, but that her, his or her spirit is bigger than the universe alone and transcends it. I got yeah, one question well, about I, that. It's more of like an idealist. Go ahead. Go ahead. How did we go through all of these pagan gods first, where they were just people with you know special powers walking around? Why, why did it take us so long to figure out this other version of God? And why do we still call it a god since it's a completely different idea? Um, I'm not entirely sure. All I know is, you know, my perspective is pretty coherent. So, so. you believe, for, for the record, this God of yours is an individual willed being that we're a part of. Is that correct? An individual? Well, it gets into some notions of identity I, I might I might not grant. So, I mean, it, it get, kind of gets in the weeds. I mean, I'm, really, I'm inclined to really grant whatever concept you have of a of, of panentheistic God. I mean, um, my concept is the episode of Futurama where Bender has a civilization grow on his stomach and ass, but okay. and he is the god of that yeah. civilization. Is that a is that somewhat in or uh, how far are we from panentheism with that? I think I think we're we're okay with that. And if you want, I can get to the argument. Yeah, let's get the argument for sure. So it, it uh, basically the first premise is that all sublations are dialectically necessary. Um, all thoughts sublate necessarily in virtue of negation. 
if all thoughts ablate, then all thoughts have a proper function of absolute negation. But if all thoughts have a proper function of absolute negation, then there must be a necessary set of properties that supervene on the proper function of all thought. Therefore, there's a set of properties that supervenes on all thought, being that thoughts are constituted by sets of truth condition. But if there's a set of properties that supervenes on all thought, then there must be a relation to account for how this supervenience relation creates a dependency between thought and the set of non-inferential properties. The relation that can constitute this supervenience relation must itself be modally necessary. How many more of these like are there? How, how, how many more premises? We're almost are there. there. Yeah, okay. We're almost there. The relation that can account for this can be modally necessary if and only if it is sui generis, which means to say it has a unique nature. The unique nature is non-inferentially justified by a set of unique identifiers, identifying the set of all and only true propositions. The modally necessary relation is a modally necessary principle, namely God, in virtue of it being sui generis. And this is where we defer to like methodology. And I'm going to imply, uh, I'm going to use like phenomenological reduction. Methodology. So in your final premise, so we do it? establish a new definition of God, right? No, the uh, implication of the, well, the, the conclusion is just that there's a modally necessary principle, which would be God. Uh, the definition Why would it be God? gets tricky. Well, because the, it, it's going to be of a unique um, set of properties, a unique set of, uh, a set of unique identifiers. So the final premise establishes a new definition of God, right? Which is what I already said, and then you just verify. Well, the definition entails a notion of truth that we kind of need to hash out with regards to um, the premise that included like the truth condition. Clark, here's what I'm going to do for you. Thought. Here's what I'm going right, to do right. for you. I'm going to give you my email. It's dearmratheist at gmail.com, and you're going to send me all the premises in order. We're going to be launching debates on this channel in the coming months. Uh, and I'm going to send out your premises and say, we've got a guy. And these are his premises, and he's ready to defend this in debate debate mode. Because literally, we'd have to. You've 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 called into a call in show, and I'm not I'm not blasting you for this. I I I, I hope that we follow this process with a list of one things that almost nobody considers. Two sounds like the type of smelling your own fart style of logic and 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 reasoning that you just hear out of Jordan Peterson. Like I thought I thought I was in a Jordan Peterson fever dream for a moment. Uh, and, and so here's the thing: maybe you have a good thing, maybe you don't. We'd have to go premise by premise. Each one is going to take a large amount of time. At the end, you have to find a new God. So first, we'd actually probably have to go to the end and agree that we would all call the conclusion this comes to a God or not. And I doubt we would get even past that. So what I'd rather do is say my email is dearmratheist at gmail.com. If you are willing to defend it in a formal debate, I will shop your premises around to people and say, hey, is, is this the type of thing that interests you? Do you want to do this type of philosophical debate? And we will see if we can set up a formal thing. Now, I have to warn you, there is a chance no one will care. Uh, uh, and I don't mean that in a mean or condescending way, but I both Aaron and I hate these types of debates, hate these types. We just fall asleep. And it's this sort of thing of like, in the last several thousand years, mankind has been convinced there was a God, but apparently... The accessibility to that answer didn't come up until a word poem by Clark in 2023. Uh, uh, it, it's it's it is the most. I I don't want to be shitty. I, I don't want to say more because I feel like I'm just gonna say I probably already sounded a bit shitty to you, and I don't want to. That's not my intent. Are you good with me shopping around to see if anybody wants to take your panentheist position into a formal debate? Because there's no way we can do this premise by premise and get out of here before midnight tonight. That that sounds that sounds great to me. Now the only question I have for you is if we can just extend this conversation a little bit longer and maybe switch it up and, and I argue for God from objective morality. Maybe some some you know type of oh well, no, you don't want to go there. All understand. You can if you want. You I really do. don't want to go there. All right, go. Yeah. He says he does. Yeah. So my question my question to either of you is just be, be do you think that moral statements are propositional? Probably. Okay, well, it's either the case that they are propositional or not. Sure. I don't think that my opinion has any bearing on, on whether, whether a God exists. That's true, too. Well, I think it's important to demonstrate the incoherency uh, of of your position if you say that they're non-propositional. Uh, oh, oh, that I haven't made a position? 
That's the incoherency. No, I had to. I'm, I'm saying, yeah. If you did, if you did, which that. which thing are you That's wanting us to answer you. so you can engage it? If moral statements are propositional, right? Which answer are you expecting from us to go to the next part of your argument? Is it yes or no? Well, honestly, I'm not expecting a either or. I mean, I'm I'm okay with working with either. Well, I don't know. You, you seem to want to disprove my position. Right. And that's your goal before you even know what my position is, because I haven't told you. But I'm willing. But that's I'm your willing. goal is to disprove my position with what yeah. you call a God that no one else calls a God. And if we were to go back a thousand years or so and all these other people worshiping gods, they have very different ideas of gods with that than you do. They would call you an atheist. They'd put you in the same category as me because you don't worship any of their gods. You don't even believe in a thing that they would recognize as a god. What you're talking about is some philosophical navel gazing. It's not anything anybody anywhere ever have recognized as a deity. But I, I want to hear the next be, step. That's going to be a huge cultural and historic problem too, not just a morality problem. Morality has fuck all to do with whether there's a god or not. Then you have to get into a specific theology to where you think it's relevant, and it still won't be. You surprise answer. Hey Clark, let me ask you this, and then I'm going to let, and then I'm going to, I'm going to give you whatever answer you want to be able to go on to the next one. I'll let you give me my, what my position is, and and we'll, we'll just assume you're right about it, since you did, you did allude to it. But uh, how accessible is the proof of God in your world view? In, in in your in the argument that you're talking about, I just for demonstration purposes, I'm not making an argument. I'm not proving any point. How the way you believe God is evident? How recently? Could a normal person have accessed this argument? Well, I mean, I, I think it's pretty accessible. There are, there is a barrier. Just answer my question. How recently? These, uh, yeah. How? How? Well, was it? Was it how Sorry. recently was your argument accessible? Because to me, it sounds like it is reliant on philosophical uh, uh, arguments made really within the last one to two hundred years. Is that uh, is that accurate? Yeah. Um, well, I don't think it, it's picking from, from a bunch of different areas of inquiry, a bunch of different sort of like philosophy. So it's not, well, then let I me don't think there's anything like, I, that I can think of. You Go are ahead. pedantic as fuck, Clark. There is an answer yeah. to the question. Even if you say it comes from, it comes from multiple. So you go with the most recent one that is, that it needs the one that it, it the, the argument still hinged upon. And clearly that's, I think again, within the last one to 200 years. And you are avoiding answering any question, but then getting mad when we won't do your script. I, I shouldn't say mad. You've been calm, but seeming frustrated when we won't do your script. So stop being pedantic. Let's talk as regular people well, talking I'm to each so other. Sorry, but and stop quick. Please go ahead. But, You're but so very sorry. Quick, quickly. You say the, very quick. When you say the most recent one, the, the issue is that you're presuming a notion of time that I'm just not inclined to okay, grant. I'm done. So I'm done. You, you are the talk. most pretentious caller we've ever had. Don't worry about sending the email. You are I have not a question. To, I already hung up. It, it, it's, I, I'm just, I, I, sorry. I what was your question? Yeah. What his wrong assumption about how this was related to morality, because in one way or another, it's going to come back to the conventional concept of God, the one who is an unrighteous judge. Yeah. The one who judges for whether you adhere to whatever the subjective commands of the clergy is. And then we get back right back into a regular concept of God. And then he's up on the rails. He's hanging on the barbed wire at that point. All of his philosophical mumble jumble just went right out the window. I want to know if Clark prefers his farts fresh or aged as he's sniffing his own farts, because that was the most pretentious. I won't give a direct answer. When do you ask about time relative to civilization, what we're all experiencing together? Oh, I don't accept your concept of time. I'm surprised your voice wasn't three octaves higher and sounded like Kermit the fucking frog because some it sounded like a Jordan Peterson fanboy was here to just go like, well, and the lobster hierarchy of the substrate of the atomical and that and but let's not for the Bible is truer than truth. That's that was the shit I was getting. And I just I don't have time to oh, waste I on it. What a waste. I was hoping that we would get over to something like the Bible because then it would have been mo much more fun. Because yeah. again, all of all of his pretense thrown out. It would have all just been wadded up in the basket because it would have been back into the regular playing field. Mike in Washington, pronouns are he, him. Welcome, Mike. How can we help? Hey, I have great um, So I, I would say uh, I'm probably in the midst of a and they'll keep that out. Um, 
but I, I read an article that my dad had around about God's promises and, and climate change lies. Um, and I, I'm just curious as to know what ways we can kind of combat the thought that climate change isn't happening because in Genesis, God says, you know, the, the seasons and the weather will always be the same. And, uh, and the <laughs> so we can that do that. Actually, we can do that for, we can do that in the same way that we can say that Genesis got the order of events in creation wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you, do you like ask, ask this, this parent of yours, do you believe that plants existed before the sun did? And if so, how? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the whole thing. Is it like, if, if they're going to fall back on, well, the Bible said this, therefore, blah, blah, blah. I don't think it makes any sense to single out climate change as opposed to anything else. I can sit here and go over the different evidences for climate change for you. If you like, I'd be happy to go few, through a few of them. But it doesn't change shit if you're starting from the premise of the earth is 6,000 years old and this book says so, therefore it's real. Yeah. I would also, yeah, as one I, last I, little I, thing on this, uh, there's a resource I would recommend, and that is go to talkorigins.org. And there's the index to creationist claims. And now everything that they say, pretty much, um, in if, uh, from a creationist perspective is addressed everything in, in all kinds of different ca- categories. They discuss it from philosophy and theology, uh, from biology, abiogenesis, genetics, molecular biology, physiology, and anatomy. It's here just for funsies. I'll pick out a couple of things. Um, evolution is racist. That's CA005. You click on that and it will show you what the actual science is behind it. Uh, creationism and evolution are the only two models. It'll answer that. Um, I'm sure there's one in here on the order of events in Genesis. Um, Check yeah, Genesis one got the order of events, right. And that day age creationism goes through and shows that the creation account in Genesis lists 10 events in the order from a beginning, a primitive earth and darkness, light an expansive atmosphere, large areas of dry land, land plants, sun, moon, and stars, sea monsters and flying creatures, wild and tame beasts, and then man. The odds of getting that order correct are, uh, by chance are 1 in 3,628,800. But the real order is a beginning, then light, then sun and stars, then earth, moon, and atmosphere, then dry land, sea creatures, some land plants, land creatures, flying creatures, then mammals, and then the first birds, the fruiting plants, et cetera. And, so, and it gives references in there. It's like a little uh, miniature Wikipedia for responding to creationist claims. I keep it up whenever I'm on the show because I can't possibly keep all of this memorized. You, if you can't find it, just Google index to creationist claims and you will find it at talk origins. All right. If you're into boom, there's also this one. This is from, uh, Mark Isaac. I think this is from a university It's from the university of California and it's called the counter creationism handbook. And it's, it's a very, it's the same thing, but it's not as expansive as a website would be, but it's a lot of fun because like, this is another one. It's just, this was published in, uh, 2007 and like, literally you can go through this and pull like any half the time when I'm on this show or, or any of these shows, something somebody says is in great detail in here with a bunch of scientific citations on like, here's why this is bullshit. <laughs> it's, it's yep. amazing how unimaginative they are. <laughs> yeah. I, as I was about to say, I, I think what really shocked me is because I knew he'd been reading like bogus science and the, the same article references terrible, terrible science. But it, it tried to make the point that climate change activism and belief in it is, is literally evil because humans are supposed to flourish and have dominion over the earth. And I, I, uh-huh. I'd never considered that that might be going on in, you know, my dad's head, whereas I'm learning these ideas and, and making these changes and my belief, uh, I didn't even know how to approach it, but the research yeah. sound good. Yeah. And that's the thing is that it's, it's yet another case of, you know, you know science versus religion. It's just like with, with creationism. Um, when people say that, you know, well, evolution isn't true. Well, fuck dude. I don't know what to tell you. Here's all this evidence. 
And with climate change, like we can look at ice cores, we can look at four rams, we can we can look at, at dendrochronology, we can look at a million different things and show that this is very real and very scary. It is the greatest existential threat to human life currently facing us. We need to take care of it while we still have the choice to do so. Um, but first we have to agree on whether or not evidence is important and then what evidence is and then which evidence actually matters and then what the evidence says. And that is a long uphill battle. And, and in the case of, you know, what your dad's saying is, is, oh, well, it was put here for man to use. And so it's not going to, this is stuff that came from, you know, I, I, mean, I remember hearing Rush Limbaugh talking about it on the air, uh, you know, in the, in the nineties. Um, that's an assertion about what we're here for that he can't demonstrate. My favorite, I just like to, or one of my favorite entries on the entire index to creationist claims is Kent Hovind made a claim about the universe is not billions of years old. And in it, he said, the Sahara Desert is expanding at such a rate that it can only be a few thousand years old, indicating a young Earth. And the response here is, yes, the Sahara Desert is only a few thousand years old. What does that have to do with the age of the Earth? I mean, you might as well be talking about, you know, uh, Pangaea and continental drift and all this other stuff. Yet yeah, deserts come and go. The climate of various ages changes. Maybe the Saharan desert's fairly young, but that doesn't tell you anything about how the age of the Earth is any more than, um, you know, the the Great Pyramid of Giza is only, you know, <laughs> a few thousand years old. If the Earth was really billions of years old, there would be pyramids everywhere, Matt. Yeah. I get it. I went to a man-made thing, which is a bad analogy, but anyway. no, it's, it, it is like, that's the thing is like, you know, I, I've heard similar arguments and like these people just need to learn what a fucking biome is and like how they're classified. It's like, it's not like the desert's just going to pop up in the Amazon, like a legion. Like, it's crazy. Uh, it's nuts. But yeah, no, it's, 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 uh, it's difficult to have to have these conversations when you first have to understand whether or not the conversation matters and when what evidence there is and what evidence there is and all this stuff so if your parent is just stuck on this idea that the bible is right and that god gives dominion over earth the first thing i would ask is if someone that really is that you should look up to if this great important thing gave you a present why would you treat that present like shit if he gave us dominion over the earth and you really oh. believe that we should take care of this gift that he gave us and make sure that we are treating it effectively so that we can continue to live here. Because the science that we are hurting the planet and destroying the climate is unavoidable. So because God gave us this earth, we should make sure that we're taking good care of it, taking good care of this gift that God gave us, and 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 making it beautiful for all the future generations to see this beautiful planet and then get to go to heaven. I would absolutely play into that shit. And then we can get to deconstruction later. But first, right now, holy crap, we need, like, energy reform and, and, and effective climate action. Um, that would be great. Take a lot less time to fix that and hopefully than religion. <laughs> is that, does that help Mike or you got another oh, question? Like that. You know, no, that, that helps. And, uh, I like that idea a lot or it's just founded on and, and I think I'll take a look at the research. So I thank you guys for your time. Thanks so much. No Go to, uh, climate.nasa.gov as well. If you want some really easy educational resources. Mark in New York City, you are on the line. Hey, Mark. Hey. What's up, man? Not much, not much. Uh, this is Baked Alaska. Smooth. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Smooth indeed. Look, I'm one of the few people I, I gather that uh, look good with the, the long, the short, and the, uh, and the no hair. That's a nice thing to say. Yesterday, I told my best friend in the whole world that I think I look a bit like a testicle with a taint curtain, but I appreciate what you said nonetheless. <laughs> No, no, you don't. You look good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so um, a couple points uh, I wanted to mention. Um, just picking up on something you guys take to the last caller. Uh, uh, Matt, I think you, you, the way you define um, agnosticism, uh, I, I don't agree with. And my primary issue with it is... It seems like Mark, real defining... quick, real quick, because I just want to make sure that you heard the right term, because the way you just said it makes me think you not did not. Did you think we were engaging with agnosticism or agnosticism? Uh, with the A. A. We were engaging with ig, I-G, Gnosticism. Ignosticism. Uh. I-G. Yes. Okay. What does that even mean? 
I explained what it meant <laughs> when we were on the call there about it. Let's go on to the other stuff. Uh, we'll go. We'll go right. I'll, I'll tell you quickly, Mark, because I understand wanting to know. Agnosticism, my understanding, is basically the position that the concept of God has no coherent or unambiguous definition, and therefore uh, it's it's unworth engaging with the position. Uh, it, it, there's no oh, there's okay. no value in it. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, go ahead All and right. let's no, no, no. let's skip that and pose but, your but, stuff. But, but my criticism still stands down, and that 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 that's exactly what I was going to say. That you. Matt, the way you see to define the word, is, it's sort of an autobiographical assessment as to whether you personally believe in God or not. If you, you sort of, if you consider the issue and you don't find the evidence sufficient, then you're an atheist. And to me, that, that's not really what the term means. Or it, it, it then you're mean, wrong. The term you then just learned. Then you're wrong. Then you're wrong. Um, because theism is the position of accepting the proposition that some God exists, and atheism is the position of rejecting the proposition that some God exists. I, I think they're making truth claims about, if they're objective truth claims about the reality. No, stop. And the theistic thing, yes, so God the, exists. It, theism, stop. Theism is, yes, they're making truth claims. I, wow, please listen. Because you're about to frustrate the fuck out of me and we're not going to get to your actual issue. But please listen. Theism is the acceptance of the proposition, some God exists. That proposition, like every proposition, is a truth claim. Theism is in the position of accepting that the proposition, some God exists, is in fact true. Atheism is the position of not accepting that proposition is true. Theism and atheism are about belief states. That's why it's an ism. And the proposition is what you're either accepting or not accepting. That's how we're using it. Okay. Well, I, I, I still think there's, there's, there's an issue as to whether you subjectively think something Then take it up with every true. philosopher in the history of the fucking world who's talked about this. I'm sorry that this seems to be new for you, but I've been doing this for 20 years with the same usage for theism and atheism. You can go look up a dictionary or a philosophical uh, uh, textbook about theism and get it over and over and over again. I, th that it's not, that, that it doesn't sit well with you doesn't mean the rest of us are going to throw it out the window. No, of course not. And I've watched plenty of debates where they debate this particular issue, like Hitchin had a few many debates with Hitch, where he basically like, it's just in lack of belief. It's not an experiment. Mark, just move on. I'm not okay. Mark, you know, okay. you know, I'm, I'm now on. completely I'm fucking bored. You have I skipped just... past the thing that you wanted to talk about, the yeah. conversation that I was interested in talking about, to spend time on fucking labels. I am so done with wasting time on labels. I do not believe that a God exists. Do you, Mark, believe that a God does exist? Yeah. Yes, I do. Correct. Cool. Um, then I tell know. me what you believe and why, because that's all I give a shit about. All right. I think God is the best explanation for why anything exists. So the continuous okay. argument, I think, is a very strong argument. So in a minute, you'll have to define what God exists. But the problem is, is that we don't need an explanation for why anything exists. Um, because first you'd need to demonstrate that it's possible for nothing to exist. I said God is the best explanation. Well, wow. By wow. The way, you didn't listen to me at all. Yeah. It is possible for nothing to exist. Prove it. Prove it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, prove that it's possible for nothing to exist because I have no evidence that nothing has ever existed. I think the fact that the instant that you say nothing exists makes nothing something. In fact, defining it that way is something. There's never been any demonstration in the history of the world that it is even possible for there to be nothing. So prove it. Get yourself a Nobel Prize. Okay. Well, if you were to survey cosmologists on whether the universe is necessary or contingent, they would almost 
the vast majority you say that it's contingent. It no, sir. To the di- no, sir. A- and, and that is irrelevant to the discussion that we're having. First of all, we don't have a way to survey cosmologists right here. But as someone who has cosmologists for friends and who has surveyed and interacted with them, some of them are going to reject your position. But what I said was demonstrate that it's possible for nothing to exist. And that's not within the realm of cosmology or what cosmologists think about the state of the universe. Demonstrate that it's possible for nothing to exist. Well, I think it's a metaphysical the concept of nothing is a metaphysical concept, right? And so it's the absence of everything. And so what, what it is, it, what it is, isn't the issue. Demonstrate your assertion that it's possible for nothing to exist. Well, okay, I, I, this is how I would explain it. In the standard model of physics, you have the Big Bang cosmology. Everything about Everything Thanks. about physics, everything about physics requires something. At no point was there a nothing. There's no, inter- there's no action or interaction that anyone or anyone could demonstrate that they could ever take on nothing or that is possible to take on nothing. And none of that has anything to do with whether or not it's possible for nothing to exist. How would you begin to demonstrate, Mark, since you are convinced that it's possible for nothing to exist, how would you prove it? I would, well... I mean, I would say that it's negation, that I'm justified in thinking that it's possible since it's negation has you been demonstrating. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Possibility must be demonstrated. It is not the case that something is possible merely because it hasn't been shown to be impossible. That is a fallacy. And, and it's certainly the possibility of its possibility in there. Is not <laughs> no, oh, no, no, no. Now you're multiplying I, possibilities. Um, just because something hasn't been shown to be possible doesn't mean that it's impossible. And just because something hasn't been shown to be impossible doesn't mean that it's possible. Possibility must be demonstrated. Impossibility must be also be demonstrated. Right. If you think it's possible it's for true. nothing to exist, demonstrate it. This actually brings me up to another point I wanted to mention by 10. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. I've asked you a question. You have asserted a position. I'm asking you to defend that position. You do not get to move on to another point you wanted to bring up. You defend this position or concede the point, period. Those are the only options. All right. Well, it was a tangential point, but the way I would defend it is that the possibility of nothing, there's no logical rule that I'm aware of that said nothing could not exist. No, sir. So, I just, no, sir. I just finished explaining this to you that something isn't possible merely because it hasn't been shown to be impossible. This is exactly, exactly the point that you're trying to make that, the, the pos- that nothing is possible because you haven't seen a demonstration that it's impossible. I've already pointed out. That is not how this works. Do you have any way to demonstrate your assertion? It's okay. If you allow me to complete this thought. In I tell you what, one, tell you what, I will, I, when, when I stop talking and turn it over to you to get you to, to do that, that is me allowing you to complete that thought. If you want to get shitty and do, if you'll allow me to complete this thought, I've asked you multiple times. You're the one who made a claim. Prove it. No, I only said that because I, I, so I envisioned you jumping in to interrupt me, but maybe you, you weren't going to five miles. Ask what you a for? question. You made a claim. Prove it or stop wasting my time. Okay. okay. In quantum, in quantum physics, or in, right, in our understanding of the universe, it, some, there, it, it, you cannot assign it. There is always going to be some possibility that something that may occur, you may have to wait longer than the length of the universe for it to occur. But under quantum physics, if you can assign a probability to some event occurring, that event is possible. So I take issue with your definition that proving that something isn't impossible doesn't mean it is possible. What probability can you assign to nothing existing? Hey, Mark, 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 what probability, what probability, Mark, what probability can you assign to nothing existing? 
You, you can't feel like a Bayesian. So thank you. you. Even when I gave you time to, to delve off into quantum, quantum physics, which I guarantee you, you don't have an understanding of, even mm -hmm. when you defined what it was, you cannot meet your own definition to attempt to prove the thing that you wanted. The truth is you, like many other people, have decided that you have an argument and you're so cocksure that nothing is possible that it must then be required that there be some explanation for why there's something rather than nothing. The explanation for why there's something rather than nothing might be because nothing isn't possible. Something must necessarily exist. That is something that you don't have a way to overcome, that philosophers don't have a way to overcome. And you can point to quantum mechanics and you can point to cosmologists all you want, but those things address the universe that we exist within and therefore can't apply to out and things outside of the universe, which is where you'd like to go. And outside of the universe and outside of space and time may actually be nonsensical. So even when we gave you an opportunity, you delved off into gobbledygook. And then when Jimmy asked you to use your own gobbledygook to prove your point, your immediate response was you can't. So would you like to retract now your point that nothing is possible so that we can get on to the rest of this? Or are, do you have some other way to demonstrate the thing that nobody's been able to demonstrate? I don't think you could demonstrate a universal negation, right? Congrats. So I, can see the, I can see this point that it is possible that nothing is an impossibility and therefore something absolutely existed. I do see that as a possibility. I'm not denying that. Mark, you understand too that, because wow. I, you know what I'm worried is that you're going to represent what happened today is Matt thinks that nothing is impossible. You do understand that this is also an agnostic position. Oh. Matt no. isn't saying that nothing is impossible either. You no, get no. that, right? Okay, I, I just want to make sure. I, it, I, yeah. No, 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 I agree. I agree. I'm just saying, like, the, the, the burden which came up to me that to, to establish that it was impossible for nothing to Yes, because it no, was your claim no, was sir, no, sir, no, sir. The burden wasn't put onto you. You adopted that burden right. when you made the assertion, which you have now retracted. So we've wasted the last 13 minutes. I didn't think we talked anything. Okay, then goodbye. Uh oh. <laughs> You're Mark, a liar, sir. It never goes well. You did. You did just retract it 30 seconds ago. When, think, when you got to the point where you said that it, you, you would have to say that you couldn't demonstrate impossibility or the, I, or the possibility of nothing. Yeah, I think I think he'll say that it wasn't an acknowledgement or that he wasn't retracting even when he was saying that he sees the point. But if he wasn't retracting, then he didn't see the point. Um, yeah, what, what, what's even worse here is that we spent 13 minutes yeah. trying to get to what could have been a useful discussion because he believes in God because he thinks God is the best explanation for why there's something rather than nothing. But he can't get past this this problem, and nobody else can either as far as I've been able to see, can't get past this problem that how do you know that something isn't necessary? Now, oh, well, most of cosmologists would say the universe is contingent. Our current presentation of the universe may or may not be contingent. I have argued against contingency, but that is irrelevant as to whether or not something. Right. Because you don't have any ability to explore outside of our universe. You don't know if outside of our universe there is more, some things, yeah. or not. You are stuck forever as far as we can tell, from exploring outside the universe. And since you don't have a time machine and time, may not, time travel may not be possible, you have no way to go back before Big Bang cosmology's beginning, um, which may or may not be correct. And it may be nonsensical to talk about before time began, um, because you, you have the, the external view of time or the internal view of time, and you have to make a distinction between those two. But the real issue that he was calling in about that God is the best explanation for why there's something. We didn't even get to the point where we could define God. Right. But, but colloquially, the classical version of God, the God that is tied to a number of different theistic things in its, in its bare minimal state, isn't an explanation for anything. We, we explain things in terms of other things we understand. We don't explain things by appealing to a mystery. You don't get to say, Here's a black box that can do this. Yeah. And now I've explained it. Uh, using God to try to explain the origin of the universe is already attempting to solve a mystery with a bigger mystery. It's but a cop out. To, yeah. But to suggest that God is an explanation for why something exists already presumes that we need an explanation for why something exists. 
And I'm not convinced that any explanation is needed for why something exists, because the alternative is that nothing exists for which there is no explanation. Andy in California pronouns he him is a theist who's a former atheist and thinks he has a definition of God that's accurate. So welcome, Andy. Uh, why don't you go ahead and give Eve your definition? Hey, wow. I can't believe I'm on. Um, I don't know if I have, I have one that works for me. And I, and as a former atheist, I think different people will see me still as an atheist. I'll talk to some Christians. They'll still put me in that category. Mm -hmm. But I think that existence, I think, and the way I have come to understand it, does deserve that label. And I, and it really, it is for both of you guys. I just Wait, thought like, this would be an interesting conversation. He's, Andy is saying that I'm existence sorry. deserves the label God. So existing is God? That's what you're saying? No, um, existence. Like just existence, just um, existence in general. Like why? To say like, why? yeah, why? Like, well, okay. The, the well, traditional definitions of God are that it is an intelligent sure. agent. Do you think existence is an intelligent agent? Um, I think that the fact that we're intelligent and we are like a part of it, I, then I think yes, it does Andy? act intelligibly. Yes. Andy, am, am I existence? Mm -hmm. You are, yeah. I, I am existence. Or you're a part of it. Like you are uh, existence. I'm a part of it, so but you, I am not are. existence, yeah. right? Um, maybe if we're making that division of existence as all it, of existence, is this business card, part of it. Andy, Andy, is this business card part of existence? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I I, I'm part, part of, of existence it, yeah. and this business part card is part of existence. Does this business card, is it a yeah. thinking agent? No, it isn't thinking Cool. No, so, not. so parts of existence are thinking agents and parts of existence are not. I am, uh, I am a person. Yeah, suppose. My mm. fingernails, are they made of the same stuff as my skin? Um, I think maybe on some level it is, but on some yeah, other I level, think you need to go take a biology stuff? course, but I'll just stop. Okay. I, I'm well, sure Eve has. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I want to know what sure. what is the value in, like, wh what is it that makes it God? I, I, st I still don't feel like you've defined right. what God is. I don't, I, it seems like you're just replacing right. the word existence for God. And I'm curious as to why. What's the point? Um, I think the point is just to have, because I think like in, in the conversation, like we're always talking past each other because we don't define God. And I think that's really what I'm yeah. intending with the call and with the way I try to frame it to the um, call uh, guy, the guy who talked to me before here. So you're but, saying we so should all that's use really the what definition I was of God to, that huh? you're presenting here, which is existence. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm proposing it. I'm, I'm proposing it to you guys. Why? And then I wanted Why to- Why would that be valuable? I don't think theists mm -hmm. or atheists are going to, most of them are going to agree with you on that definition. It seems, sure. it really feels like you're just replacing the word. You're just changing the definition of the word existence and saying God so that we have something to argue about. Okay. Well, not argue about, hopefully to come to like Concord about, like to come to like an so accord about. you just about, want like, atheists to say like, like there's a God there, because uh -huh. existence is a thing. Yeah, like I, I was just trying to say, like, do, do you think, I think that we Christians? Are, like, for example, do you think that Christians are going to give up their personal God and adopt your new existence definition? I think that if um, it's like, and I'll and I'll go to like you know Jesus talking to the Jews. Like, this that's is like kind a of yes like, or no question, but I'll get a lecture anyway. Um, I think, and no, I'm sorry, I I wasn't trying to do that. I was saying like just that image when she did convince the Jews or at least some people. So I think that's how it would work. Like if you were to have like a higher truth about it, then some people would come to it. Well, what is a higher truth? Some people wouldn't. And, and how is it a mm -hmm. higher truth to redefine existence as God? And how is that going to get, I, you know, I was what's, a Christian. What's the value in that? 
for a massively long time. And mm-hmm. Jesus loved me. That was a personal mm-hmm. relationship with the thinking, feeling, all-knowing, all-wise creator of the universe. There's not a chance in fucking hell that I would ever say, you know what? I'm going to denounce my savior and just say that God is existence. Right. Well, I think, um, like, I'm just trying to like, I think that if God is real, then there should be some way to talk to non-believers where they will, um, resonate with it. So I'm not saying God, that's just the highest. You shouldn't have to get us to resonate with with something. You should either have evidence of a God or not. We shouldn't resonate with like a story or a narrative that you give us. Either you should have evidence of this God claim, which Christians have a very different God claim than what you're proposing. So exactly. We're not going to find God there. Andy, you literally just said, I think if God is real, there should be a way to. What makes you think that God is real? Where's the demonstration that God is real? Your your position is if there's if God's real, we should have some way to discuss it. Cool. Now demonstrate that it that there is a God that's real. Okay, I I and um uh, You're putting guess, the horse before the cart. That, <laughs> sure. I mean, it is really hard to get to this. Like, how do you cross that like bridge? And not I, my not fucking problem. To, like, I'm not the one that's believing that no, there's a God. Sure. If if you're sitting here I'm not, okay. saying you're convinced there's a God, don't complain to me about how hard it is to prove it. I'm not the one that's believing something that's hard to prove. Right. I'm not complaining to you. I'm sorry. Like, I was just... um. So maybe one way that I could put it, you can disagree with it. I'll just put it out there and then we'll give it a bat. I don't want to waste your time here. I think that if we are like sentient beings that came out of existence, then the whole of it, because it is greater than us, should have qualities that are to us or better. And that's why I would say that then God, and you could call just existence God because it's like almost like a person in that sense. If it has people, what makes the universe greater? The whole of the what? What? No. What makes the whole of existence greater than us? Greater in what way? Just the fact that it's reduced us. Why does that That, make something greater? That's like it. So, because Um, chemistry works, that makes because chemistry and physics works. You you think that makes it greater than us? Greater what way? I mean, just the fact that we it, it, it brought us into it, into existence. Like no, 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 no. Like you don't get to give, body. You don't uh-huh. give. You don't get to give it motivation. Did the universe intend to bring us into existence? Did the universe take any conscious action to bring us into existence? Um, I guess I don't know. I don't know. Sure. So then, how can like, you credit think, it? Okay. You know, if, 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 um, my cat brings poop into existence, sure. does that mean the cat did that knowingly, intentionally? I mean, in the sense, I think you could say it did. No, it didn't. It it's did an it involuntary could... part of biology. This is, it didn't knowingly do any of that. You put food in, the system processes it, poop comes out. No agent-like thought required. You might decide right. when you're like going to release like... your bowels, and if you're lucky. Sure. Yeah, like, well, I, I understand, like we were saying, um, maybe I'll go back to the drawing board on this. Okay. But I think, like, no, we have, we have cells, and our cells have, like, behaviors that are sort of, like, we can, like, study it and be like, wow, like, that has, like, a certain, like, it seems intelligent, even though like it's reduced to a really basic thing. Dude, it, I like, like alert, hitting the bong like, as much as anybody, <laughs> but I don't do it when I'm reading science books. Fair enough. Come back okay. when well, you have my, something, my thing. but don't don't come back when you have something, but don't do it when you when you decided. Hey, if there's a god, I want a way to describe it. Start with if there's a god, I want a way to demonstrate it. And until you can demonstrate it, it doesn't matter whether or not you can talk about it or describe it or have connections to it. Okay. Um, Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Sure. Thanks, Andy.
Uh, but since we already teased it, let's talk to Ian in Pennsylvania. Ian, uh, you're a deist and you're calling about uh, the uh, probably something Matt had said in the past about choosing your belief, if I'm thinking about the right thing. Yes, hello. Hi, Ian. Hi. Um, I, I call myself an agnostic deist. I'm not sure if there's a God, but through life experience and living my life, I can honestly say I don't believe in a God. Oh, well, and, next time just say uh, you're an atheist. I don't, I don't <laughs> believe in a, in a God, but I don't know what that God is. It's definitely not the Christian God or any of the Abrahamic religions, but I do believe in something. I don't have that, and that's not really my question. My question is, I'm so confused. how do you handle believing in something that you don't have a justification for? I don't. I, I don't. I don't believe in things unless I am convinced that I have a, a justification for it. The, the very notion that I could believe something and simultaneously acknowledge that I don't have a justification for it outside of like um, the foundations of logic where we, where we know that we don't have an epistemic warrant. Um, but everything from within that, everything that can be evaluated from the from the, within the the confidence of of logical reasoning, yeah. um, I can't believe something and also know that I don't have a good reason. Yeah, the closest I get to this, Ian, is I give people the benefit of the doubt, and that's with full acknowledgement that people deceive, and and there will be people who I'm giving the benefit of the doubt who are lying to me that I'm going to behave as though they are telling the truth at first until yeah. I have a better reason. That's the closest you're going to get to me. I don't, I don't have a, a I, I don't hold any beliefs I can't rationally defend. Okay, thank you. We just wanted to hear what you thought about that. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Ian. See ya. Have a wonderful time. Yeah, it's one of those things, and, and I'm happy to move on to another caller uh, quickly. But yeah, I'm with you, Jimmy. This is, now granted, for those who are want to maybe want to clip that out and and try to pretend that Jimmy and I are are declaring that we are uh, absolutely rational and devoid of any beliefs that are unwarranted, um, the difference here is that, and I've already demonstrated that this is my character. When someone has pointed out to me, whether it's me pointing out or somebody else, that I hold a position for which there isn't evidentiary warrant, uh, and there isn't some other you know, philosophical justification, like for identity, non-contradiction, excluded middle. As soon as somebody says, hey, here's something you believe, and here's why your arguing is fallacious. Not only do I, it's impossible for me to continue believing it. Yeah. Um, I, I would have to come up with some other uh, argument or evidence and warrant for it. It's like, and, and it's disappointing because there are plenty of things that I have believed that were comforting over the years or interesting or useful. Um, and when it became clear that I didn't have a good reason to believe them, it's not like I chose to stop believing them. It's right. They went away. I don't have any option. Yeah. Yeah. I, I should have added the word consciously. I don't consciously hold any. I'm yeah. not too worried about the people who are going to clip it, though, because you and I both know that 99% of the people who are going to react to that in a comment will be transphobes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That I, I already know the comments are coming because I've been watching them all week. We have had such an influx of transphobic comments over the last two weeks, actually. I already I called yeah, Jordan I already Peterson coming. out. I yeah. called Jordan Peterson out a couple times this week, and half of the comments in response to it were just calling me a groomer. Yeah, and I'm I, like, you guys are so sad in your in your little fear, fearful world. I've got a good number of comments of me making excellent points in response to right wing people uh, that just say the comments literally just pronouns in bio, to which I usually respond with only one joke. But that's that's just me. Uh, Tell more theist. Now let's do it. Another Ian, Ian in Georgia. We're going to go from an Ian to an Ian. Ian in Georgia, uh, you are on the line. What are the odds that we'd have back to back? Mean, well, I did. I don't even think it. Or is it I? Because I have a friend no, in the UK whose name is I. All right, that's cool. All right, so uh, I wanted to talk about um, this argument. I call it the inevitable God argument. I don't really know what to call it. 
Yeah, it's probably well, just some, it's. It, I, I'm going to tell you, it's probably a Sam Choice Kalam. But go ahead and give it to us. Oh, I bet it's not. Oh, Matt, you don't think so? Okay. Um, I think no so, on. so um, in the future, the um, human technology will get so advanced, and yep. people will want to create a god. Yep, and they will eventually uh, create that god. And then that God may or may not be connecting in time that we're in, but I don't know how that would work. But they yep. definitely there inevitably will be a God in the future. So there inevitably will be a God that is kind of. Yeah. I don't want to fillet myself on live TV, but I was 100% yeah, that's correct. That's where you're going. Exactly. Yeah. So this yeah. notion, and, and I've, I've heard this presented by other people, Ian, um, it, it's kind of the same thing. It's defeated in the same way that arguments for time travel were defeated. In the sense that we know that time travel is not possible in our uh, in our timeline, because if it were, then someone right. from the future would be here basically telling us that's the case now. And so as a response to that, some yeah. people have suggested that perhaps if time, time travel um, is possible, that it creates branching timelines. And then you get, you know, the multiverse and the time variance authority and all the, the cool stuff that takes place in Marvel. Similarly, people have argued that since we're progressing towards more and more uh, technological advancement and maybe transhumanism. And then we take our consciousness and upload it to machines. And those machines get more and more complex to the point where they are essentially a God, then wouldn't there be a God? Um, so first of all, we need to define what we mean by God and, um, merely a sufficiently advanced or a, a impressively advanced technology may or may not qualify as a God. But if it's the yeah. case that a, that a being of advanced technology does in fact qualify as some sort of God, right? then yes, it would be the case that when that happens, a God would exist, but that doesn't mean a God exists now. Okay. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Um, Ian, actually, yeah, I'd love to hear, I Ian, I'd actually love to hear, no. what is your definition of a God in this use? Okay. So, um, my 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 definition of God. Hey, are we on speakerphone? That, yeah, I am. Can we take it off that? I hear myself echo back, and it sounds like you're in a bathroom or so, something. All right, I'm off speaker. Oh, so much high. better. God, night and day. Mm -hmm. Call screeners. Sorry. Hang, hang on, hang on, Ian. I want we want to get your definition to God just for clarity. Uh, all every call screener on every show. I'm not just going to help out uh, our show. I'm going to help out every show. If you're a call screener on any show, among the various things that you should tell every caller is take us off speakerphone, turn off the show in the background, listen through your phone, uh, be ready and be ready to mute because of a delay if needed. Yeah. Now, that's Ian, define Speaking God of, for us. Thank you, Amber, for screening today. Go ahead, Ian. Okay. Yes. So God would be essentially the governor of math that sustains our universe and it it would be something that created what we are okay governor of mass or math Gover governor of math like the the physics of the universe and all that ah okay and you believe the creation of that individual is inevitable um yeah why like uh well, I mean, that's, that's obviously self-defeating. It can't be inevitable in the future that the creator of the universe comes into existence. Well, the creator of the universe would have already, the creator of the universe had to already exist before the universe, right? Right. And, and so, so it can't come into existence at the end of the universe. Well, I, would, I, I thought maybe that, you know, they they would create a God that would connect to the beginning of time and would be the reasoning. How do, how cause do you, uh, what, if, what if it is impossible for anything in the future to connect to directly to something in the past? You're, you're basically saying that in the future we'll get a, see, while it's, while I would argue that it is inevitable for us to continue on, on a track generally towards more and more power and understanding, that doesn't mean that 
maximal power and understanding is possible. It doesn't mean time travel is possible. It doesn't mean that it's possible to ever, ever reach a power point where you could create any universe, let alone this one. So you, you've taken a natural progression of we're going to learn and understand more and more. And you've presumed without any warrant at all, that yeah. eventually we will know and understand something about how to go back to the beginning of the time uh, of time and do that. You, you, that may be impossible. The fact that it's like saying, if somebody works out, they're going to get stronger. And then eventually, if they keep working out, they'll be able to lift the Empire State Building. No. We know enough yeah. about physics to know that that's not possible. But what we don't know is what the limits are. And so you're saying, right. oh, what if it's possible? I, I kid you not, Ian. Um, do you currently believe in a God? Yes, I do. Why? Well, I believe based off an of experiences that I've had, um, so, and we don't, I, we don't have to go into, I try we to, to go into it. We don't have to go into it because I'd rather have okay. you call in another time to defend the God you believe. That wasn't your question. My point was, okay. you believe something for personal experience. But you're also yeah. investigating this possibility of an inevitable God. And what you're saying is, it's inevitable that we get more powerful. But you've presumed that infinite or seemingly infinite power, I hate using infinite as a quantity, but um, un, un, unlimited power, you're assuming unlimited power is possible. You're assuming that there isn't a limit to how much we can know and understand. And I don't think that that is warranted at all. Same. Even if we well, only I, looked at the fact, that the, even if we only looked at the fact that the universe is finite, there would seem to be a limit to what we can know and understand. I, I actually do think there's a limit. I just think that limit can be pushed very far. And I'm not sure cool. how far, but. Yeah, yeah, you're not sure how far. You're not sure of noticed. anything. You have no way to demonstrate it. You're basically just sitting there in your armchair going, gosh, I think, I think the limit could be way out there. Well, cool. You have no expertise, right. no knowledge, no understanding, no way to demonstrate it. You might as well just have called in to say, I kind of think there's a God out there somewhere, but I don't have any justification for it. There's also, Ian, this, this is sort of a point from earlier on in your deal. The, the concept of what you, are imagining or mad agreed could exist that we might call God later, not the one that you then later defined, uh, would only be godlike to us compared to our current understanding. Uh, the, whatever civilization exists at that point, it won't be godlike to. They will understand the technology. They'll likely be integrated. We're practically on the cusp of integrating with technology anyway. So it, this is this is really just a different form of. Uh, uh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a Sam's club Kalam. It's a Sam's club. Uh, what are they called? Clark's Clark's three laws. Any, uh, any advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. If it's any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's only, that's an entirely subjective experience. It's because my ignorance doesn't allow me to grasp it. So we're already not talking about a concept of God. And then the thing that you think is a God, the governor of all the mass in the universe that can time travel, it's sort of the same reason why I get into being not just atheist, but to the strong atheist position. Nobody's ever even shown me that a God is possible. So why would I, in the same scenario, why would you think that a time traveling mass governing God is possible? Math. That's not math. PH. Oh, yes. math. You know, That's a, that's the last thing that I want you to take away from this, Ian, and think about. You, you have defined God as the governor of math and physics. Um, you need to sit back and think about what on earth makes you think that math and physics need a governor or yeah. that anyone or any, anything could change or alter math or physics, especially since they are descriptive. They are not prescriptive. It's like saying, oh, you right. know, the speed limit, somebody had to come up with the speed limit, but nobody had to come up with the speed of light in a vacuum. That's descriptive. And so okay. I have no reason to think that there could be a governor of math and physics. And so you think there's a God for which apparently, maybe we'll get into it another time when you call in, 
if you can demonstrate that there is or could be a governor of math and physics, um, that would be interesting. But we're not going to do that today. Yeah. Call back another. Okay. Sound well, good, Ian? thank you for uh, for your time. Yeah. Call back. Thanks. See you, bud. All right. Bye. Uh, Matthew in Las Vegas is a deist who wants to know if I can debunk his God. Um, Matthew, welcome to the show. How you doing? Hey, Matt. Um, I'm doing great. I'm glad to I'm excited to talk to you. I've been watching your show over the last couple of months and watching you debunk Christianity and Muslim stuff. And I just thought, how would you perform against uh, uh, my my deist ideas on God? Um, sure. I, I, the, the, right. I'm, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you do it. Um, let's just get a couple things clear at the start. Whether or not I can debunk your God is irrelevant to whether or not your God's real. Whether or not your God can be debunked is irrelevant to whether or not your God's real. The inability of me or anyone else to debunk a God isn't evidence for that God. And many gods, in particular the deistic gods, are absolutely useless, unfalsifiable propositions. Having said all that, tell me what your God is and I'll see what I think and see what he thinks. Well, I, I really uh, enjoy how you, uh, you, you're able to, uh, you know, you speak about falsification. And I think the way to look at it is, is not uh, in a scientific way, but a, a historical way. Um, I, think we I don't care. On, like, I, I don't care. Okay. If you don't have well, some... Well, how about... The, hist history doesn't prove things, and it certainly doesn't prove a God. Well, it shows us evidence of God, for instance. No, it doesn't. You live on no, it doesn't. Where there's... No, it doesn't. History does not show us evidence of a God. Just like mathematics doesn't show us evidence of God, there's no variable God. The fact that people have historically believed in a God or credited a God is not evidence for a God. What does history show us that you think is evidence for a God? Sure. I'll, I'll uh, give you some examples. First off, we've, One's we, good. We've, we're on a planet where we can use things that are in the earth. Why are they there? They're just there by accident. Not isn't it convenient that there happens to be uranium in the earth? Isn't it convenient that the dinosaurs? No, 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 stop. Oil. No, stop. Um, we know how and why chemical processes result in things. You don't get to say human beings have found a way to use the things around them and then and then add in that those things were likely put there for human beings. You do not get to assume intent. Just like when a bird builds a nest, isn't it convenient there was some straw and grass laying around and that the bird could use it? So therefore, the, the straw and the grass must have been put there so the bird can build a nest. That is an entirely fallacious line of reasoning. You are assuming the very thing you're trying to prove. That's not how a logical argument works. But isn't that why a bird is a bird? Because they can use those things around them? Goodbye. That does explain that. I agree. Goodbye. When I, when you, when you present an argument and I point out what's wrong with it, if you then, and this is for everybody, if you then, instead of saying, ah, I acknowledge that, oh, I understand what's wrong with that before you move on to something else, we're done because that tells me that you weren't paying attention. You're not arguing. Honestly, you're not willing to say, oh, well, of course that was a logical fallacy, but what about this? Instead you went to, isn't that what makes a bird a bird? I am, I am completely unimpressed with your bong hit switch uh, and the parade of bong hit switches that are coming of, well, well, gosh, if he's going to just use logic and stuff, sh I should just ask, isn't that what makes a bird a bird? What makes a bird a bird is irrelevant to whether or not there's a God and it's irrelevant to logical arguments. I'm sorry that people are just wasting your time tonight. Yeah, go on. This ahead. is Jessica from Utah. Uh, this is the theist. Taoist, an argument for God from Taoism. Jessica, you're on the line. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Aaron and Jimmy, for uh, hosting this, this Colin show. I love both of you so very, very much. And I'm very, very excited to talk about this uh, subject. Um, oh, I am too. So, oh, good. Good, good. I think I remember in one of your videos oh, years ago, you mentioned that if you had a, arrived at atheism before you had arrived at something else, do you think it probably would have been Taoism, which I found interesting. Um, yeah. yeah the, the, what my statement was is if I had read the Tao Te Ching before I watched Star Wars, I would have been a Taoist. <laughs> but 
But because I saw Star Wars first, I identified as Jedi. Because you know, I don't know if I you know. I did too, back when I was Mormon. Back when you were Mormon, you were Jedi. Again, because I wasn't allowed to have sex, I had magic powers. And there was aliens out there on Kolob who gave me magic powers. Yes, I was a Jedi, 100%. I was a Mormon Jedi. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Okay, I guess I can't argue that. But now, if I understand this right, you want to make an argument for God from Taoism. And so I have to preface this a little bit because one of the things that I, that I loved about Taoism is that my favorite passage from any religious book is this one quote from the Tao Te Ching which is that nature acts without intent and so cannot be said to be benevolent nor malevolent to anything. I don't know why, but I just found that beautiful. But that's completely contrary to everything about it. Yes. Yeah, I would, I would totally agree um, on, the, on the, the fact that nature does just kind of act, I would call it I'm also like a deterministic way. It just does what it does. It doesn't have and a and, and malevolent intent or a benevolent intent, it just functions the way it does. And for me, the Tao kind of in general, to me, what I understand the Tao to be is just that a system that functions as it does without intent, being neither malevolent nor benevolent. It's kind of, so I, I did tell the call screener, it's kind of more deistic than it is theistic. I don't necessarily believe in a God that, you know, like the biblical God or a person type God, but that to me, over the past few weeks, it has very much seemed like as I've been diving into Taoism pretty hard, that to me it does kind of emerge as like the, the Tao or the deterministic way in which the universe functions. Could it be in itself described as some kind of a godlike force? And for me, I found a lot of relief in aligning myself with the way things are, but the deterministic universe as it takes me along this ride. You know, I, I can do something well, at best, to improve my situation. At best, you're talking about pantheism, not literal theism. Okay. Okay. It's good to know the term. You said pantheism. Okay. Yeah. But, okay. So I suppose that would be, I guess, a better descriptor, I suppose. But that would be what I think the Tao, theme, the Tao Te Ching seems to describe. And as I've a lot, been working very hard to align myself with the acceptance of the way things are in a deterministic universe, my life has greatly improved. And it very much feels like a, a godlike force that just kind of interact the way it does, neither benevolently nor malevolently, it just is. And if I align myself with it, I find myself in a much more peaceful state than I had been when I only described myself as an atheist who didn't believe in any kind of, uh, any kind of force that want- guided anything in any way. I also want to address your use of the word deterministic because I've used deterministic many times to describe something that where there is guidance, where it's not totally random, where there is a propensity to, to, to not lean too far either way, that it is going to be guided to some degree. And philosophers always seeking something to argue about tell me that, 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 that their, their definition of deterministic means that it can only happen this one way and that this is the only possible result and it can't be any other way. But that's not the way you mean it, sure. obviously, by the context of your sentence. That's not the way I mean it whenever I've described that. So when you or I say deterministic, we're only talking about something that's vaguely guided. But also, I would agree with the second one that the philosophers you talk to say. I'd kind of align with both. It's kind of a bizarre contradiction. I don't know. J- Jimmy is kind of more closely related to Zelf on the Shelf. They've kind of done collabs. And I don't know, Jimmy, if you've seen Zelf on the Shelf stuff recently, but they've kind of described similarly a bit to the deterministic universe. And like, you know, that the, the, there is kind of a an awakening that happens through grace when you realize that everything is deterministic and that kind of affects things in a way where you just kind of realize that it's deterministic and it, but at the same time, technically there are things that you can do. It's, it's, it's kind of a bizarre, complicated kind of uh, counterintuitive. I zoned mess, out. So I, I only heard yeah, you, what you part, said you, after you, you are, call my name. Yeah. Some of the things you're saying actually it's, are self-contradictory. So yes, yes, you can't I'd use agree. Taoism. You can't use Taoism as an argument for theism. You can't you can't go from Taoism to Spinoza. 
I, I yeah, it, yeah, and I'm confused by what your position is. And I, I think I had your position at one point, and I'm still confused. <laughs> <laughs> I currently hold it, and I'm a little confused myself. <laughs> but, and, but it, well, my my conclusion, though, is that there are properties, there are there are uh, um, processes that will have some degree of guidance to them, but not for a goal. There's the, 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 no. the universe doesn't give a fuck about us. That's why right. you know ninety nine point nine infinite nines percent of the universe is in instantly lethal to any form of life. There's just, there's only so many tiny little pockets where life can't exist at all temporarily until the boiling cosmic chaos collapses and something crashes into it and kills everything. Right. I, no, no disagreement on any of that, which is why I, I do, it's, it's funny because it's, it's, it's a silly thing human to do. I have like goals and plans for life and all that stuff, but I also am like the universe is deterministic and I might die tomorrow. Who knows? You know, it could, well, something, the, the universe could have totally different plans for me than I have for myself. And the more that I align myself with the understanding of that, being like, you know, these are my tentative plans for life but the universe doesn't give a crap about me or you or anybody. And it could all go to crap tomorrow. It's it, in, somehow in, in, in a strange way, <laughs> in a strange way, I'm hearing in you, me at 20 something. Huh, so, 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 well, how about that? I'm a 20 something. If I keep on this path, maybe someday I'll be as awesome as you are. And maybe. <laughs> Did not say or imply that. <laughs> All right, are you, a, are you a universal determinist right now? I wouldn't say so. No, I I am I just, mostly. I, I I'm not not as an infallible thing. So rather than interrupt and engage the call on your show, Jessica, call me sometime. I'm on, and I'll talk to you about some of the stuff you're saying. I wouldn't love yeah, to. It sounds good. All right, and I think we're done. Alrighty, well, so. It's been a pleasure, gentlemen. Y'all take care. Thank you very, very much. So uh, I'm going to take Dex in Detroit. Dex, we're on the line. Hey, Dex. Thanks for waiting. Hey, My apologies for cursing and wasting time. <laughs> no, I got no problem with that. I have more than enough of one and half a dozen of the other. I'm really, I'm really curious about your call uh, because it, Divine Hidden is, is, is one of the things that I've spent, well, probably not the most time talking about, but it's, it's what I think is the strongest case for a positive argument against the existence of God. And my understanding from, from the screener thing, and then I will stop and let you get on with it, is that you are a theist who has a proposed good reason for why, God, why we would experience divine hiddenness in the universe with a God. So welcome and proceed. Thanks. Just wanted to let you guys know that I'm a longtime caller, a first-time listener. <laughs> no, so... Uh, Twice today for the same joke. Yeah, yeah. Really? Hmm. Yeah, I just thought that it was on the phone. Well, on the line. Thought I'd call in. I've never called in before. So uh, I'm a bit nervous. So basically, the way I see that which we call a God, uh, I usually use it, is that it is sort of a parent to people. It's a, a, and a good parent or a good teacher the ultimate goal is to create, uh, raise someone who will then be able to exist without you. It is a very poor parent or teacher who intentionally cripples their children or students so that they have to continually rely upon. And okay. so I have, I have a image, number of, I have a number of objections already because I'm not aware of parents who do any parenting while being hidden. While, while not being seen, heard, or interacting at all, I don't know how that can be good. But, um, for example, I, I have uh, a relative who was a parent of a mm. child who was absolutely always going to be dependent on that parent. Um, so that parent's mm -hmm. job had nothing to do with raising that child to be independent because that was never going to happen. Are you suggesting right. that we're going to be independent of a god? Yes. 
okay? And and God, this is the God that created us. The, it set events in motion that ultimately resulted in us coming into existence. Yes. Okay, but eventually it's going to be us without a God, and you're saying that God is staying hidden in order to prepare us for the time when God's not around. No, God will always be around. Uh, however, God wow. wants How do you us know that? to. Well, that would be a belief. It's okay. entirely possible that, uh, as you said before, you know, how do we know what created the universe? Yeah, uh, it, it could have been anything. And in fact, so one thing that no one how, ever how are we going to be without a God? How are we going to be without a God? And how do you know? That? How are we going to be without one? Well, because, yeah, you, you said that God's uh, always going to be around, but God's preparing for us to be without him. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we go when, on. At when are we going to be? When are we going to be without a God if God's always around? Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So what uh, eventually will happen is, in my belief or hope, is that eventually we will reach a point of personal evolution or a species-wide evolution where we can then detect that which we call God. Maybe it's some sort of like sentient energy field and we'll say, oh, this thing actually seems to be responding to us. And then uh, at a certain point, we can detect it. And then we'll just say, it will communicate with us, hopefully, and just say, yeah, okay, I've been waiting for you to get to the point where we can have a conversation. And, you know, we'll just... But could could of, this uh, God... Uh, think, uh, so couldn't this God have created us so that we're able to do that now? Yes. Why didn't it? That will be one of the questions we'll have for it. No, be, sir, no, sir, no, sir, no, okay. sir, no, sir, no, sir. You don't get to propose a solution to the problem of divine hiddenness. And then when I present the problem of divine hiddenness, say that's one of the questions we ask. The issue is, why is God hidden now? Um, and and your, pre your presumption is a science fiction fairy tale fantasy that someday in the future we will evolve or advance, which is probably a better word because evolve doesn't have a goal, to a point where we'll be able to then communicate with God. But when, the, when, the, when you push back on this proposition to say, why didn't God make it so that we can communicate with him now? And you say, that's a question we ask. You have not solved the problem of divine hiddenness. You have tried to avoid it with a fantasy. I want a, a sound philosophical solution to the problem of divine hiddenness Otherwise, you're just engaged in pointless speculation. Maybe God has a good reason to stay hidden. We don't know what it is. That's not a solution to the problem of divine hiddenness. Well, can there ever be a solution then? At some point, it all is. I don't like, know, and that's not my fault. That I don't know, and that's not my problem. The, the problem of divine hiddenness remains a problem for proposed gods and for people who call in to say, I have a proposed solution to, to the problem of divine hiddenness. That's their duty to take up. This is not my issue. Uh, mm -hmm. The fact you called in to propose a solution to the problem of divine hiddenness, and you have none. That's the point. Hmm. Well, yeah, you've got a good point there. I'll have to work on that a little more, if I can actually build it up some more. And, uh, yeah, I'll please try do. to get in touch have anything. Can I uh, ask another question? Yeah, the other thing to, to remember when you do this is because there's questions that I didn't ask which is, um, apart from what you hope will happen in the future or what you think you know about a God, um, how you know anything about a God and what it is doing or anything else is a big issue. But yes, you can ask another question. I was just going to ask about uh, belief and knowledge. I've heard you uh, talk about that before and mm -hmm. the, the way that they overlap with each other. And you were... Well, one's a subset. I don't want to presume upon what you were saying, but... I'll just say how I, what I see it as is belief is something that you don't know by definition. Knowledge is something that, let's say, we have a direct sensory experience. For example, I was talking to my friend you, earlier. No, you're, you're confusing. The, I'm sorry, you're confusing knowledge in the sense of awareness. I'm talking about knowledge in the sense of epistemology. Normally, within philosophy, knowledge is, has been defined, for example, as justified true belief a belief that is true and for which you have justification. I have problems with that particular definition, um, but it is not just awareness or sensory information. 
a belief is the when is the state of accepting some proposition as true or likely true. Knowledge is some belief held to an extremely high level of confidence, whether or not it's true and warranted is separate. The type of the K-N-O-W, like I know Bob, or that just means I am aware of Bob. It doesn't mean I have knowledge, Bob, or I have knowledge that hmm. Bob. That's a different, there's a problem with English. Yeah, very much so. Uh, words are unfortunately limited somewhat. So I've, I've heard you say before that you can't choose to believe something. Correct. And I guess I'm just kind of wondering, how would you, so people do choose to sign on to a certain religion, for example, or they choose to believe in their country or whatever. Uh, you no, 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 no you, you can choose to act as if you believe, and you can certainly profess a belief. Uh, but you are either convinced of something or you are not. And the, this process of becoming convinced, you know, I, like are, if there, there are people, let's say there's two people who, who both tell you I'm a Christian. One mm -hmm. of them really does believe and one of them doesn't. Um, okay. The one that believes didn't choose to believe they became convinced of it. For good reasons or bad reasons, whether it's true or not, they became convinced. They, oh, well, let me put this to practice and try it out. And hey, it does good things in my life. I'm going to identify as a Christian. The other one doesn't believe it. So I, I'm, I'm, if somebody has an example where someone can simply say, I choose to believe X, and this actually results in a brain state that accepts X, um, that's what I'm talking about. And I have no examples of that. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'm going to run this tape back and you've given me a lot to think about. Bex, before you go, I'm curious, what manner of theist are you? Are you just sort of deistic or do you hold to one of the more popular ones? Uh, not really. Uh, I was raised Christian, but just over time through a lot of uh, reading and thinking, on my, even when I was a little kid, none of it really made any sense to me. And at some point I discovered, um, I guess you call it Bible too. And I actually started, you know, reading the gospels and other, uh, religious texts. And it's just blatantly, uh, well, it seems clear to me that all of this was just man-made. We just made it all up, but I still have, I'm still kind of just holding on to that one belief. However, that, yeah, there, there probably is something, I guess you might call it a deistic belief. I think, uh, there is something out there kind of distant. It's somewhat interested in us. It's not really controlling. It didn't just intelligently design us. What leads you to that? Because you did probably. So what leads you to that probability that you think it's more likely than not likely, I assume, is what probably means to you? Yeah. You know, and I, I, I kind of, I almost just want to say nostalgia. I mean, probably headed towards the APS thing. Uh, I'm just holding okay. on, I guess, to this one lack fiber. So yeah. it sounds like you're already doing the work. I, I, I won't try and like deconvert you in this moment. It sounds like you're already work working on it and everything. So we'll hit, uh, we'll hit one of these other theist calls, but I, I was just curious if, if your theism was still holding on to, cause I'm, as far as the things you'd been talking about with hiddenness and stuff now in the situation with your hiddenness, you should know that that's not a deistic God either. The one that you presented where He's just waiting for us to have the technology because he does want to interact with us. That's several steps mm -hmm. forward of deep them. Uh, and so you should know that those are in, they, they are conflicting. Okay. Very good. I still have more reading to do. Cool. Thanks. Well, I, was also wondering, um, I was wondering if Matt, Matt has mentioned that he's a uh, practicing magician. I, I don't Straight practice as much as I used to, but yeah. I was just wondering if uh, you had ever worked with or met uh, Penn Gillette. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, I thought it'd be really interesting if he could, like, co host the show at some point. Have you ever, is he aware it'd of it? It'd be yourself? very interesting, but we're, we're, we're not friends. I'd be surprised. I mean, Penn may or may not even know my name, depending on who's around and when you ask him. Um, we haven't done a show together. We've been at the same place multiple times, and we have a number of mutual friends. I did a show with... James Randi and Sean Farquhar, Murray Hatfield, and a number of other magicians. 
uh, and I've had conversations really? with Penn and Teller and stuff like that, but we're not friends. Hmm. Well, some of us are hoping that someday you'll both uh, do something together. Yeah, we'll so see. Thanks for, uh, I mean, talk. I've got no objections, but thanks. I also owe Jimmy an apology because after Jimmy got here and told me, to, it reminded me to go over and look at the call in studio list of callers. That's all I've been seeing. And my brain was still in, I'm the only one here and Jimmy's working on something behind the scenes. So for that, okay. that whole last discussion, I was like, uh, I thought, oh man, I got to do it all. And we'll start with uh, Juan in Florida, Pranzer, he, him, who knows that Jehovah's real. So welcome, Juan. How do you know? Oh, good. Uh, hello. Uh, he's and queen and, and Matt, hello. Thank you for having me today. Sure. Hello. Tell us. You, you it says here Jehovah's real because he saved my life. Um, briefly, yeah, if you could. Yeah, hell, because, uh, bri yeah, bri bri hang, on, hang on. Hang on. Briefly, if you could. What do you mean by Jehovah? And, and how do you know that this being is real? That's it. You're on. Okay. Uh, uh, Jehovah, uh, the one, the guy, uh, what you would call God, he, uh, he come into my life late in my life. I, I, from street, uh, uh, how you say it, mucho, uh, uh, a lot of violence and, you know, and they made me feel good. And I know he comes to me at night. And he tell me that he loved me and he saved my life. So, so he speaks to you. Do you hear this audibly or is it just in your head? Yeah. Uh, yeah I hear him and I, 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 when I, uh, pray, when I pray, I hear him and I know that he, he real. And you, as I say, say proof. And that to me is that that's the proof to me. Yeah, but I mean, do you hear it like a voice in the room or do you hear it like a voice in your head? Bueno, I mean, to, to me, it's in, I know it's in my head, but it's a feeling that I cannot uh, explain. And, and more people I know, I talk to them, they tell me I have the same day. Oh, I, I, don't, I know what, you, what you're talking about. And I say, okay, and this is how I come to the conclusion. Okay. So you, you feel that there's someone, you, you know that you, it's in your head that you can't prove to anybody. Um, is it possible that you're wrong? That in fact, your brain is making you experience this voice in order to comfort you or for some other reason? I'm sorry, can you, I'm, I, I'm sorry, but uh, repeat the last part. Sure. Is it possible that you're wrong and that your brain is actually making this up? Bueno, I, I you know, I think uh, I would lie to you if I told you that I am a hundred percent because I, I, I know that in life, you know, uh, I'm a, I'm a bit old and I have to have a, a, a how you say it, the, the skept, the skept, skeptic. I know sometimes you question. So, so here's, Pero here's so, the point of that question. So, so much time. I, 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 I have a question for one. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, all right. Here's the point of that question. If it's possible that you're mistaken, how do we tell whether or not you are mistaken? How do we, how do we know whether or not it's real? And by this, I'm saying, how do you know? And how can we know whether or not it's real or fake? I think if for, for me, I, I, I ask a lot of people, uh, not even in, in where I go in the, in Iglesia, the church that I go, I, I ask a lot of people and, and, and I, I, I see, I hear the same thing from the people when we talk about the experience. And that's why I, I come to that conclusion, but I, I, I can, I can say 100%, uh, can you say 100% que I make it go like it's not real. Can you say that one hundred percent? Nope. Okay. This is super fun. And then where where we you know what and what happened after this? Hold on. So uh, Juan, so every night at two forty seven a.m., um, I hear a voice that identifies themselves as 
the flying spaghetti monster. And I feel it in my heart. It's a uniform, in fact. Pero spaghetti. Uh, hey, hey. I'm no, sorry, but sure. spaghetti is it's, it's full. That's full. That's true. Uh, let's say I hear a law. I hear a lot, 2.47 a.m. every single night. Uh, and that's how I know it's real. Thoughts? Bueno, I, you ask other people if they believe in this, uh, how you say, uh, spaghetti uh, fly, cool. the flying so spaghetti. If, if I find other people that agree with me and they say they hear it too, how do we prove which one of us is correct? I, when I ask you go, that's a good question. Uh, yeah. I, so, for I, example, I, maybe find some type of a, like how they say, like data, like some type of percent. And if, if the one that's closest to the 100%, no, that's a fallacy. Well, I, I would love some kind of data, uh, which was what I thought you were talking about. So, that will help. One, yes, you, I think. Well, Juan, you, you've seen optical illusions before, right? Uh, explain, explain that. Uh, I know illusion. When you say optical, uh, the eyes, like uh, like visual. L like an optical illusion where there's two squares that look like they're different colors, but they're actually the same color. Okay, I think I know what you mean. Uh, it's close to okay. like uh, like uh, what, what the ma ma uh, magic, like magic? Sure, sure. I'm a magician. Here, look. You ready? I'm going to pull part of my finger off and put it back. Now, if a whole bunch of people saw that and they all believed that I pulled my finger off, does that mean I pulled my finger off? No, because that's fake. That's not real. That's, that's fake. Thing. How do you know it's yeah, fake? How, how do you know it's fake? Because I, I have a, 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 a uncle, mi, mi tío, tío Pablo, no, my no. uncle, he do this. In the body. You, you, you don't know that he did the same thing I did. Uh, I there's lots of different know. ways. There's lots of different ways to do a magic trick. You don't know that I didn't actually do that and do it so that it looks the same as a trickery version. It, 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 the, okay. In that case, I'm just going to stop because what we have here is you believe something. You can't demonstrate it to yourself or to anybody else. And what you did was you went around and asked a whole bunch of people if they feel the same way. Well, of course they did, because religious people share common experience, but that doesn't mean that the thing that they experience points to a real being. If you want to demonstrate that the being is real, you need to, to find a way to test this and then demonstrate it's true. And until you do, you are believing something irrationally. You are believing it without good reason. Okay, wait. Well, so someone said pull it. If I... If I find out, if I find out more, can I call back and we, we, we talk again? If you have evidence to present that you think should convince somebody else, please call back. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I, I like, Matt, I like so much uh, your video because you, you listen and you think a lot. And Queen, uh, I see in the chat, they say you're beautiful. You say beautiful. Uh, this is true. And have a good night. Thank you so much. Adios. Okay. Well, Alex has been on there for the longest. So Alex in Ohio, pronouns are he him, um, wants to argue that UFO sightings are evidence for Christianity. So awesome. Uh, yeah. Welcome, Alex. UFO sightings are uh, evidence for Christianity specifically because top, all, virtually all the top brass of the most powerful militaries in the world identify as Christian. And if UFOs exist, then at least some of them would have to know about it. And if they did know about it, then if atheists are agnostic or something, when they get, have their mind blown, their minds blown to that extent. And um, I'm so, plus, excuse, apparently that doesn't Alex, happen. Alex? Yeah? UFO, UFO stands for what? Unidentified flying objects. So if it's unidentified... How can it be confirmation of anything? Right. Well, I'm pretty much uh, an agnostic Christian. I used to be an atheist. I, was, I actually remember that has arguing absolutely, with that. No, no, no. No, 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 Alex. That has absolutely nothing to do with the question that I asked you. 
I asked, if it's unidentified, how can it be evidence for anything? Um, I understand that it's more of a quantity over quality argument, and I don't claim to be able to physically prove the uh, no, validity. No, sir, of, no, sir Alex, I'm going to give you one fight. That's strike two. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up with a graphic here that goes strike one, strike two. The question was, if it is unidentified, how can it be evidence for anything? Last chance. Because it does things that are apparently physically impossible if we take the witness at face value. Goodbye. I, I, so me jumping in was to say like, hey, bud, you're about to get a threat of being hung up on. Let me give you a little advice here. Just yeah. answer the question being asked, because uh, this ain't it, fam. Yeah. So the thing is, if it's unidentified, then it isn't evidence for anything. But Alex right. doesn't get that, because Alex, in his head, equates unidentified flying object. And you heard him. Oh, it does things that can't be done by physics. No, there's never been a demonstration that any of the unidentified objects are actually violating physics. That's just not the case. Yeah. You just don't have enough information to reach any conclusion. But Alex's argument is most of the top brass in the military are Christian. And if they found out that there was a UFO for real, then this would shake their Christianity to the core or something. I don't know how. And, and the, the fact that they haven't said so means that it supports Christianity. It's really wild. It doesn't uh, even pan I am, out. No, I am bored to tears by the notion that uh, something I don't, we're going back to Blackadder again. So what you're telling me is something you've never seen is slightly less blue than something else you've never seen. Right. Uh, but I, I even just try to make the conspiracy work. You're like, okay, so what you're saying is the top brass have found these UFOs. And first of all, you're making a presumption that they have identified them. Uh, uh, because there is, it makes no sense that they're UFOs if their faith could have been shaken by it. And that the grand conspiracy to keep what these UFOs are a secret does not include, by the way, you can't all suddenly stop living your life. Like this thing that came out, it actually, it turns out to be who Jesus actually was. He's like, I'm not Jesus. I'm an Andalite, uh, uh, which is a type of alien. Uh, uh, and and I can shape shift and anyway, all this stuff and, and the whole thing's bullshit, but we got to keep this under wraps as though that ginormous conspiracy wouldn't include. So go live your lives as though it were normal. I can't as a conspiracy make it work. And again, it come, it, it relies first upon accepting that the unidentified flying objects aren't actually unidentified and that you think you know what they are which is a, just a, a level of arrogance that I'm incapable of. And everyone who knows, has watched this channel, knows I'm capable of tremendous arrogance. And yet I can't get there. Wild.